Good morning, San Diego. Welcome to finals day on a cloudy and breezy Mission Bay. Uh, my name is Charles Luckman. I will be your announcer until around nine o'clock this morning. We start with some venerable masters boats in the F and G and H and I categories. We then switch to the other end of the age spectrum and we will have a series of finals in the quads for youth and under 16s, under 17s, interspersed with some under 16 eights. And then at just after nine o'clock, we will begin the collegiate finals. Our first race 
is a combination of races, the Masters F8 and the Masters G8. In lane one, Cambridge, an F8. In lane two, Long Beach, an F8. In lane three, Rocky Mountain, an F8. In lane four, Texas Rowing Club, San Diego Rowing Club, a G8. In lane five, Kent Mitchell, a G8. In lane six, Combination North Dakota and San Diego, a G8. And then out in lane seven, an unaffiliated Canadian eight, they are an F8. So the F8 race is between lanes one, two, three, and seven. And the G8 race is between lanes four, five, and six. Okay, good morning from the starting line. This is the 49th annual San Diego Crew Classic, the first event of our grand final day. This is the men's Masters F and G final. It's a seven boat final. Lane one is Cambridge, lane two is Long Beach, lane three Rocky Mountain, lane four San Diego Rowing Club, lane five Kent Mitchell, lane six San Diego, Lane 7, unaffiliated Canada. The crews are backed into their blocks. We're waiting for the starter to pull them. Conditions are, we have, we're going to have a slight headwind. I would check that tailwind with a tide going out. Should be just ideal racing conditions. The crews are being pulled. Okay, we have a start to race number 70. This is the men's Masters FG final. Seven crews. All seven out cleanly out of their starting blocks. All seven through the 100 meter breakage point. At that point, our early leader is in lane seven. That's Canada unaffiliated. They're followed in lane one by Cambridge, holding on to about a three point three seat lead over Long Beach in lane two. Very tightly packed race at this point, going through 250 meters gone. The crews have settled into their race cadence. They go out at a high rating right out of the blocks at a high 38 to 40 strokes a minute. They've all settled to their race cadence, 32, 34, heading down the course. Through 250, out in, lane, in the near lane, Cambridge has taken a one-seat lead, one seat lead over lane seven, Canada affiliated. They're followed by the crew in lane six for that third place, place position, San Diego. Then in lane two, Long Beach. Followed by Kent Mitchell. Check that, Rocky Mountain in lane three. Then San Diego Rowing Club, and then Kent Mitchell. Quite a quite a boat race for that first, second, third position. It at th this point coming up on through the approaching the 750 meter mark. It's Canada by about a seat over Cambridge in the near lane, 
Cambridge up by about three seats, open water on Long Beach. Long Beach trying to hold off San Diego. San Diego's challenging for that third position in lane six. Our fifth place team would be Rocky Mountain in lane three, then Kent Mitchell in lane five, and then the San Diego Rowing Club very tightly back for that fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh position. But the real dogfight is for that for that first, second position, it is a battle between our crew out Canada unaffiliated and the crew in the near lane. That's Cambridge. They are fighting seat for seat for that first position. Approaching 1,000 meters, it appears to be Canada by about one seat, maybe a ball, bow ball. Then it's Cambridge. Long Beach by about a boat length behind Cambridge, followed by San Diego in lane five. Rocky Mountain in lane three, Kent Mitchell in lane five, and then San Diego Rowing Club in lane four. That's your call for this, the race number 70, Men's Masters FG at the 1,000 meter mark. Just a reminder that we've got two races in one here. Lane six, five, and four, battling it out for the G8 title. And lanes one, two, and three, and seven, battling it out for the F8 title. Seems to be a very tough race between Cambridge on lane one and the Canadian Masters in lane seven on the far side for that F title. Canadian Masters out in lane seven. Seem to be taking full advantage of this fairly stiff tailwind and seem to be clearing out a little bit from the crews in the middle of the course. In the G Masters race, crew in lane five, Kent Mitchell seems to have a lead over North Dakota San Diego in lane six and Texas San Diego in lane four. Canadian Masters in lane seven are lengthening out as they come through the 500. They appear to be, have a significant lead over the crew from Cambridge in lane one. Cambridge in turn have a lead of about a length over Long Beach in lane two, with Rocky Mountain trailing by about three quarters of a length in lane three in the F race. So as we come down to the last 250, in the F8 it's Canadian Masters, Cambridge, Long Beach, Rocky Mountain, In the G race in the middle of the course, Ken Mitchell are hanging on to their lead, but they're being pressed hard on either side by North Dakota San Diego out in lane six and Texas San Diego in lane four. Cambridge are putting on a spurt. They're pushing hard for the finish line. They've taken the rating up. Canadian Masters are staying steady out in lane seven. They really seem to have made their move in the middle two quarters of the race. As we come down to the finish line, Canadian Masters in lane seven look set for the F title. Cambridge are pressing them hard, followed by the Long Beach crew in lane two. Rocky Mountain in lane three. That's the order in the F race as they come towards the finish line. Kent Mitchell have a lead just less than a length, I think, over on the outside. North Dakota, San Diego with the Texas San Diego crew. Uh, again, overlapping the North Dakota, San Diego crew on the outside.
So unofficially, as they cross the finish line, the winners are the Canadian Masters in the F8 and Kent Mitchell in the G8. Okay, we're getting ready for race number 71. The crews are backed into their starting blocks. This is the Women's Masters FGHI Camp Land on the Bay Trophy Grand Final. Lane 1 is Long Beach. Lane 2, Endeavor Racing. Lane 3, Martha's Moms. Lane 4, Station L. Lane 5, East Bay. Lane 6, the San Diego Rowing Club. Lane 7, Martha's Moms. And we have a start to race number 71, the Women's Masters FGH Campland Bay Trophy Final. Seven crews in this race. And there is a gazillion years of racing experience with these ladies. So this is going to be a good one to watch. Through 100 meters... It's our crew in lane two, Endeavor Racing, with a slight lead over the crew in lane five, East Bay, followed by lane two, lane three, Martha's Moms. 250 down. All crews now settle in their race cadence. Through 250. Endeavor Racing hanging on to a one-boat lead over the crew in lane three. That's Martha's Moms. They have about a bow ball on lane one, Long Beach, for those one, two, and three position. Then it's the crew in lane five, East Bay, challenging for a spot in that top three. Followed by the Martha's Moms in lane seven, Station L in lane four, and then the San Diego Rowing Club in lane six. Crews are taking advantage of some very good racing water. Slight tailwind, but it's getting countered by a tide that's going out. And we've just crossed our 500 meter mark. And Endeavor has increased their lead to open water over lane, lane four. Lane five, that would be East Bay in the second position, challenge for that second position. They are neck and neck with lane one, Long Beach, and lane three, Martha's Moms. Quite a battle for that second position. They're all trying to challenge Endeavor Racing, who's our race leader at this point. They have open water on those three crews. But the real race is for that second, third position. It is a Bow ball the bow ball race between lane one, lane three, and lane five, lane five, East Bay, Long Beach, and Martha's Moms. Crews have just passed through 750, gone. Endeavor holding on to a comfortable open water lead over Long Beach in lane one. Then it's East Bay in lane five, then Martha's Moms in lane three, followed by, check that, followed by Station L lane four, then Martha's Moms in lane seven, and then the San Diego Rowing Club in lane five. Looks like all the crews have coming up to 1,000 meters mark. They're making their move now. Looks like Endeavor's taking a 10. At 1,000 meters, it's Endeavor by open water over Long Beach. Long Beach by about three seat over Martha's Moms in lane three. They are neck and neck with East Bay in lane five, followed by Martha's Moms in lane seven, and then the San Diego Rowing Club in lane six. That's our race position at 1,000 meters for the race number 71. It's PHI final. 
Again, we have three different fi finals in one race here. Uh, lanes two, three, four, and five. Endeavour, Martha's Mom, Station L, and East Bay are duking it out for the F title. And then on either side of the race course, we have Martha's Mums and Long Beach in lanes seven and one, who are contesting the G final. And then San Diego Rowing Club in lane six, who are the sole contestant in the H final. It's interesting that in the H final, uh, although it's an only boat, the most of the rowers here would have picked up rowing after Title IX created that surge in collegiate rowing for women. So most of the rowers in that boat would have uh, learned to row as what is sometimes termed mad masters, people who pick up rowing later in life. To a certain extent, that's also true of the G-boats. As we come down towards the 500 meter mark, It looks as though in the F race, it's Endeavour in lane two, and then very close between Martha's Mums and East Bay, with Station L trailing Martha's Mums and East Bay's by just a tad. In the G final, in lane one, Long Beach seemed to have a significant advantage over Martha's Mums out in lane seven. And the H final is San Diego Rowing Club in the ultimate place at this point. Coming down towards the 250, Endeavour have a commanding lead in the F final. Still very tight between Martha's Mums in lane three and East Bay in lane five. Station L are hanging on to them. In the G final, Long Beach. Again, a significant advantage over their competitors out on the far side, Martha's Mums in lane seven. Endeavour looking very comfortable and Martha's mum seems to be holding off the challenge from Station L for second place in the F final. Comfortable row from Long Beach. They can see out to their left over to the far side of the race course and see their competition. Martha's mum's out in lane seven. So in the F8, unofficially a win for Endeavour. In the G8, a win unofficially for Long Beach. In the, in the F8, Martha's Mums, followed by Station L. Sorry, followed by East Bay, I beg their pardon, followed by Station L. Then in second place out on the far side, Martha's Mums in the G final. Okay, then, we have a then, start to race number And then hanging 72. on to the last place, the H8, that's 70 plus, 70 years old and more from San Diego Rowing Club. Okay, we are well into race number 72. This is the Women's Concept 2 Youth 4x Final 2. This is a petite final. In lane 1, we have Los Gatos B. Lane 2, NorCal Crew. Lane 3, Newport City Base B. 
Lane four, Texas Rowing Club. Lane five, Maritime Rowing Club B. And Casitas Rowing Club in the lane six. Coming up on 500 meters gone, our race leader at this point is in lane one. That's Los Gatos B. By about a bow ball over lane six, Casitas Rowing Club holding on about a seat over the crew in lane two, NorCal crew. This is a very tight field. There is literally a couple seats between all six crews. Through 500 meters, they, nobody is conceding this race and nobody is commanding the race. Five hundred meters gone. Looks like Los Autos took a took a power ten. They have taken like a four seat lead over the crew in lane two, NorCal crew. NorCal has about a three seat lead over the crew in lane five, Maritime. Maritime's trying to hold off the crew in lane six for that third position. And then it's followed by Texas in lane four and Newport Sea Base in lane three. Conditions are perfect right now. All crews dealing with steering. They have to steer the, the bow, bow rower is steering these shells and the two rower is calling their race. They have no coxswains in these shells. 750 down. Our race leader continues to be Los Gatos B. They've increased their lead over the crew in lane two. New NorCal crew. By about one, they have about a boat length on NorCal crew. NorCal has a boat length on our third place crew. That's Maritime Rowing Club B in lane five, followed by Casitas Rowing in six, Texas Rowing Club in lane four, and Newport Sea Base in lane three. Still, the six crews are staying within contact of each other. Quite a good race to watch at this point. Coming up on our 1,000 meters, Los Gatos continues to be the race leader. They have almost a boat length on lane two, NorCal. NorCal by about a boat length lane, Maritime, Maritime, Four seats on lane six, Casitas, who has two seats on Texas Rowing Club in lane four, followed closely by Newport Sea Base. That's your call from 1,000 meters. The women's concept to youth four by final two. As they come through the 1,000 meter mark into the 500 of death, third 500 is where races are won and lost. And Los Gatos B from the Bay Area leading their Bay Area compatriots, NorCal at this stage in lanes one and two. Very tight with the rest of the field. Casitas from the site of the 1984 Olympics up in Ventura County. Maritime from Connecticut and Texas from Austin. As we come to the 500, Los Gatos B maintaining their lead over NorCal. NorCal pressing hard. NorCal uh, making a slight deviation in their steering, but they straightened up now. Los Gatos seem to have taken advantage. Over on the far side, the challenge is coming from Maritime. 
Maritime have established the lead over Casinas to their starboard and Texas to their port. Maritime are pressing hard and may actually be challenging NorCal at this point. Los Gatos B hanging on to their lead in lane one. Some very good sculling coming here from the Los, Los Gatos B crew. Perfectly in sync. They've upped the rating now. They can feel, smell that finish line. Maritime are challenging hard. NorCal seem to be struggling a little bit to lift the rating. The Maritime charging hard on the far side. So as we approach the finish line, Los Gatos B, very skilled demonstration of cross sculling. Out on the far side, Maritime seem to have just squeezed past NorCal. <coughs> Pressed hard by Texas. Casitas and Newport Sea Base. Okay, we have race number 73. This is the Women's Concept 2 Youth Quad Grand Final. Lane 1, we have the Redwood Scholars A. Lane 2, Los Gatos A. Lane 3, Maritime Rowing Club A. Lane 4, Newport Sea Base A. Lane 5, Long Beach Junior Crew. Lane 6, Redwood Scholars B. We have a start to this race. All crews have out cleanly. And we're through 100 meters. This is a grand final. Six shells in this race. And through the first 250 meters down is a very tight race. Our, our leader by a bow ball is in lane one. That's Redwood Scholars. They are followed by lane three, Maritime. Rowing Club A by about a seat over Los Gatos A in lane two. Then in lane six is Redwood Scholars B, followed by lane five, Long Beach Junior Crew, and then lane four, Newport Sea Base A. All crews keeping a very tight field, the six crew field. They're taking advantage of pretty good racing conditions down here in the first thousand meters and as we approach our 500 meter mark Redwood Scholars has increased their lead to about a two seat lead over the crew in lane two that's Los Gatos Los Gatos trying to hold off the crew in lane three that's Maritime so the first three crews are in lane one two and three Redwood Scholars, Los Gatos, Maritime Rowing Club A, respectfully. However, lane six, Redwood Scholars is making a push for that third position. They have challenged Maritime Rowing Club A in lane three. And Long Beach Junior Crew also in the hunt for that third position in lane five, as is Newport Sea Base. Very, very good race for that, for all of them trying to get in the medal contention. All crews rowing very comfortably. Coming through our 750 meter mark, 750 down. Crews are digging in. This is the meat of the race. This is where it happens. And it hap looks like our crew in lane one, the Redwood Scholars, has increased their lead to about a seat of Los Gatos. Los Gatos is the crew in lane two. That's Los Gatos A. They have a one seat open water to Maritime Rowing Club, but Maritime Rowing Club and Redwood Scholars B in lane six are fighting out neck and neck for that third position. 
Long Beach Junior Crew has just jumped into that group. They're challenging for that third position. They just took a move, and they've taken over that third position. As a Seaport, Newport Sea base, they also are in it. Quite a boat race for the second for that third position. Coming up on a, our 1,000-meter mark appears to be Redwood Scholars. They are in a dogfight with Los Gatos. Los Gatos is challenging them for that first position. But it's a really a good race for our third position. Maritime, Redwood Scholars, Long Beach Junior Crew, and Newport Seabees all neck and neck position. And that's our call from 1,000 meters for the Women's Concept 2 Youth 4 by Grand Final. This is the Grand Final of the event, event for which the previous race was the Petite Final. Based on yesterday's results, Redwood Scholars did a significantly faster time than the other crews in this event. So Nor the Los Gatos are really taking it to them and throwing out a challenge today. Approaching the 500 meter mark, <clears throat> Redwood Scholars are maintaining that lead. They're starting to move away a little bit from Los Gatos. Los Gatos maintaining the challenge. Those two crews not really being challenged by the rest of the crews in the race, but it is a significant race for third place. And out in lane five, Long Beach Junior Crew have taken the racing rating up and are starting to move away from Maritime in three, Newport Sea Base in four, and the Redwood Scholars B crew out in lane six. Very nice sculling from Redwood Scholars as they come down in lane one. Redwood Scholars is a specialist sculling program. They don't do sweet rowing, and they're very, very competently coached. Los Gatos putting in an excellent performance. They've significantly closed the time gap between their times of yesterday and Redwood Scholars. Los Gatos are keeping Redwood Scholars honest and pressing hard as they come down to the line. Out in the middle of the course, it's Long Beach Junior Crew just maintaining their lead, but they're being pressed hard. They're the lead for third place, but they're being pressed hard by Redwood Scholars B out in the far outside and Maritime in lane three, with Newport Sea Base really pressing Maritime as they come into the final 250. <clears throat> as they approach the line, Redwood Scholars, beautiful sculling, lovely quad sculling. Los Gatos, and very tight in the middle, Long Beach just hanging on to the lead that they established in the middle of the race course, but being pressed hard by a very fast finishing Newport Sea Base crew. With Maritime and Redwood Scholars B following. Okay, this is race number 74. 
This is the men's youth four by second final. This is the petite final. Lane one, Casitas Rowing. Lane two, Capital. Lane three, this Redwood Scholars B. Lane four, Los Gatos B. Lane five, Oakland Athletic Rowing Society. Lane six, Maritime Rowing Club. And lane seven, Newport Sea Base. It's a seven, seven crew race. All crews out of the blocks cleanly. We've just crossed our first 100 meters. Our early leader is in lane two. That's Capital Crew. They are challenged by lane five, Oakland Rowing Society. Neck and neck for that first and second position. They are bow ball to bow ball at this point in our race. Followed by lane one, Casitas Rowing for that third position. Then Redwood Scholars in lane three, followed by lane six, Maritime, and then Newport Sea Base in lane seven. Coming up on our 500 meters gone. 500 meters gone, and it's the crew in lane two. Capital is our race leader. They are hold, trying to hold off the crew in lane one. Casitas rowing. Quite a quite a boat race between Capital and Casitas through the first 500 meters. They are being challenged very strongly by the crew in lane five. Oakland Athletic Rowing Society. They also in the hunt for that first position. They made a move to the 500 meters. They took their 10. Lane six also jumped on a 10 at, at the 500. Maritime, they're back in it. And lane seven, Newport Sea Base, our fifth crew, and followed by Redwood Scholars in lane three. Quite a, quite a boat race. All crews in contact with each other through 750 meters gone. Still a big capital crew, still our race leader. Only by about two seats yet because Casitas is not out of the hunt. They have take, challenged them in lane one. And, and Oakland Athletic Rowing Society also right on their stern. So it's, it's capital is our leader followed by Casitas Rowing, then Oakland Athletic Rowing Society for that first, second, third position. And here comes Maritime Rowing Club. For, they're making a challenge for that third position. They just took a 10 out in lane six. Quite a race. This is some boat racing by these, by these all six of these quads. Through 1,000 meters, this is your call. It's capital by two seats over Lake Cas by Casitas Rowing in lane one. They only have two seats on on Oakland Athletic Rowing Society, who is holding off Maritime in lane six, followed by Newport, check that, followed by Redwood Scholars in lane three, and then Newport Sea Base in lane seven. That's our call for the men's youth second final quad. The San Diego Tourism Marketing District is a tourism improvement district serving all areas within the city of San Diego. Lodging businesses with 70 rooms or more within the city are assessed a 2% fee on each room night. These dollars are used to support marketing and promotional effort, a variety of program services, and special events that increase room night sales for assessed hotels. This consistent source of funding for tourism marketing allows San Diego to maintain its status as a competitive first-tier visitor destination and is vital to the strength and success of the city's tourism economy. Approaching the 500 meter mark. Capital in lane two, maintaining Sorry, Casitas in lane one, maintaining a lead. In lane two, Capital. 
very close between lane one, Casitas, lane three, Redwood Scholars, B. And lane six, Maritime. Very tight here between lane one, Casitas, lane three, Redwood Scholars, B and Maritime out lane six. Maritime in turn are being pressed hard by Oars and Los Gatos B. Capital seem to be trailing in lane two at this point with Newport Sea Base B just in touch on the far side Very tight for first place between Redwood Scholars B, who has seen to have made a significant move. Casitas, slight wobble in their steering, but they're trying to maintain their lead at this point. And out on the far side, Maritime are being pressed hard by a very fast finishing Los Gatos B crew. They're in lane four. It's Redwood Scholars B who are coming through past Casitas. Casitas hanging on to second place at this point. But it's the Redwood Scholars B crew who have eased past the rest of the field. Very tight between Casitas and Maritime on the, for second place. And then Los Gatos B and Oars. Very tight between them. And then out on the far side, Newport Sea Base B and Capital. Okay, we're getting ready for race number 75. This is the men's youth four by grand final. Seven crews in this race. Lane one, Newport Sea Base A. Lane two, Maritime Rowing Club A. Lane three, Los Gatos A. Lane four, Artemis. Lane five, Redwood Scholars A. Lane six, Long Beach Junior Crew. Lane seven, Texas Rowing Club A. Our crews are being pulled. And they're off. We have a start to race number 75, the men's youth four by grand final. Seven crews in this event. Very good conditions down here at the first thousand meters. And all seven crews out cleanly and very tightly packed across the field. Early leader through the first 100 meters as they are sprinting out of the blocks at a high cadence is our crew in lane two, Maritime Rowing Club A. For second place, it could be anybody's call, but it appears to be the crew in lane five, Redwood Scholars, followed by the crew in lane one, Newport Sea Base A. Then lane seven, Texas Rowing Club, followed by Jun Long Beach Junior Crew in lane six, Maritime in lane two, and then Artemis in lane four. Quite quite a race going on. No, cr All crews within contact of each other. Hard to call positioning at this point. Through 500 meters gone, it's the crew in lane three, Los Gatos is our race leader. They're up by about three seats over lane one, Newport Sea Base, as a slight lead, about a length lead over lane two, Maritime Rowing Club A. They are up by about a bow ball on lane five, Redwood Scholars. 
and then it's Artemis in lane four, followed by Long Beach Junior Crew in lane six, and then Texas Rowing Club in lane seven. This is a, a quad race. The bow oarsman is doing the steering. A lot of moving pieces that he's racing, racing besides just pulling. Well through 750 meters down, we're approaching our 1,000 meter mark, and it's quite a boat race for the first and second position. It's maritime, uh, check that, Los Gatos in lane three, by about, with about a seat over Newport Sea Base in lane one. They have open water to the crew in lane five, Redwood Scholars by about a seat over lane three, lo, lane two, Los Gatos. Sorry about, check that. Lane three, Los Gatos. Then Artemis in lane four, followed by Texas Rowing Club in lane seven, and Long Beach Junior in lane six. And that's your call from 1,000 meters for the men's youth grand final, four by. This is the premier sculling event at this regatta, the grand final of the men's youth quad, under 19 race. Very, very encouraging to see so many crews competing in the quad skull races in the youth under 17 and under 16 ranks. As we come towards the 500, the crew in lane three, Los Gatos and the crew in lane one, Newport Sea Base, seem to have separated themselves out from the rest of the field. Very tight for third place between Maritime, Artemis, and Redwood Scholars A. as they approach the 250. Still extraordinarily tight between Newport Sea Base and Los Gatos. Both crews have taken the rating up. Newport Sea Base appear to have done that a little more effectively than Los Gatos. Newport Sea Base have just really sat up and stepped on it. Very crisp sculling. They're really getting the blades in effectively and pushing away with the legs, each stroke. Maritime, sorry, Artemis. Seem to be having a, a little bit of a steering problem. Uh, look as if, looks as if they've sculled into Los Gatos' lane. But as we approach the finish line, very accomplished sculling from Newport Sea Base. Los Gatos have hung in there, just not able to raise the rating quite as effectively as Newport Sea Base. And very tight for third. Artemis with their steering problems being challenged out in lane five by Redwood Scholars A. Might just hang on, Maritime Redwood Scholars. Sorry, Artemis, Redwood Scholars, and followed by Maritime, Ben Long Beach Junior Crew, and Texas Rowing Club.
Okay, we're getting ready for race number 76. This is the women's under 16, eight grand final. Four crews in this race. Marin's in lane one, lane two, Newport Sea Base, lane three, NorCal crew, and lane four, Cathedral Catholic High School. Crews are being pulled. Okay, we have a start to race number 76. This is the women's under 16, eight grand final. Four crews in this event. All four crews have gotten out of their starting blocks cleanly. Going through their high starting cadence and we'll be shifting down their race cadence after about 20 to 25 strokes out of the blocks our early leader is in lane one that's marin they have about a seat on lane two newport sea base who has about a seat on norcal crew in lane three trying to hold off lane four cathedral catholic high school for that third position Two fifty down in this race, the women's under sixteen eight grand final. And Marin continues to hold on to their lead in lane one. They have four seats on Newport Sea Base. That's our crew in lane two. With NorCal crew and Cathedral Catholic challenging Newport Sea Base for that third place position as we approach five hundred meters. Still, still the crews are appreciating pretty good racing conditions as far as the water goes down here in the first 1,000 meters. But through a 500 meters gone, Marin has increased their lead over Nor Newport Sea Base. They have about a seat open water, as does Newport Sea Base over NorCal crew for that second position. NorCal is trying to hold off Cathedral Catholic and maintain their third position, but the Cathedral Catholics having nothing to do with that right now. All challenging for our, our fields approaching set. Marin has increased their lead by about three seats. They have about a half a boat length open water lead on Newport Sea Base. Newport Sea Base has about a lead a length on NorCal crew. NorCal crew has Cathedral Catholic. Again, that second, third position where that's where the dogfight is right now. Well through seven hundred and fifty meters down. Crews are digging in. This this is a part of the race where they really have to get tough. They, this is where it happens. 750 to 1250. They're approaching that thousand meter marks. So all the crews will be taking their tens, their twenties, executing their races. Looks like Marin just just took 
are up about a length and a half open water over Newport Sea Base. Newport Sea Base being challenged by NorCal crew for that second position. They all can smell that thousand meter mark and for that third position. Rin, Newport Sea Base, then NorCal, followed closely by Cathedral Catholic High School, the thousand meters. That's our women's under 16, eight final. Life is not a rehearsal, is a quote often repeated by Jean Jessup Hervey. Competitors understand this in a keen way, recognizing the drive to be the best must come from within and never relent. With family ties to Zlack and the San Diego Rowing Club dating back to the 1900s, rowing has naturally been a part of the family. This cup is to honor Jean's spirit and the spirit of all competitors. Work hard, play hard, enjoy life. The Jean Jessup Cup honors the men's high school quad. In the third 500 of women's under 16 8, this is the first time that we've seen this age differentiation in youth event at the Crew Classic, mirroring the change made by US Rowing, who have abandoned the Varsity JV third varsity concept and now run races for youth which is under 19 under 17 and under 16 as we have here in lane one it's marine they have really put the power on during the third 500 and have a significant lead over newport sea base who in turn have uh, a lesser but still significant lead over norcal in lane three with the local crew from Cathedral Catholic pressing hard on the outside in lane four. This race is being umpired by our visitor from uh, the president of the Belgian Rowing Federation, Gwenda Stevens, accompanied by John Walker, who was the US umpire at the Sydney Olympics. Coming into the final 250, Marin, a commanding lead. <laughs> really have the luxury of going, let's keep the power on and let's look pretty as they come into the final 200 meters. Just keeping the pressure on all the way through the release. Newport Sea Base have valiantly pressed them over most of the race course, just not quite able to match the precision of the Marine crew as they come down towards the finish line, but still have plenty of push to stay ahead of NorCal in lane three and the local crew, Cathedral Catholic, in lane four. Commanding win for the Marin boat. In second place in those distinctive uniforms, Newport Sea Base. With NorCal competing valiantly to the end and Cathedral Catholic keeping the push on their boat all the way through to the finish line. Okay, we have a, we're in to the race number 77 and we're well into our race. This is the men's under 16, eight Rose Cup. This is a grand final, grand final of the men's under 16, eight. 
Five crews in this race, Marin's in lane one, lane two, Pacific, lane three, Long Beach Junior crew, lane four, Dallas United, and lane five, NorCal crew. Our race leader coming up on 500 meters gone is the crew in lane five, that's NorCal crew. They're up by about three seats. Lane one, Marin, who's up by two seats on lane two, Pacific, who's up by four seats on Long Beach Junior Crew and then Dallas United in lane four. Five crews in our men's under 16 grand final. Quite a boat race coming down this, coming down our course. They're still appreciating pretty good conditions, handling, handling the tide going out and a slight headwind behind us. Quite coming up on 750 meters gone, and it's a boat race from our crew out in the far lane, NorCal crew, and the crew in the near lane, Marin. Bow ball to bow ball, they're training bow balls. Followed by Pacific in lane two, who's down by about six seats to the, to the leaders. Then it's Long Beach Junior crew challenging also for that third position in lane three. Dallas United bringing up that fifth position in lane four. The crews have taken our power tens. They can they can feel that thousand meters coming up. This is the the meat of the race. Marin has taken a one boat lake three. They have moved through that five hundred to that 750 to 1,000 meter mark. They are up by one length on lane two Pacific. Pacific has taken command of that second place. And then it's the NorCal crew in third position in lane five, followed by Long Beach, Long Beach in lane three. At 1,000 meters, it's Marin, followed by Pacific, then NorCal crew, followed by Long, Long Beach Junior, and then Dallas United for that fifth position. That's our call from a thousand meter the men's under six Attention, ladies and gentlemen, athletes and spectators. Would Anna Kyle Canella please come to the finish line tent? We have your driver's license. Anna Kyle Canella. Approaching the 500, very tight race between Marin and Pacific. with out on the far side, NorCal and Dallas United battling for that third spot. Trailing at this point is the Long Beach Junior Crew. Marin, a, a, a substantial lead at this point over Pacific, but Pacific can sniff them over their shoulders and are keeping the pressure on and have lifted the rating now, chasing, trying to chase Marin down. Out on the far side, Dallas United is trying to stay in contact with Pacific. And outside them, NorCal can see and hear Dallas United over their right shoulders and are chasing them down. The men's under 16 8 Rose Cup Grand Final. Marin in control. They have 
Pacific just in their sights on their starboard. Their coxswain can see them. They're keeping the pressure on. They're doing what they need to do in order to stay ahead. They've lifted the rating. So have Pacific. Pacific just not giving up. They're really pressing hard on Marin. And out on the far side for third place, Dallas United. Again, being pressed very hard by the NorCal crew. Coming to the line, Marin, Pacific. Dallas United and NorCal. And still on the course at this point, the crew from Long Beach. Okay, we're ready for race number 78. This is the women's under 16 Ulster Challenge Cup four by with Coxon. This is a grand final. There is three crews in this race. Lane one, Maritime Rowing Club. Lane two, Redwood Scholars. Lane three, NorCal Crew. We have a start. All three crews got out of their blocks cleanly. These, this is a sculling race for four oarsmen in each shell with a coxswain. Takes a couple of the dynamics out of the out of the picture for the rowers. The coxswain steering at this point and calling the race also. Coming up on 250 meters down, Maritime in lane one is our race leader. They are up by four seats on the crew in lane two, Redwood Scholars. They're being challenged for that second position by NorCal crew in lane three. A little bit of open water between those two crews. The three crews have settled into their race cadence, rowing comfortably, coming up the up our course which still we're still having really good conditions down at this point of the ra race course two fifty down we're coming up on our five hundred meter mark and maritime has extended their lead to about one seat open water to redwood scholars the crew in lane two norcal they're trying to contend having some trying to contend for a position in the, for that second spot. They're having a little bit of a challenge at this point. Well through our 500 meters and Maritime is rowing comfortably in the extra good conditions of the protected lanes of lane one from from the quartering winds looks like maritime has taken their 10 as they approach their 750 meter mark redwood scholars is countering with their 10 trying to keep that check that surge that from maritime in lane two Lane three, NorCal, also trying to get their rhythm back and get back into this race. Seven fifty gone. Twelve fifty to go. Maritime rowing comfortably in the lead. They are in our crew in lane one. 
They are up by about a boat and a half, half lead on the crew in lane two, Redwoods, followed by a cow crew, open water distance behind us. And that's your call with a thousand meters gone, Maritime. Our race leader followed by Redwood Scholars, NorCal crew. This is the women's under 16 Ulster Challenge Cup, four by with Coxon, grand final. In 1996, when craft beer was still a foreign term and San Diego County was home to only a handful of breweries, the Chapman brothers, Ron and Rick, opened a brew pub in their hometown of Coronado. Today, CBC stays true to its San Diego roots, brewing abundantly hoppy West Coast style ales, which are available today in 14 U.S. states and 12 countries. In addition to the long-established pub in Coronado, the company opened a tasting room inside its San Diego production facility in 2013 and a tasting room and restaurant in Imperial Beach, California in 2014. Stay coastal. In the third 500, 500 at this point, in the women's under 16 Ulster Challenge Cup for Coxed Quads. Maritime in the lead, followed by Redwood Scholars, followed by NorCal. The Cox Quad is a fabulous introductory boat for junior rowing. Not only does it have a coxswain, so the inexperienced rowers do not have to worry about the intricacies of steering with a tow. But they're all, coaches are also able to put otherwise mismatched rowers in the same boat. Unlike a four, which requires some balance between the rowers on either side, in a quad, it's symmetrical. And so all rowers are able to contribute regardless of their height, weight, or size. In lane one, Maritime have a significant lead over Redwood Scholars who have a more than significant lead over NorCal through in lane three. Maritime have uh, pressed the accelerator now. I see their rating has jumped up about 300 meters from the finish line. Obviously very proud of their performance and want to put in the best time that they can. They're assisted by a nice tailwind here. Not as strong as it was earlier in the day still that sort of tailwind that crews love to row with nice quick catches and just keeping the rating up tempo to take advantage of the assistance they're getting from the tailwind maritime from connecticut a very accomplished under-16 boat. Sculling very, very well. Pushing the boat along. Grabbing the water and keeping the push on with the legs. Just letting those blades drop in. Getting the legs on. Very technically proficient under-16 crew. Coaches are to be complimented. And then followed by Redwood Scholars, who are probably the one of the premier sculling junior programs on the West Coast. And then still on the race course, 
is the NorCal crew. So Maritime Rowing Club, the Women's Under-16 Ulster, Ch Ulster Challenge Cup winners unofficially. Okay, race number 79 is on the on the course. We are well into it. Five crews in this race. New, it's the men's under 16, four by Withcox and grand final. It's a new lane one, Newport Sea Base. Lane two, Oakland Athletic Rowing Society. Lane three, Lake Las Vegas. Lane four, Cathedral Catholic High School. Lane five, NorCal crew. Coming through 250 meters down, our race leaders, lane two, that's Oakland Athletic Rowing Society. They have about three seats on Newport Sea Base in lane one, followed by our crew in lane five, NorCal crew. Those are our one, two, and three for that fourth position, challenging NorCal crew for that third position. It's Cathedral Catholic High School in lane four. Then it's Lake Las Vegas in lane three, bringing up our fifth position. Our crew's rowing comfortably now, coming through that 500 meter mark. 500 meters gone. And it's Oakland Athletic Rowing Society is the race leader at this point. But Newport Sea Base is having nothing to do with that. They're staying right in their back pocket in lane one for that first and second position. Then it's NorCal crew in the outside lane in five trying to hold on the third position, but they're being challenged strongly by Cathedral Catholic High School right next to them in lane four. And then Lake Las Vegas also is looking for that third position in lane three. This is four oarsmen sculling with a coxswain. The coxswain's doing the steering and calling the race. The oarsmen can concentrate on their rowing. Coming to the 750 meter mark, looks like Oakland Athletics taking their taking their 10. They're trying to hold off Newport Sea Base, who also took their 10 and has picked up a seat on them. It's, so it's at this point, Oakland Athletic Rowing Society is our leader, but only by three seats over Newport Sea Base, who has been pressing them all the way up the course. Then it's NorCal at lane five for that third position, being challenged very strongly by. Cathedral Catholic High School and Lake Las Vegas in lanes four and three respectfully. All five crews bearing down as they get through their 750 meters and looking for that 1,000 meter mark to make their next move. This is where they boomerang ricochet out of the chute for that finish line. At Approaching our 1,000 meter mark, this is where we are. It's Oakland Athletic Rowing Society holding on to a slim lead over Newport Sea Base in lane two. Quite a dogfight. Then it's NorCal Crew for that third position in lane five. Then Cathedral Catholic High School and Lake Las Vegas. And that's our call and our positioning for the men's under 16 four by with Coxon. This is a grand final. Sharp Healthcare congratulates the San Diego Crew Classic on nearly five decades of rowing excellence and is proud to sponsor the Sharp Memorial Hospital Cup. The affiliated physicians, nurses, and staff of Sharp Healthcare have provided quality health care to the San Diego community for more than 65 years. This tradition of service excellence and a passion for caring is further demonstrated by Sharp's support of the San Diego Crew Classic since 1982. Sharp nurses, staff, and volunteers provide health screenings and medical service for the regatta, and Sharp hosts today's classic Brunch by the Bay. The Cushman Wellness Center, located at Sharp Memorial Outpatient Pavilion, encourages men and women to take action to live a healthier life. The center takes the annual physical to a new level by providing a comprehensive health assessment, personal health coaching, and lifestyle analysis. As they come through the 500 in the men's under 16 Cox quad, Newport Sea Base 
have pressed the challenge to oars and have overtaken them. These two crews have moved away from the rest of the field. Out on the far side, NorCal have a lead over Cathedral Catholic with Lake Las Vegas a little way back. But on this side of the race course, it's a ding-dong tussle between Newport Sea Base and Oars. Oars look like they may have pushed back a little bit at Newport Sea Base. This is going to be a tough race all the way to the line. Both these crews will know that they've been in a real scrap by the time they cross the finish line. Over on the far side, NorCal maintaining that lead over Cathedral Catholic, but Cathedral Catholic are pressing back at them. On this near side, Oars staying steady, keeping the push on. In lane one, Newport Sea Base, trying to lift the rating, managing to eke out a couple of inches. Difficult to say who's got the lead at this point. By staying steady, Oars may just have come onto parity with Newport Sea Base. Cathedral Catholic out there in fourth place, pushing hard on NorCal crew. <coughs> As we come to the finish line, very tight between Oars and Newport Sea Base. Sea Base pushing the rating up. It could be very well come down to whoever puts their oars in the water last and gets that final surge. Coming down to the line, I think oars just have their bow ball in front. Unofficially, oars, Sea Base. And out on the far side, NorCal, keeping their rhythm going, keeping their boat in front of the local Cathedral Catholic crew. <coughs> Cathedral Catholic battling valiantly. <laughs> and on the course is Lake Las Vegas. Okay, race number 80 is underway. This is the women's under 17, four by second final. This is a petite final. Two crews in this race. Lane one, NorCal crew, and lane two, Lake Las Vegas. We are through our 250 meter mark, and NorCal crew has a slight lead over Lake Las Vegas. It's quite a good boat race to this point. Very good conditions. The wind has even settled down more we have a very slight tailwind, so the crews are appreciating that extra push on their stern, pushing them up the race course. But right now, they're not caring so much about that as just getting their rhythm, settling into their race cadence, and going for it. Quite a boat race. Lane one, NorCal crew holding on to a three-seat lead over Lake Las Vegas, lane two. Both crews look very comfortable, very synchronized, very efficient. This is a quad race without coxswain. So the bow oars woman is steering this boat as well as rowing. And usually your two oars woman is calling the race. So there's more moving pieces to think about, more stuff going on besides just racing. We are well through 500 meters on. They are looking towards that 750 meter mark. NorCal has opened up slight open water lead on Las Lake Las Vegas as they are approaching the 750 meter mark. Looks like NorCal has taken their 10. 
very efficient. And Lake Las Vegas appears to be countering. They are not going to let NorCal move on them. Quite a boat race. Fun to watch at this point. We are through 750 meters down. NorCal trying to separate themselves from Lake Las Vegas. But Lake Las Vegas is not hearing anything about that. They're still in it. And they're holding their right in their hip pocket. Looking for that 1,000 meter mark where they want to make their move too. As will NorCal crew will do. Both crews have been another 10, and they've countered each other. So we re our position remains the same. As we come up to 1,000 meters gone for the women's under 17 quad grand second final, NorCal holding on to a three-seat open water lead to La Lake Las Vegas in lane two. And that's our call from 1,000 meters. Coaches and athletes, did you know that Shimano Rowing Dynamics is a global leader in rowing equipment? Their cutting-edge technology equipment supports rowing performance with a virtual pivot binding system foot stretcher and a rigid sole shoe that maximizes power transfer to the footboards. Shimano has been manufacturing athletic performance footwear for over 34 years and is proud to support the rowing industry with Shimano Dynalast technology for rowing safety and performance. Shimano Rowing Dynamics improves rowing efficiency and offers full adjustability for all your rowing needs. Follow and like us on Instagram at Row Shimano. In the third 500, the women's under 17 co uh, quad. <clears throat> Unlike the under-16 events, which were coxed quads for under-17 and the youth events, the uh, scholars themselves have to do the steering using a tow. So normally it's the bow person who does this, but it's not unknown for the towing to be done by someone further down the boat. Just depends who has the knack for it. In lane one, NorCal crew have a lead in the third 500 over Lake Las Vegas in lane two. Lake Las Vegas are having a little adjustments on their steering. They seem to be in the process of coming over in their lane. They've now straightened up. And they're putting the pressure on to try and chase down the lead crew, which is the NorCal crew from the Bay Area. So the NorCal crew have a lead of about a length and a half over Lake Las Vegas. Lake Las Vegas are really going for it. They're really hanging on to the NorCal crew. NorCal are having a little bit of a steering adjustment themselves. Looks like they were toying with lane two at one point, but have now adjusting back into lane one. Lake Las Vegas are right on the boy line between lane two and lane three. They'll want to move the, off that, which they are doing right now. NorCal, again, drifting over towards lane two onto the boy line between two and three. Gets very difficult at this stage of the, uh, of the race. They're in the last 500 meters. Uh, the oxygen debt is significant for each of the scholars. And uh, it's an extra burden on the person with the toe to deal with the physiological requirements of the race and the technical requirements of steering a straight course.
Everybody settled out now and coming towards the finish line. NorCal crew in the middle of their lane, <clears throat> pushing their releases away. Lake Las Vegas, keeping the rating high, keeping it bright, not giving up, really chase, trying to chase down their competitors from NorCal. As we come to the line in the women's under 17 quad, it's NorCal from the Bay Area and Lake Las Vegas from Nevada. Okay, race number 81 is out of the blocks. This is the women's under 17 four by grand final. There are five, six crews in this race. In lane one, Redwood Scholars A, lane two, Connecticut, lane three, Los Gatos, lane four, Redwood Scholars B, lane five, Texas Rowing Club, and lane six, Maritime Rowing Club. This is a six crew final grand final well through 100 meters approaching our 250 meter mark our early leader is in lane two that's connecticut they have about a seat on lane one redwood scholars who has about three seats on our crew in lane three los gatos they are followed closely by lane four redwood scholars trying to hold off the crew in lane six for that fourth position Maritime Rowing Club, followed by Texas Rowing Club in lane five. Crews have gotten through their sprint at the start. They come out fast at a high cadence and they settle into their race cadence. They are all settled in comfortably, getting used to their courses, their race for the first three positions it's Redwood Scholars by a bow ball over Connecticut Connecticut by about a seat over Los Gatos in lane three Connecticut's in lane two one two three the first three lanes are giving us a boat race but they are being challenged in lane six for that third position Maritime doesn't want to hear about it. they want to be in that top three also they're they made a move and they're trying to hold off lane five Texas, who's challenging Maritime for that fourth position, followed by Redwood Scholars in lane four. But as our field comes comes down the course or up the course, we're approaching our 750 meter marks. We're still appreciating really good racing conditions down here. Our leader right now is Redwood Scholars in lane one. They are up by three seats on the crew in lane two, Connecticut. Connecticut has a bell ball on Los Gatos. That's your one, two, three. Lanes one, two, three are your, is the way we are placing it right now. Redwood Scholars, Connecticut, Los Gatos are the race leaders. They are being challenged by Maritime Rowing Club out in lane six, followed by Redwood Scholars, and then Texas Rowing Club in lane five. But quite a boat race for the first three positions. Nobody is conceding in those top three. And also Maritime is also in the hunt out in lane six for that top three positions. Approaching the thousand meter marks, Redwood Scholars is trying to hold off, as our race leader, they're trying to hold off Los Gatos. All three crews have taken their 10. Los Gatos has taken a bow ball lead over Connecticut for that second place position. Connecticut in our third place in lane two, followed by Maritime Rowing Club in lane six, then Redwood Scholars in lane four, followed by Texas Rowing Club. That's our call for the women's under 17 four by grand final at a thousand meters. This is the grand final of the women's under 17 quad. Two boats from the premier or one of the premier West Coast junior sculling programs, Redwood Scholars, Los Gatos, the other 
California contestant in this race, being challenged by crews from Texas Rowing Club, from Austin and Connecticut in lane two. And at the moment, it's the crew from Connecticut and the crew from Redwood Scholars who are at the fr uh, front end of this race, being challenged by Texas out in lane five. And it's Redwood Scholars B and Los Gatos who are at this stage contesting fourth place. It appears that Connecticut have a lead at this point, but it's not much of a lead over the crew in lane one from Redwood Scholars. As they hit the 500 meter mark, Connecticut and Redwood Scholars have jumped the rating up. The crew from Texas on the far side hasn't responded with the same sort of rating shift as far as I can see. I do beg your pardon. I've been miscalling this race. The crew in lane one, Redwood Scholars, is being challenged by Los Gatos in the middle of the race course. Connecticut are in touch, but they are at the moment trailing the Los Gatos crew who are in second place and the Redwood Scholars crew in lane one. Slight adjustment in the steering from Connecticut. Redwood Scholars in what is becoming increasingly benign water are keeping a nice bright rating and maintaining their lead if not moving away from the middle of the race course Los Gatos and next to them Connecticut. Coming towards the finish line, keeping the racing nice and bright. It's the crew from Redwood Scholars in the middle of the race course, Los Gatos. Followed by the crew from Connecticut. And then on the far outside, I believe that it's actually a crew from Maritime who were not on my program. And very tight for the last place in the race between Los Gatos and Okay, race number 82 is on the course. This is the men's under 17 four by second final. This is a petite final. There's two crews in this race. Lane one is Austin. And lane two, Los Gatos B. Both crews got out of their blocks cleanly. And we got quite a boat race through our first 250 meters down now. 250 meters down, it appears to be Los Gatos with a slight lead over Austin. About three seats. Los Gatos in the lead in lane two. Austin in lane one. Both crews have settled into their race cadence. They've They've shifted down. They come out at a high, high cadence out of the blocks. And about 20, 25 strokes in, the crews will shift down to a 32, 34, a comfortable, in quotation, race cadence. And they'll take that down the course and usually bring it up at the last 250 to 300 meters, bring the cadence back up. Right now, these two crews are battling it out. We have quite a boat race. It's, we're just going through 500 meter mark 
Oop, and just when I say that, Austin has a little slip up with their one oar. They, they're back in it. So Los Gatos has just taken advantage of that little slip by Austin, and they've opened up their lead to about a boat length of open water. Austin back in the race. They've settled in, trying to counter that little mistake and get back in this race. Los Gatos rowing comfortably. They're looking for that 750 meter mark. They can feel it. They just called their 10. Los Gatos took their 10 and it increased their lead to about a boat ha boat length and a half. This race after their little slip at the, about the 500 meter mark. Through 750, Los race came. Swinging along, they have a boat and a half length over over Austin. Austin rowing valiantly to get back into that race and have picked up at least a quarter of a length. Los Gatos can feel us approaching our thousand meter mark, they're taking their 10. They're gonna, this is where they really get down to it. They know this is the meat of the race. Through the thousand meters, 1250 and get to that finish line. But at the thousand meters, it's Los Gatos as our race leader. They have about a two length lead over the crew in lane one, Austin. And that's our call for the men's under 17, four by second final, a petite. Coaches, athletes, spectators, did you know there's always more ways to train? The Concept2 Ski Erg and Bike Erg use the same familiar monitor to give you similar feedback on your efforts and complimentary exercises. Also, check out over 30 apps to add even more variety to your indoor workouts, all from Concept2. This is the petite final of the men's under 17 quad. All the way from Texas, Austin Ryan Club in lane one and Los Gados B in lane two. Los Gados from the Bay Area. Curiously, I'm only seeing one boat at this stage on the race course. Which is the boat from Los Gatos. Our great Austin Rowing Club are a bit of a ways back at this point. They are there.
And just receiving their awards, I see, is uh, one of our oldest set of competitors in the race, the women's H8. Coming to the finish line, Los Gatos Rowing Club. Nice steady. I, I suspect something must have happened in the Austin Rowing Club boat. They're in lane one, but uh, they're quite a ways back at this point. So without knowing anything concrete, one suspects there may have been some technical difficulties with the equipment in that boat. They're determined to come home strong, though. They've lifted their rating, and they're racing for the finish line. Okay, we're getting ready for race 83. This is the men's under 17 four by grand final. It's the sixth crew race. Lane one is Maritime Rowing Club A. Lane two, Maritime Rowing Club B. Lane three, Los Gatos A. Lane four, Redwood Scholars. Lane five, River City. Lane six, Oakland Ro Athletic Rowing Society. And we have a start. And all six crews have gotten out cleanly. Quite a boat race. This is six crews across, and we do not have any separation between any of the bow balls. Again, this is a quad without coxswain. So one of the oarsmen is steering, usually it's the bow person steering from with a tow mechanism for the rudder. So there is quite some tech, besides rowing technique, there's some steering technique that goes into the racing strategy of this race. Through 250 meters down, our race leader is the crew in lane one, Maritime Rowing Club A boat, followed by Los Gatos A in lane three, shoot by about a bow ball over the other Maritime crew, Maritime Rowing Club B. Those are our one, two, and three crews, followed in lane six by the Oakland Athletic Rowing Society. They are not having anything ab about this. They are in this race also for that top position, followed by River City in lane five, and then Redwood Scholars in lane four, but quite a boat race. This is fun to watch at this point. Coming through 500 meters, it is a dogfight for those top positions. There's hardly any separation between these crews. It's lane one, Maritime A is our leader. They are barely hold, holding a one, half a seat lead over lane three, Los Gatos. Los Gatos by about two seats over lane two, Maritime. But out in lane six, we have Oakland Athletic Rowing Society challenging for that third position. Maritime B better watch. They can feel it too. It's quite a boat race. This is fun. Followed by River City in lane five and Redwood Scholars. They're also in the hunt. Six boats and nobody's out of this race or in command of this race. Coming on 750 meters down, Maritime Rowing Club A is our leader. They have taken a one seat, two seat lead over Los Gatos in Lane three, they are followed by Maritime B in lane three. Oakland Rowing, Athletic Rowing Society, they are challenging for that third position out in lane six, as is lane five, River City and Redwood Scholars. Well through our 750 meters down, this is the meaty part of the race. All crews taking their 10. Our leader in lane one, Maritime, is Took in, but lane three, Los Gatos countered with their 10 also. They have held it. They're hanging in there. 
looking for that first position also. Maritime B is in third position in lane two. They also are challenging. Lane six, Oakland Athletic Rowing Society, also in that challenging for that third position. At 1,000 meters, this is your call. It's Maritime A, lane one, followed by Oakland Los Gatos A in lane three, Maritime B in lane two, Oakland Athletic Rowing in lane six, and Redwood Scholars in lane four, then River City in lane five. That's our... UC San Diego Health enhances the lives of patients and residents of the greater San Diego community by providing medical care to those in need, as well as by championing programs and services that promote health, healing, and active lifestyle. Visit health.ucsd.edu for more information. They're in the third 500. It's the men's under 17 quad final. Crew in lane two seems to be dicing with the buoy line. They're very close to the crew in lane three, Los Gatos. And they're very close to each other in terms of their position on the race course. But it's the crew in lane one, Maritime Rowing Club A, who have a commanding lead in the race. The race in lane for second place is between Maritime B and Los Gatos A. They seem to be level pegging with each other at the moment, but are moving slightly away from the race for fourth place, which is happening between Oars and Redwood Scholars. The crew from River City in lane five. I'm not sure whether it's they who have moved into lane six or oars who have moved into lane five. But as we come down to the final 250 meters, it's the crew from Connecticut, from Maritime A, who are commanding this race. Nice crisp catches, lots of push on the legs, keeping the boat moving underneath them, keeping an eye on the crews over to their left. And it is the Los Gados boat who just might have a lead over the Maritime B crew, but the Maritime B crew are really coming home strong, although they have moved into lane one from lane two and are rowing in the dirty water of their compatriots who are about to cross the line in first place. So Maritime A in one, I think Maritime B in two and Los Gatos in three with Seems to have been some lane swaps out on the far side, so I'm not quite sure who finished in the positions there.
Your exercise routine is missing one thing. Flexibility. To work out in a way that works for you. Meet Active and Fit Now. A flexible, affordable fitness program designed for everybody. For one low cost, you can choose from thousands of fitness centers nationwide. Plus thousands of on-demand workout videos. And more. All starting at just $29 a month. So what's the catch? No catch. Visit our website to get active and fit now with Active and Fit Now. Hey, I'm Rick Chapman, uh, founder of Coronado Brewing Company with my brother Ron Chapman. I had a restaurant in Coronado back in the early, late 80s, early 90s, and uh, was looking for something else to do. And my brother and I found the location about 100 yards from where we grew up in Coronado, and where the brew pub Coronado Brewing Company is today. Put together a business plan and uh, started brewing in 1996. Being that we're in Coronado, you know, we're a military town surrounded by Navy bases, and and it's a, it's a big, big part, part of our community there. It's, it's been crazy. crazy. I mean, we were one of the first, I think there are seven breweries when we opened in 96. Um, now there's 160 brewing locations in San Diego plus. And we never really thought we were gonna be a package brewery that was, you know, selling in 19 countries and uh, about 20 states in the US. So yeah, it's changed quite a bit over the last 20, 24 years. Hi, my name is Mark Tyson. I'm the head brewer at Coronado Brewing Company. We've been around a while, but we haven't uh, gotten complacent or comfortable. We're always trying to evolve and, and uh, push ourselves in terms of uh, what we think is the best beer, and we're never satisfied, and we're always looking to improve and, and stay relevant. The current reigning king is Weekend Vibes, which is our uh, San Diego-style IPA. We just won a bronze medal at the Great American Beer Fest this last year for that. It's just such a classic, uh, juicy, super drinkable, delicious IPA. It's never really a big hop head, but gosh, our guys make incredible IPAs, so I drink the Weekend Vibes. It's just you know, a phenomenal beer. It's probably the best IPA we've ever made. Uh, I think our other, you know, kind of most popular beer is probably um, Orange Avenue Wit, which has been around for a really long time. Uh, really great, just uh, you know, classic kind of San Diego take on a, a Belgian Wit style. It's got coriander, orange peel, uh, some orange blossom honey in it. Uh, just really easy, light drinking, uh, anytime kind of beer. It goes really well with the San Diego weather. Thank you so much for taking part in the Beer Fest. Uh, I, I look forward to hearing some feedback. You get a chance, come to any of our three locations at Coronado Brewing Company. We have uh, the original location, the brew pub, then we have uh, this facility here, which is our production facility in San Diego. And then in Imperial Beach, we have a tasting room restaurant. So, love to have you come visit. Attention athletes, coaches, and spectators. Will Sydney Chate Walter please come to the information desk? We have your credit card that was left at So Sporty. Sydney Chate Walter.
the home point has been updated, please check it on the map. Program test. At the starting line is race number 84, Women's Collegiate Varsity, Jessup Whittier, Cup Invitational, Lane 1, Texas, Lane 2, California, 3, Washington, 4, USC, and in 5, UCLA. The premier event for the women's racing. Attention and row. Out of the start, 
controlled abandon as these women get their boats up to speed before they make their shift to the race pace. Absolutely level for the first 10 strokes. University of Washington pokes their bow ball ahead slightly. Very powerful crew. Got a couple seats over Austin, Texas, the Longhorns in lane one. But everybody's in contention as we approach the 250 meter mark. All right, 250 gone. The Trojan women have a canvas that's from the bow seat up to the bow ball on Texas. Let's get some stroke ratings here as they settle into their cadence. Once again, 20, 25 upstrokes to get the boat up to speed. And then it's just a question of getting the rhythm, giving length per stroke. We're approaching the 500 meter mark. USC still on the lead. All right, SC still on the lead, but Texas now putting on a big surge. California is in that third spot, then Oklahoma. And I've been calling the race wrong. It's the Washington Huskies with the white blades. Got to shake out the rust here. And now Texas is your race leader over Washington. Washington has in that fourth position and trailing is UCLA. 750 gone. Longhorns really clipping things along here. In terms of their rating. Very controlled, deliberate. 35 and a half strokes per minute. I apologize for the earlier call for you Husky fans. It was Huskies early out of the box, but now it's Texas starting to show some true speed here with a six seat advantage over Washington. So California is two seats down in third position. Then SC holds down the fourth position, about six seats down on Cal. UCLA is one length behind SC. 1,000 meters, this is where it gets fun. Say this is where the race actually begins and it's Texas, your race leader, followed now by California in lane two, then Washington in three, SC in four, and UCLA in five. Back to you, Charlie in the tower. And thank you for that early race call. Ladies and gentlemen, just so you know here, University of Texas is the defending NCAA National Championship Program. So the Texas women here have a lot on the line here as they work to protect that title. And so far they're doing it well here with Texas, as you hear, in the lead. Now many of these programs racing have been national champions as well. California, Washington, in various capacities, all these teams are top notch. So you're looking at the best of the best here coming down the race course. Texas in the lead, California and Washington chasing hard, trailing are the teams from USC and UCLA. But with the race only halfway over, lots of movement remains to happen. The water is very clean right now, good weather conditions on the. Texas in lane one, though, continues to walk away. They are powering through this field and continue to take water from both California and Washington. Southern California in that hunt, though, trying to hang on to Washington and possibly move up the bronze medal position. UCLA Bruins on the outside, lane five, trailing. Let's get a stroke right now for Texas. 
and Texas coming in at 37 strokes per minute. They've had a good high rate here. That's a good base rate for a program like this, and it's working to their advantage now as California and Washington almost bow ball to bow ball chase Texas down the course. The Texas women, the Longhorns, in a position here to hook them all and bring the gold back to the program here from the Crew Classic. Texas, California, Washington, Southern California, lane four, chasing hard right behind Washington, UCLA Bruins on the far outside. Texas along the shore, now in the spectator area, their rate's going up. They have open water, but they want more. It's working well for them. California in the gold and blue jerseys, right next to Washington in the white. That is a race to watch for second and third. Southern California down about four seats from Washington. UCLA back half a boat length open water. But it's all about Texas. Here come the Longhorns, the defending NCAA national champions, bringing it home here again at the Crew Classic in fine form with California just ahead in second and Washington in third. On the water, we've had a start of the Men's Collegiate Varsity Copley Cup. We're picking the race up at the 500 meter mark. Your race leader in lane two is ASR Nereus by almost a full length. Second position is Maris. Third position, UC San Diego. Fourth is Gonzaga. Fifth is San Diego, and Bates is in sixth. Really fun to watch. ASR Nereus as we approach the 750 meter mark. Very controlled, 36 strokes per minute. Their coxswain looks over this way and sees that he's almost got the bow ball of the second place crew. That second place crew is Maris. Then it's UC San Diego right next to them. Then after that, in lane six, is Bates with San Diego. Cruz is now approaching the 1,000 meter mark. Still your race leader in lane two. Once again, this is the Copley Cup. The premier event for collegiate men rowing. Narius, your race leader. Things tightening up for that second spot. My goodness, when they come down to you, Howard, it's going to be a blanket finish for second, third, fourth, and fifth. The only crew that's a bit off the pace is in lane one, that's San Diego. So I'll turn it over to you at the tower. Once again, this is race number 85, men's collegiate varsity Copley Cup. And thank you, Jim, for that first 1,000-meter race call. And folks, lane two, ASR Nerus is a student-run rowing club from the Amsterdam region of the Netherlands. So Amsterdam, Netherlands here, international flavor here at the Crew Classic. As these crews now move down the course here for the Copley Cup Grand Final, the top event for the men's rowing here, we are seeing continued good water conditions and fast racing across all the lanes. Now, lane two out in front, as you heard earlier, they have a commanding lead here, well over a length at this point, as they come down the course cleanly in charge. They had a very good first 1,000 meters, and now they're building on that here as they come into the last 500. In the second place position, we're going to go outside to lane four, Maris. Maris now about one length up over lane three, UC San Diego. UC San Diego 
and the outside boats from Gonzaga and Bates all closely packed together here. Trailing is lane one, University of San Diego. They're back off the pace. But it's the team from Amsterdam out in front. They continue in the lead in lane two. The real race here is going to be for lanes three, four, five, and six as they try to wrap up the second and third place positions. Now, lane three, lane three, UC San Diego, they've got their hands full with Marist. Marist putting on a good fight here just ahead of Gonzaga and Bates. But they've got to keep a close eye on those boats as they come into the last 300 as the sprints can be explosive. ASR Nerus way out in front, open water, followed by lane four, second place Marist. Then we have UC San Diego, Gonzaga, Bates, and then University of San Diego. Coming to the line now, the Copley Cup Grand Final, ASR Nerus from Amsterdam, looking really, really good here in control of the Copley Cup as they come to the line. Marist in lane four, holding on to that second place position by about two seats, followed by UC San Gonzaga, Bates, and then UC San Diego and USD. At starting line, they're pulling the crews for the women's varsity D1-3 club final. Absolutely ideal rowing conditions. Flat water, a touch of a tailwind. All th four crews are away. Lane one is UC Santa Barbara. Two is Purdue. Three, University of Calgary. And closest to us, lane four, the Buffaloes of Colorado. Calgary taking the early lead by two seats over UC Santa Barbara. Then it's Purdue and Colorado. It's just to touch off the pace of the leaders. We're beyond the breakage point as these women shift down to their race cadence. Once again, to establish rhythm, power, run per stroke. 250 meters gone. It's still Calgary on the lead. A couple seats over Purdue. And inside of them, closest to the shore, UC Santa Barbara. But really, anybody's boat race. All within two or three seats. This is where the coxswain can really, as always, make a difference in the race as to when you make a push. When you decide to put some heat on the other crew. Now it's Purdue and Calgary, bow ball to bow ball as we approach the 500 meter mark. Calgary rowing at 36 and a half is now passed by Purdue. Purdue now has a two seat advantage over the second place crew of Calgary. And then all the way to the inside is, are the Gauchos from UC Santa Barbara holding down that third spot and Colorado trails. The Boilermakers, the leader, rowing at a very, as you can say, comfortable, unless you're actually pushing your legs down, 35 and a half strokes per minute with a half a boat advantage. Santa Barbara right now putting on a big surge as we approach the 750 meter mark. So 750 down, it remains the Boilermakers of Purdue on your lead, followed by Calgary by about a half a boat. And then it's UC Santa Barbara in that third spot, 
with Colorado trailing. A lot of strategy comes into play now as we approach the halfway point. As I said earlier, the race really begins in Ernst at 500. Shows you the depth of the well of conditioning and their ability to push themselves through that. Calgary putting on a surge here as we approach the halfway mark. So the call of 1,000 meters, still Purdue by only two seats over Calgary. That third spot, one length back to Calgary is UC Santa Barbara with Colorado trailing. Sports and fun are traditions at Mission Bay's Camp Land on the Bay, which congratulates women rowers age 60 and older who exemplify the joys and rewards of rowing an active lifestyle. Camp Land is celebrating 44 years on Mission Bay, and their campers love to watch the rowers compete. Camp Land has a full marina and a complete range of boat and water sport rentals. As in rowing, the time-honored values of teamwork and good sportsmanship are instilled in the young campers who participate in the sports, games, and activities offered year-round at the park. Camp Land salutes the 48th Annual Crew Classic, a treasured Mission Bay tradition, the winners and all competitors for their trophy. Well, thank you, Jim, for that early call of the first thousand meters. And yes, you are so correct in that these crews, the real racing begins at the halfway marker. The coaches know it as the third 500. The rowers also know it as the third 500. And that's, that's where things really shake out and you start to see who's got the stamina and who falls off the pace. Now, right now, as you said, Jim, Purdue and Calgary are both right next to each other fighting this out. They are both in contact as they come down the course. In third place, we go to lane one, UC Santa Barbara. UC Santa Barbara, a club team just up the road here in Santa Barbara, California, but they have consistently been a great program on the West Coast here. In the third or fourth place position, it is Colorado in lane four. Four boats on the course, water conditions still great, but the race to watch here is between Purdue from Indiana and the University of Calgary from British Columbia. So again, more international flavor here at the San Diego Crew Classic as the Boilermakers and the Canadians from British Columbia duke it out here for this grand final. 35 strokes per minute right now for Purdue and they're probably going to start bumping that up here pretty soon right on their tail at 36. University of Calgary and back inside to Santa Barbara. On the outside, Colorado. And now Calgary pushing their stroke rate a little bit. Purdue still holding on. Purdue still holding on to a steady pace. They haven't pushed it yet. It's working well for them. It's a very strategic moment for the coxswains when do you call for the sprint when do you make the boat go so that's what we're always looking for here as the purdue boilermakers do a great job holding off british columbia calgary university of calgary from british columbia here in second they're holding off santa barbara by a little bit of open water and colorado in fourth this is the grace rett memorial trophy cup now finishing and it is Purdue from Indiana in the lead. Second place, University of Calgary, British Columbia, and Santa Barbara for third. With Colorado in fourth. Back to the starting area, it's race number 87, the Women's Collegiate Varsity UCSD Health Cal Cup. Final two. We have seven schools competing. Lane one, Old Dominion. Two, MIT, lightweight. Three, Loyola Marymount. Four, Bates. Five, Portland. Six, Marsh. And in lane seven, Seattle U. 
The starter is pu pulling the cruise. Still great conditions. It's not as flat as it was for the previous race, but it's still tailwind with an outgoing tide. And we have a start. Can hear all sorts of commands from coxswains as they initially go to the whip, get them up to speed. And, ah, oh, this is very beautiful. Bow balls all the way up. Oh, we have a full overhead crab over in lane one with Old Dominion. I don't know if they'll restart. The stroke orc, catching a crab means the blade doesn't go in square. The blade goes deep, and it's very tough to get it out. And that's uh, <laughs> the impossible, or not the impossible, What the result of what can happen. Worst case scenario is the orc shoe out of the boat. Check that, that was MIT that caught the crab, not Old Dominion. All right, 250 down. Once again, too close to call right now, but Old Dominion is poking their bow out ever so slightly over the other five boats that I can see. It's only the MIT lightweights that are off the pace. All right, now Portland pokes their bow ball out. Lane seven, also Seattle University working the lead, seesawing back and forth as we approach the 500 meter mark. So at 500 meters, it appears that Portland is on the lead, followed closely by the boat on the inside, Old Dominion. The Blues are putting the pedal down a bit and they've moved out to a four, maybe five seat advantage. Once again, it's rhythm over water, power from the entry of the blade, the catch all the way through the release. Now the crews are starting to separate with Old Dominion on the lead. Loyola Marymount is in your second spot. All crews are still in it. There's still overlap between all seven boats. 7.50 gone. Old Dominion Lane 1 still dominating the field. Their coxswain sits even with the bow person of the second place crew from Loyola. Then it's Portland in that third position followed by Marist. And then outside here to Seattle U. Still everybody overlapped from lane one to lane seven, which is a good sign. Once again, it's a testament to your conditioning here as we approach the real starting line of but right now, Old Dominion, very smooth with their execution of the stroke, leads by a boat length over the rest of the field. So I'll turn it back over to you at the tower. Beautiful condition for fast races. We would like to thank Walter Anderson Nursery for being a sponsor of the San Diego Crew Classic. Friendly, knowledgeable, and always welcoming, Walter Anderson Nursery offers customers a trusted, independently owned local resource for gardening and outdoor care needs. Stop by one of their two locations to get the expert advice and find the quality pants, plants you expect from a nursery. They are family owned, local, and independent since 1928. Ladies and gentlemen, now coming down the course in the second 1,000 meters is, as you heard, event number 87, the Women's Collegiate Varsity UCSD Health Trophy Cup. 
And we have a kind of race for you here that's going to get very exciting, a lot of overlap. Now, Old Dominion in the lead, followed by Loyola Marymount from just the road, followed by Portland Marist and Seattle U. Bates and MIT lightweights in the trailing positions. But these crews, as they hit the third 500, what we haven't seen is a lot of shaking out. So we're seeing a lot of these crews doing extremely well in the third 500, uh, which, as Jim said, is a real testament to their training. Now, in the lead along the shore, Old Dominion, they are taking more water from the rest of the field. But then we go outside to lane number five now. That's Portland. Keep your eye on Portland because they're in a real race here with lane three, Loyola Marymount. Will it be Loyola or Portland for that second place position? Old Dominion is dominating here as they come down the course. In fourth place, it's really a close call between Marist, Seattle U, and then back inside to either Bates and trailing continues to be MIT. So it's gonna get a little tighter here as they get ready for their sprints. But Old Dominion continues in the lead with open water and it's the Portland and the Loyola Marymount boats that we're watching closely for that second and bronze medal position. Now Portland now, now moving up just a little bit, just a little bit ahead of Loyola Marymount. They're all chasing Old Dominion, which is right now coming into view along the shore. Old Dominion has been in control, but they've got to keep an eye on Portland on the outside as Portland is really charging hard here and they continue to work away from Loyola Marymount. It's Old Dominion, Portland, Loyola Marymount. Then to lane five or six, Marist, Seattle U, then back inside to Bates and MIT. Old Dominion here, Portland still holding on to second, Loyola chasing hard in third. Marist trying to catch, uh, trying to catch Portland, but they're down a length. And as they come to the line, it's going to be Old Dominion with that clear victory, but a good finish here coming up between Loyola and Portland. That's a close one. Race number 88 is at the starting line. The starter is pulling the crews. Lane one is San Diego, two, Stanford, three, Oklahoma, four, Gonzaga. UCSD sits in the five slot, Sacramento State in six, MIT in seven. And we have start. All boats away clean. Lee, and once again, it takes a couple dozen strokes to have any separation unless you really have a phenomenal start. As you can tell by the drone footage, that's the tier. Everybody is right in it. So the question is, do you expend so much energy on the start to get the lead that you run out of fuel as you get down in that third and final 500? Right now, in this grand final, MIT's on the lead in lane seven. That being said, now over in lane one, UC San Diego takes over the lead. When we say the lead, it's like seats. It's like 15, 20 feet. It's always a question of making that shift. And I miss, it's Stanford, your race leader in lane two, as we approach the 500 meter mark. That second position is UC San Diego. Let's take a look at things here at the 500 meter mark. Stanford, Cardinal on the lead. Rowing 36 and a half beats per minute. Second position, 
is Gonzaga. Once again, maintaining that contact with the leader, but I can see that the coxswain is now even with the back seat of the second place crew. Third position goes to Oklahoma, followed by Sacramento State, and then we go inside to the University of San Diego. And then it's Sacramento State, MIT, as we pass the 750 meter mark. Your race leader continues to be Stanford. Once again, always wanted to be as close as you by breaking contact where they they can't see out of the corner of their eye that they're still in touch with the lead crew. And they're doing a fine job as the coxswain looks over and calls for a power 10. I can hear her all the way over here in lane nine. They're at 36 strokes per minute. Cardinal still on the lead. Again, that second spot. Sacramento State, a bunch. Back to you at the tower. So thank you, Jim, for that early call. This is final number one. This is the grand final for the women's collegiate varsity UCSD health trophy. So these crews are racing for that trophy. This is the grand final. And as you heard, Stanford in the lead with a very tight pack behind them. Water conditions are still very nice at the halfway mark, basically rowing through the cut where yesterday we saw a lot of wind, but calm conditions today prevailing for all the crews. Stanford continues to push away by a growing margin of open water. And that's no surprise. Uh, if you know the Stanford program, Derek Burns taking the reins of that program in recent years, and he's really elevated the speed of the Stanford women. They are consistently fast now and a national contender. And as we come into the last 500 meters, it's still Stanford in the lead by open water. Then going to lane number four, Gonzaga. Gonzaga moving ahead of Oklahoma. So the top three boats again are Stanford. Then we go inside to Gonzaga. And then Oklahoma. Oklahoma having to keep an eye on the crews in the outside lanes from Sacramento State and UC San Diego. And lane one, University of San Diego is trailing. With about 400 meters to go, the women from Stanford are in total control here as they have the entire field of crews behind them. They can see all the boats behind them and that gives a big advantage to the team because if they see a boat making a move, there's no hiding. They can respond to that threat. So Stanford women now have a prime position with 300 meters to go. Gonzaga in fourth, continuing to push away from Oklahoma in lane three. Oklahoma's race, however, just got a lot tougher because on the outside, Sacramento State, the Hornets from Sacramento State moving up to challenge for a possible third place position. It's Stanford, Gonzaga, and then very close between Oklahoma and Sacramento State. On the outside, MIT, back on the inside, University of San Diego, as this race now comes to the line with the Stanford women all alone out in front. Gonzaga looking great here as they've got that second place position locked up well. And it looks like the Sacramento State Hornets are in a position to take the third place position here away from Oklahoma. Gonzaga coming to the line now for second. 
And then the Hornets from Sacramento State in lane six. Followed by Oklahoma. And then the remaining field from MIT, UC San Diego, and University of San Diego. At starting platform now, race number 89, men's collegiate varsity, active and fit Cal Cup, final number two, the petite final. Lane one is Long Beach State, two, UC Davis, three, Loyola Marymount, and the f lane number four is Colorado. The starter is pulling the cruise. You can hear her voice probably. Attention. Go. Once again, the start of race number 89 in your program. Start going. Start going. Poking their bow out slightly is UC Davis. It usually takes about 250, 300 meters to establish who are the contenders and who are the pretenders. But right now, everybody is on point with Long Beach perhaps falling off the pace just a little bit. 250 down, UC Davis still on the lead, slightly over Colorado in that second spot. Third being held down by Loyola Marymount and Long Beach sits in fourth. Once again, it's a question of having Ratio, not ratio, as you finish the stroke, hands rebound out of bow, control the stroke rate. 500 meters gone. And now Colorado is your race leader. Virtually everybody is within two seats with the exception of Long Beach. They're about five seats off the pace. Colorado sacrificing a lot of energy to, to stay on the lead, but they're right there. Footage is probably showing you that it's just back and forth. Bow ball, seesawing. Now UC Davis is your race leader by about one seat. Nice move back. Maybe they have reverse splits where they start slow and finish fast. 750 gone. Still UC Davis on the lead. Loyola is in that second spot. Long Beach really back, gaining about six or eight seats the last 200 meters. As we approach the halfway, the 1,000 meter mark, it's still the Aggies from UC Davis on the lead by two seats over the Lions from Loyola Marymount. 49ers coming back into it now, challenging for that third spot with Colorado. So 1,000 meters gone. UC Davis, your race leader. Loyola Marymount is in second. And now Long Beach. Just broke through for that third position. Watch out for those 49ers. They're coming on strong. Back to you at the tower. The San Diego Crew Classic would like to thank our in-kind sponsor, U.S. Rowing. 
U.S. Rowing is a nonprofit membership organization recognized by the United States Olympic Committee as national governing body for the sport of rowing in the United States. U.S. Rowing selects, trains, and manages the teams that represent the U.S. in international competition, being the World Championships, Pan American Games, and the Olympics. More than 83,000 individuals and 1,350 organizations strong, U.S. Rowing serves and promotes the sport on all levels of competition. U.S. Rowing membership reflects the spectrum of American rowers, juniors, collegians, masters, and those who row for recreation, competition, or fitness. And final number two, now coming into the last 750 meters. This is final two for the men's collegiate varsity active and fit Cal Cup. So this is not the grand final, that will be after this. These crews are racing in the petite final. As you heard, four crews on the course, Long Beach State, UC, UC Davis, Loyola Marymount, and Colorado. Now the real race here continues to be between lanes one and two. You heard Jim tell you that lane one, Long Beach State broke through. Well, they have still broken through as they have a great race going on with themselves and the Aggies from UC Davis. It's bow ball to bow ball between Long Beach State and Davis. Then in third place, we go to Loyola Marymount and trailing a boat length behind them. And fourth is Colorado. Now, UC Davis, folks, is known for having some really good sprints. I've seen them take a lot of races away from other crews as they come into the last 300, and they're in a position to do that again here to Long Beach State. Long Beach State will be along the shore in the yellow unisuits. Davis right next to them in lane two. Davis, though, has to keep an eye on Loyola on as well off their starboard side as they come into the last 300. But it's Long Beach State and the Aggies. They are going head to head here as they come into the last 200 meters now. And look out for that sprint because the Aggies tend to do it really well. Loyola Marymount trying so hard to catch the Aggies. Long Beach and the Yellow Unis along the shore trying to hold off the Aggies. But those farm boys from UC Davis, they've got a lot of power and there they go. I told you they have some power in them and they're taking water now. It could be a race for UC Davis here at the finish line as they come into the last five strokes. It's UC Davis, Long Beach State, Loyola Marymount and Colorado and true to form, it's another legendary UC Davis sprint. They got it. The start. If you look at your program, race number 90, Men's Collegiate Varsity Active and Fit Cal Cup Grand Final, Lane 1, MIT, Lane 2, Marietta, Lane 3, UCLA, 4, Purdue, 5, Orange Coast College, and in 6, UC Santa Barbara. Conditions continue to be superb as the SkyTram is the backdrop for the start. No wind at all for the first, gosh, 250 meters. If anything, it's a tailwind. So it's a, fill, a fast course. Other than the tide is, is ebbing. You might be able to hear the starter's voice as she pulls, announcing each crew by name from one to seven. She holds up a red flag and says, attention, go, and we have a start. Well, on footage, tell this right now. But poking their bow out a bit is Purdue over UCLA. Then Marietta, 
that MIT in lane one, Orange Coast College and UC Santa Barbara. 250 gone. Purdue still your race leader. With UCLA now making a bold move here. Interesting to see these crews as they make that transition from the start into the race pace. You start seeing a definite finish strong which gives the legs validation that they did the pushing and the arms and shoulders do the finishing. 500 meters gone. The Bruins now challenging for the lead. And they have it over Purdue. Get some stroke ratings here, but UCLA is your race leader. Purdue's in second. Third position held by Marietta. MIT is in fourth. Then you come out to Orange Coast College and then UC Santa Barbara. Good boat race now as Purdue puts the pedal down a bit and they've taken over the lead. Once again, it's not the number of strokes you take, but the effectiveness you have from that entry or catch through the drive with a ferocious finish. 750, it's too close to call. Bow ball to bow ball with the leaders being Purdue and, or, and excuse me, UCLA. UCLA Coxon now calling for a 10. Got to keep that pressure on. Never want to encourage your opponent. Really, it's three different fleets of boats. Orange Coast is making a surge back now. But it's UCLA and Purdue, your race leaders, followed by Marietta and MIT. Orange Coast is battling UC Santa Barbara as we approach the 1,000 meter mark. A lot of strong calls from the coxswains here as they come into that third 500. Purdue now back on the lead by a seat. Once again, it's going to seesaw back and forth. Question of conditioning, a question of efficiency per stroke. Back to you at the tower. Well, thank you, Jim. This sounds like a great race here as we come into the second thousand. And folks, as you heard, UCLA and Purdue are trading blows back and forth. That's the kind of race every coach and rower loves up until a certain point. Keeps everything going on full speed because the rowers know every stroke matters. Now, we're going to keep an eye on those crews, but as you heard Jim also say on the outside, Orange Coast College trying to get back in this hunt here and pull their bow up a little closer to the remaining field. Orange Coast is only a two-year community college program. So for their program to be in this grand final is a real testimony to their coaching at that program. They only have the students for two years, but here they are racing against schools with four-year rowers. Now lane number two, lane number two, Marietta, also trying to get back into this race, but they're still down a bit from the leaders of UCLA and Purdue as they keep it bow ball to bow ball here coming into the last 500 meters. Orange Coast trying to still get up, but they're still down a bit, not able to move up much further here. So it's really going to be the middle lanes here, the middle lanes, two, three, and four, Marietta, UCLA, and Purdue in that order, fighting it out for the gold medal position. Now, lane number two, Marietta, keeps trying to move up, and they actually are taking water at this point. They're closest to the crew from UCLA, the Bruins. So the Bruins have a crew on either side of them challenging them. But it's Purdue, the Boilermakers from Indiana now pushing out ahead a little bit more. UCLA chasing. Marietta trying so hard to hang tough with UCLA. Marietta in third. Along the shore, MIT chasing hard as they come into really clean water right now. MIT's moved ahead of Orange Coast and Santa Barbara. It's Purdue, UCLA. 
And then Marietta for the men's collegiate varsity active and fit Cal Cup trophy. But now UCLA, they're pushing hard. They're trying to take water back from Purdue. And there comes the sprint. It's gonna be a photo finish. It's going to be Purdue or UCLA taking this trophy as Marietta continues to chase. Will it be Purdue? Will it be UCLA? It's still Purdue by a deck, by maybe a seat at this point. There you go, folks. Photo finish, it is Purdue. And now Marietta, MIT, then Orange Coast and Santa Barbara. Now it's starting line, race number 91, women's collegiate varsity four with Coxon, Karen Plumley, Courtney Cup, final two, which means petite final, which means the second level final. Lane assignments, one, University of San Diego, two, UC San Diego, three, MIT, four, Old Dominion, Sacramento State sits in lane five, and Portland in lane six. Pretty genteel conditions down here, meaning there's no need to skull bows one way or the other. It's very flat here at the starting platform. The crews have been polled. The starter raises the red flag, says go, drops the flag, and we have a boat race. Four is, of course, a bit slower than the eight because you add the coxswain and, and uh, they're just slower. For those of you who haven't been around rowing for a while, the coxswain used to sit in the stern of the fours, but now they sit in that Formula One race car driver's seat up in the bow. You can barely see the top of their heads as we race down the course. Old Dominion pokes their bow ball out on the lead over University of San Diego. And then it's UC San Diego, and then in the red shell is MIT. followed by Sacramento State, and Portland is in that final position. Sometimes a little bit lower cadence is taken in the fours. University of San Diego now pops their bow out in, on the lead. Not by much. You see San Diego in that second spot. Old Dominion in third. MIT sneaks into fourth. Fifth spot is Portland as we approach the 500 meter mark. That final position in, in sixth is Sacramento State. Starting to see some separation now between the lead crew as we pass the 500 meter mark. That lead crew, University of San Diego, in lane one. Followed by another local school, UC San Diego, in the second spot, by about two seats over that third MIT. Fourth vote is Old Dominion, fifth in lane six, is Portland State and Sacramento trails the fleet. Some open water, clear water. 
water separation now between University of San Diego with MIT making a move and taking over that second position. Still seesawing back and forth as we approach the 750 meter mark. Portland now, out here closest to the announcing launch, is making a big move and they're contending for that second spot. It's all about consumption and expulsion of energy. Being dynamic on the drive and finish and conserving energy. To the race, your race leader still in lane one, University of San Diego. Clear water over Portland State, excuse me, Portland now in second, and then it's UC San Diego, MIT. The other two crews aren't out of it, still overlapped. Let's get a rating here on your lead crew. Lead boat rowing a very powerful and controlled 34 and a half strokes per minute. Second position now is in lane two, UC San Diego, then MIT, then outside to Portland, and then into Old Dominion, and in the final spot is Sacramento State. That's the call, 1,000 meters gone. San Diego Crew Classic would like to thank the James S. Copley family. They are a gold sponsor of this event. The Copley Cup is considered the feature race of the Crew Classic. This coveted prize recognizes the longtime support of the Copley family since our first regatta in 1973. At the first two regattas, the Cup was presented to the winner of the Men's Open Varsity Race. Since 1975, the Copley Cup has been presented to the winner of the Invitational Race for Top Men's Collegiate Varsity Crews. And final number two of the Women's Collegiate Varsity Four, Copley Cup now coming into the last 500 meters. As you heard Jim say, a lot of these fours now, in fact, all the Varsity Fours, have the coxswain loaded in the front of the boat. Now you may wonder, why am I bringing that up? It's because the coxswains, while having a great view of the course in front of them, they need to keep an eye on the crews next to them or behind them that might be making a move on them. So these coxswains have to learn how to pay attention to the field behind them by making subtle movements with their heads or even sitting up a little bit to check behind them on port and starboard side as these crews come into the last part of the race. Sometimes you'll see that folks with a coxswain will sit up, take a quick look, then scoot back down and then call the sprint. So as these crews now come into the last 500, let's see how that plays out. Now lane one in the lead, University of San Diego, hometown team from right here up on the hillsides. In lane one, they have a commanding open water lead here as we come into the last 400 meters. We then go to lanes two and three, UC San Diego and MIT, the next two closest boats here. This is the petite final for this event, so the second, second level final for these crews. The grand final is coming up right after this. In fourth place, we go outside to lane five, Portland, then back inside to Sacramento State, and then finally Old Dominion to round out the field here. But it's University of San Diego commanding this race here, the petite final for the women's collegiate varsity fours as they come into the spectator area. Now again, we'll see how the coxswains look at the remaining field before they call any final moves for their crews but it's lanes two and three duking it out for that second and third place finish here in the petite final. UC San Diego and MIT, MIT coming all the way from, from the frigid waters of the Charles River 
to the warm waters of Mission Bay. And they are looking really good right now as they duke it out with this field. Now MIT's got to watch the outside lane, Portland, as Portland it keeps moving up on them slowly. And that coxswain has to pay attention and look around, can't just look straight forward. But it's USD to the line here with a good race now between UC San Diego, MIT, and Portland for second and third, and the trailing teams from Sac State and Old Dominion. We have a start of the grand final. This is race number 92, women's collegiate varsity four, Karen Plumley. Courtney Cup Grand Final. Jumping out on the lead in lane one, USC. Once again, it's too early to really make a statement. California, the Golden Bears are in that second position. They sit in lane number four. Washington now making a big move, as is Texas. So as we come up now to the 500 meter mark, things start to separate a little bit, but not by much, but still on the lead. Closest to shore, USC. Then it's the Longhorns battling the Golden Bears for that second spot with Texas having a slight advantage over California. Fourth position being held down by Washington. And then you come outside to lane seven. UCLA is in the next spot. Then Gonzaga and the final spot being held down by Oklahoma. 500 meters gone. Things haven't changed much. Relative boat speed's the same, position's the same, but it's USC on the lead. Texas making a move now, trying to bite back, regain some of those seats that SC has. California still sustains that bronze position in third by four seats over Washington, who sits in fourth. Fifth, sixth, and seven are too close to call out here in lanes five, five, six, and seven. That's Oklahoma, Gonzaga, and UCLA. Coming up on 7.50, still SC on the lead. Still Olap, that second place crew from Texas. Then there's some clear water back to the third spot, California having that position, and then Washington. So 750 down. Strategy applies right now. You can certainly hear the coxswains encouraging the crews to be powerful fast. Texas making a big move now, realizes that they've got to be a little bit closer in order to row through that finish line and get that, that trophy. But as we come to the 1,000 meter mark, the Trojans of USC with a four seat advantage over Texas, Texas with a oh, half boat of clear water over California, California with a four seat advantage over the fourth place Husky crew, and the other three crews in the outside lanes are battling for that fifth spot. Back to you at the tower. Life is not a rehearsal is a quote that is often repeated by Jean Jessup Hervey. 
Competitors understand this in a keen way, recognizing the drive to be the best must come from within and never relent. With family ties to Slack and the San Diego Rowing Club dating back to the 1900s, rowing has naturally been a part of the family. The Hervey Cup is to honor Jean's spirit and the spirit of all competitors. Work hard, play hard, enjoy life. And now back to the grand final for the women's collegiate varsity for Karen Plumley, Courtney Cup. Now, as you heard, Southern California in lane one in the lead, but Texas now, Texas in lane two, moving up to challenge. This could take away that gold medal position from Southern California. California in lane four continues in third ahead of Washington. Washington with open water over the remaining field from Oklahoma, Gonzaga, and UCLA. Wind conditions have changed. The wind is now crossing the race course from lane one all the way over to lane seven. So these crews are coming into cleaner water now after fighting the wind patch at the halfway point. Texas showing a lot of power here in the third 500. It's Texas now moving up even with Southern California. Texas, Southern California, bow ball to bow ball, but Texas is still moving. Texas at a slightly higher stroke rate, Southern California at a lower stroke rate. California continues in the bronze medal position. Huskies in fourth, Oklahoma fifth, then Gonzaga and UCLA. We saw the Texas women earlier today in their eight. They looked fantastic. And here they come in their orange Texas Longhorn Unis. They are dominating the Trojans from Southern California here, coming into 300 meters. It's Texas, Southern California, and then California. Will the Trojans from USC respond in any sort of manner here as they face the last 300 meters of this race for the trophy? Texas, it's all about Texas, the defending NCAA National Championship program. They have come from behind and moved ahead of Southern California to take the lead here with 200 meters to go. Southern California in second, Cal in third, Washington in fourth. Back to Oklahoma, then Zaga and UCLA. But folks, look at this Texas crew. These women have powered through the entire field. They came from a lower position and now they're in the top position and they're about to claim the trophy in three, two, one. And there you go, Texas got it. And that's Oklahoma just ahead of Gonzaga. And finally, UCLA. On the course now, race number 93, men's collegiate third varsity final. A three boat race featuring your race leader in lane one, UC San Diego. In lane two is MIT, currently in third. And Bates College is out here in lane three. As was mentioned, the wind is starting to clock towards the west. So now we have a crosswind. Little problem there with the MIT bow man, uh, got a partial crab. And yeah, the, the wind is starting to throw up a little bit of chop now, and it makes it a little more difficult in terms of your oarsmanship. Still in the lead, UC San Diego on their home waters by just about one length over Bates. Bates with a half a boat advantage over MIT. Quarter of the race is over as we cross the 500 meter mark. Still, UC San Diego 
rowing at 34 and a half strokes per minute. MIT now challenging for that second spot. Having a very good boat race, stroke for stroke with Bates in lane three. MIT is being warned by the official to watch your point. They need to steer towards the shore, starting to overlap with Bates, and they could be disqualified if they don't respond. 7.50 gone. It's UC San Diego, clearly the fastest boat of this group with about boat lengths of clear water over MIT, who continues to be warned to steer back into their lane. MIT comes in terms of their rudder. Right now, now looks like how man who caught the partial is not really helping you Diego continues to be on the lead by clear water over MIT who sits six seats up on Bates back to you or Attention, please. Attention, please. Can Karen S. Campbell please come to the information desk? We have something of yours that you would like back. Karen S. Campbell, please come to the information desk. And folks, coming into the last 500 meters, it's the grand final for the men's collegiate 3V. These are the third level varsity boats for the collegiate programs. Three boats on the water, UC San Diego, MIT, lane one UC San Diego, as you heard earlier, with a very strong lead, and that lead continues to grow as they come into the last 400 meters now. In second place, it's two MIT, and then on the outside, Bates in third. Only three boats in this race, but they are racing for medals as this is a final one, a first final or grand final for this event. So you see San Diego here coming into a fine finish, not threatened in any way by the other teams as they have a commanding boat length open water growing to a three boat length open water lead. MIT and Bates rounding out the field in second and third as this race now comes to a conclusion before we turn our attention to the women's 2V finals coming up next. Again, UC San Diego now finishing in first for the men's 3V grand final.
As we wait for the start of race number 94, the wind continues to clock to the west. And now the crews are having to scull their bows towards the, the shore, towards the shore where the spectators are, because the wind's blowing their bows from, from port to starboard. Makes it more challenging, and we may not have countdown starts anymore. They go to a quick start. They'll pull the crews, they'll say quick start, attention, and go. Once again, full lane assignments here with lane one being held by University of San Diego, two, UC San Diego, three, Sacramento State, four, Loyola, five, Marist, six, MIT, seven, Portland, eight, Bates. This is the women's second varsity petite final. We have a start. Spectacular when you see eight crews just blasting out of the start like this. I'm blessed to have the best seat in the house. Once again, too early to call. It takes an exceptional start to establish a lead after those first 20, 25 strokes. But the first crew to show some signs of leadership is lane four, Loyola Marymount. They're on the lead. Then we shift back inside the University of San Diego in second spot, UC San Diego in third. And then it's MIT, easily re recognizable crew with the red hull. Just passing the 250 meter mark. It's still Loyola Marymount, your race leader. Not by much, but they are leading. MIT putting the hammer down a bit. They wanna go up and uh, be in those top three spots. University of San Diego now pushing, pulling back up almost level with Loyola Marymount. 500 meters. Let's see who's on the lead. It's still Loyola slightly, but University of San Diego starts to assert itself from lane one. You see San Diego also making a push here to get in that second position. Appears the University of San Diego in lane one is rowing a beat or two higher in order to get that lead. Once again, still establishing the rhythm over water. Still the Lions from Loyola Marymount on the lead. But it's University of San Diego now poking their bow ball out as UC San Diego also pushing Loyola. In fact, they are now in that second position. So lane one, University of San Diego is your leader at 750. Six seats up on the University of San Diego, holding down that second spot. It was at best one seat up on Loyola Marymount, four by MIT. And then it's Marist, Portland, and Bates. Big move being made by Loyola Marymount. In lane four. Calling Lane one is in first place, lane two in second, three is in third, four is in fifth, then it's MIT, and the rest.
That's the call of the 1,000 meters. The San Diego Crew Classic would like to give its sincere thank you to Camplin on the Bay for making this weekend's broadcast possible. All right, this is Sam Stitt back in the finish line tower commenting on what we got here. Women's Collegiate, collegiate 2V, the Jackie Ann Stitt Hungness Trophy Final. Just want to say thank you, Jim, for the first 1,000 meters. So coming into the last 1,000 meters, still looks like a pretty tight race from where we're standing. Again, looks like in the middle, Leola Marymount is a little bit behind. It looks like all the crews on the outside, Marist, MIT, Portland, Bates, all pretty tight here coming into the last 500 meters. Last 500 meters, we're going to see these crews bring the rate up, but it's since it's so tight, we might see higher ratings than usual. Uh, right now, coming into the last 750, it looks like most crews striking 36, 35. As they come into view, we'll have a better idea, but uh, still pretty too tight to call from where we're standing. Looks like in lane two, you see San Diego having a little bit of trouble. Looks like a couple of strokes hitting the water, striking the water. A little bit. Uh, as we get later into the day, I think earlier this morning, the wind was a little bit bad. It got a little bit flat here in the middle, and now it's starting to get roughed up again. So as the stroke rates come up, we're going to see a little bit of rough rowing. I think here in lane one, lane two, you're starting to see these crews strike the water a little bit. We've got San Diego in lane one, UC San Diego in lane two, Sacramento State in lane three, Loyola Marymount in lane four. Marist, lane five, MIT, lane six, Portland, lane seven, and Bates in lane eight. Again, really close to call here. I'm, I'm serious. If you guys are standing around, you might want to come down to watch this finish. These finish line officials are going to have a tough job here watching the photo finish. But it looks like in lane three, Sacramento State pushing out a little bit. It looks like lane two is going to follow them. You see San Diego. You see San Diego bringing the field with them. In lane one, San Diego. Lane four, Mar Mar Loyola Marymount. All these crews are now starting to push it up, coming to the last 250. Again, no room for error here. Marist, MIT, Portland, Bates. Everybody coming to the line together. Sacramento State still with their bow out in front, but close second place. You see San Diego, Leola Marymount, everybody building it up. San Diego not letting it go. These four crews pushing the front, coming up behind. Marist, MIT, Portland, Bates, everybody pushing it. Rates pushing 38, 39. Here we go. Last. Last 100 meters here. This is going to be a photo finish. San Diego coming up on the inside. You see San Diego and Sacramento putting it up. Looks like three boats across. First, second, and third. Photo finish here. Loyola Marymount. Ooh, man, that was a tight one. There you go. Marist, MIT, Portland all coming in. We have MIT coming in front of Marist. Bates College on the outside. Late eight coming in, creeping in right before Portland. But... Man, what a tight race. Again, the college 2V Jackie hung this trophy final. That was a barn burner. Glad we got to see that one. Race 95 is about ready to start. Women's collegiate second varsity grand final. Lane one, California. Two, Texas. Three, USC. Lane four, Washington, five, UCLA, Stanford and six, Oklahoma and seven, and Gonzaga and eight. And we have a start. As I said earlier, the start of a race is controlled abandon. Taking the boat from zero speed up to hull speed. It's usually some fraction strokes for the first four. Keeping the rate cadence up for 20, 25, maybe 30 strokes, and then making the shift into a more comfortable, if it, that can be said, race rhythm, race pace.
Right now, the University of Washington at 250, race leader by two seats. Over Texas and California, tightly bunched over there. And SC. We come out to Stanford, still in there. Everybody has an overlap, so there's no real distinction or, or tail end Tommies here. They're all in it. The first four lanes across are in it to win it. My goodness, here we come to the 500 meter mark. Still owning the lead, not by much, is Washington. Texas making a bold move right now is taking over that lead. California is in the third spot. Then it's SC. Then we come back to the next fleet of boats. A great battle lanes five through eight with UCLA, Stanford, Oklahoma, and Gonzaga. The Longhorns exerting their dominance right now by having a four seat advantage over California in that second spot. Washington not by much in third and SC off by about a boat length to the leader. 750 meters down, Texas your race leader over California by eight seats. California with seats advantage over Washington in that third spot. And then it's USC in fourth. They're taking a big move. They, USC, wanting to get back in the hunt. So basically lanes one through four have the race, the trophy, and then there's the race four to eight after those first four crews. Come up to the 1,000 meter mark. The long a pedal down at 30 Astro with advantage over California. California with a seat advantage over Washington. And then SC, and then the remaining four. It's time to thank Steve Gary for the use of his stroke watch as we turn it over to the tower. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, a special announcement, please. Edward LeBach. Edward LeBach, your wallet has the... Please... AS... All right, back... Finish line tower again. I want to apologize. Uh, I got a little excited the last time. That was some tight racing, eight boats across. That was the teat final for the women's collegiate 2v. This is now the final for the women's collegiate 2v. So, this is the trophy race. Now, if anything, uh, from that last race, uh, this is some pretty tight racing all the way across the field. So, uh, this race again, high expectations as we come into the last 750 here. Looks like all the way across, we have some pretty tight racing. No brakes allowed. Uh, that said, looks like out in, we got uh, UCLA and Stanford on the outside. Oklahoma and Gonzaga. Looks like Gonzaga on that field. Looks like Washington's in the middle. Washington has the lead over USC. Texas, Austin also looks like they're a little bit up Washington as they start coming into view here. We're also going to see California in lane one. California in lane one, a little bit behind Texas, Austin, probably about a length behind. Looks like Texas, Austin is leading the, uh, the pack here over Washington. Um, the stroke rates are coming up. We see the wind. Uh, to this time of day, the, the wind is now shifted around to a tailwind. So bringing the stroke rate up a little bit higher than an eight, we're going to see that. But also the water getting a little bit more roughed up, so a little bit more rough for rowing. But coming into the finish here, we have 
Texas, Austin out in front, about a half a boat length up in front of Washington. Washington pushing the pace a little bit here in front of UC, uh, USC in California. U USC in California are now trying to push back into that second place spot. We see USC making a move here on Washington. Washington trying to hold on to what lead they have, but now California coming up in the middle. On the outside, we have Gonzaga pushing the pace on top of Stanford. Stanford trying to push back up, but now UCLA, UCLA making a push. Oklahoma behind UCLA, but out here in front, Texas, Austin, now about a length up on California. California pushing through Washington. Washington trying to hold over their lead on USC. USC trying to push into that third place position. Now Cal coming up on the outside, making up seats on Texas Austin. Texas Austin has done their work. They've already hit it early. So Texas Austin is going to cross the line about three quarters of a length up on California. California stern, stern to bow ball up on Washington. Washington finishing about half a length up on USC. USC about open water over. We've got Stan, uh, sorry, we've got Stanford out on the outside. Stanford trying to hold off UCLA. UCLA just about a bow ball in front of Gonzaga. Gonzaga trying to push back into him, but Gonzaga, unfortunately, not enough time. And that, a little bit of open water back on Oklahoma. So again, that was the final for the Women's Collegiate 2 v the Jackie Ann Stitt Hongness Trophy, final one. Now at the start, race number 96, the men's collegiate second varsity petite final. Lane assignments, one, MIT. Lane two, Bates. Lane three, UCLA. Lane four, Colorado. Attention. Go. And here we go. MIT pushing out a little bit over UCLA for that lead spot. Bates is in third, and Colorado is just off the pace. There are clear waters turn. As we pass through the means where the bridges are, Rowan gets to be a little bit more challenging as there's a little chop. But it's MIT, your race leader, by six seats over the Bruins from UCLA. And then it's Bates with Colorado trailing. Still a quarter rain tailwind, so it's not too terrible in terms of conditions, it's just tricky. Coming up to the 500 meter mark, your race leader, MIT in the red hole. Bates now taking over that second position as we cross the 500 meter mark right now. Third spot being held down by UCLA, and Colorado is just off the pace, clear water astern. MIT really striking the water at a modestly high rate, 36 and a half, 37. There, Coxon looks over to the bow of Bates. Right now, that Coxon is sitting even with the bow ball of the second place Bates crew. The Bates crew looks over at UCLA, sitting even with the bow person. So, seven. Now in the books for this race, your race leader, lane one, MIT. Lane two, Bates. 
in lane three, UCLA, in lane four, Colorado. Pretty much have he's jumped his seat. UCLA should now put the hammer down to establish it. Oh, what a shame. The six-man seat is jammed. The whole crew has had to stop. But that's boat racing. So, still trying to get the seat on track, but I don't think they're going to be a contender anymore. Tough luck. So, 1,000 meters, MIT on the lead, followed by UCLA. Then it'll be Bates and Colorado to follow. Back to you at the top. All right. Again, thank you, Jim Jorgensen. First thousand meters uh, in the tower. Again, uh, sad to hear about breakage, but part of rowing. There's a lot of moving parts in the boat. So, unfortunately, uh, equipment damage does happen during a race. Uh, best thing to do is try and recover and keep going. So, it's a tough break here. But again, this is event 23, the men's collegiate 2V, the uh, the B final here, the petite final. We have in lane one, MIT, lane two, Bates, uh, lane three, UCLA, and lane four, Colorado. As they come into the finish here, uh, four boats across. Uh, we'll hopefully see them bringing the rate up again with the tailwind, uh, always helping with a higher rate, but always making the water a little bit more difficult to get through. So hopefully we'll see these eights uh, at full speed and see a little bit of close racing here. All right, it looks like UCLA here is the first one to come in sight. UCLA crossing the 750 to go. Again, getting a little bit of wind out of this little opening here. Uh, North Ingram Bridge, that wind coming through here. We'll see those crews catch a little bit of that side chop and have to work through it. But again, it looks like UCLA coming into sight here. UCLA has now brought the rate up. UCLA is now rowing about 36-37. Uh, now also coming into view, we have MIT in lane one. MIT also out in front about a length here. Looks like their stroke rate not as high as UCLA. Looks like they're 33, 34 here. So we'll see MIT in lane one not out in front about a length. Looks like they're about a little lower in the 30s stroke rate wise. But it looks like UCLA out in lane two. Uh-oh, somebody's stopping here. What happened? Looks like we might have caught a crab. This might actually turn into a close race here. MIT struggling a little bit to come out of that. UCLA now taking about half a boat length. So here comes UCLA's shot. UCLA is now going to bring the rate up. They just saw MIT in lane one catch a crab. So MIT uh, better, better get going here. Uh, UCLA smells blood in the water, so they're going to go for it. But again, both crews bringing the rate up, definitely in the last 250. We have Bates College in the middle here trying to bring up third place, trying to get back into it. But MIT recouping here, trying to get across the line before anything else bad happens, before we get stuck in bad water again. MIT trying to cross the line. MIT is now pushed back out to a length here. UCLA had their shot. They brought it up. They brought it up to about three quarters of a length behind MIT. So UCLA pushing here, trying to get across that line. MIT thankful they were able to get back quick enough, but MIT will cross the line here in lane one first, probably about a boat length up on UCLA. UCLA in lane three, now crossing the line about a length down on MIT. Bates College, third place, lane two, just about a length of open behind. Bates College crossing the line at high, about high stroke rate as well. We have Colorado, unfortunately, Colorado early in the race had a little bit of difficulty. Um, so we're seeing Colorado coming in right now. Colorado lane four also finishing the race. Now to art race number 97, men's collegiate second varsity, Sharp Memorial Cup grand final. Lane assignments, one, Purdue. Two, UC San Diego. Three, Gonzaga. Four, Maris. Five, University of San Diego. Six, Marietta.
Conditions still respectable down here in terms of having to do a quick start. Announcers checking, polling the lanes. Attention. Go. And here's the start. Once again, this is race number 97, men's collegiate second varsity grand final. So spectacular to watch eights go from no speed to hull speed within 25, 30 strokes. And of course the cascade of colors from the different blades, the singlets, the t-shirts, the hulls, it's, it's something to see. Coming up to 250. Maris in lane four, your early leader, not by much, over Purdue. Still anybody's race, nobody's out of it, nobody's fallen off the pace at all. But it's Maris still on the lead by two seats. over Purdue as we approach the 500 meter mark. Third position being held down by University of California, San Diego, then Gonzaga, then Marietta, and then University of San Diego. So still great racing here for that lead position with Maris doing a nice job out here in lane four. So I say that Purdue puts on a surge, actually too close to call, bow ball to bow ball, the way we like it. Chin. Both boats are cooking. Race pace for both crews around 36 and a half, 37. 750. Maris back on the lead by two seats. Purdue once again is in your second position. Then it's UC San Diego making a push for that second spot. Third is Gonzaga. And then we come back to Marietta and University of San Diego. This is the top really like to make surge to establish identity the pressure on the other crew you never want to encourage a crew that's yeah. Maris handling a little bit bumpier water out here nicely with an eight seat advantage from lane four this is a thousand meter mark Purdue is in that second slot four seats up on the of California San Diego then Gonzaga then lane six, Marietta. That's it. The call at 1,000 meters. All right. Thank you, Jim. All right. Coming into the last 1,000 meters, as Jim said earlier, uh, the water getting a little bit roughed up here, but um, technique is going to play a big part in this last 500. These crews. Uh, who get out in front don't want to lose their lead. They don't want to give the crews behind them the opportunity to see that they have a chance to, to get into the medals, to, to move in front of you in the last uh, 750 here. So pushing the rate up, we're seeing the crews come, in, uh, come into view here. I've got San Diego out in lane five coming into view. San Diego looks like they're uh, pushing with Marietta. Marietta all the way out there in lane six. Um, we've also got Marist up in the lead here. Marist is now rowing. Looks like Marist rowing a 34-35, trying to stay clean in this chop. Again, this tailwind's going to help you uh, get the rate up, but 
it's not going to help you rowing wise. So it looks like they're trying to maintain mid 30s right now across the field. Looks like everybody's about 34, 35 right now. Uh, no real outliers. Uh, looks like lane two. We've got UC San Diego bringing the rate up a little bit, trying to push. We can see all that white water splashing off those blades over there. But Maris still out in front, lane four. Maris uh, pushing about a little bit of open water here on lane two, uh, UC San Diego. UC San Diego looks like they're pushing the pace for second place, but uh, about as stern on on Gonzaga in lane three. Gonzaga in lane three and Purdue in uh, lane one. Looks like Purdue's a little bit ahead of Gonzaga, but again, nipping on the heels uh, of Marist here. Marist and UC San Diego. UC San Diego trying to make the push. Looks like the rate comes up. UC San Diego just shifting the rate up to a... Oh. Looks like 45, 46. So you see San Diego going for it here. Looks like once you break those 40s, you gotta wanna get into that first place. So you see San Diego selling the farm here. Marist still out in front. Looks like Marist is looking at you see San Diego and also brings their rate up. We're now in the last 250 meters. So Marist is gonna have to hold on to their league here as you see San Diego comes in. Last 100 meters, you might see UC San Diego make a move here. Opening water back on Gonzaga. Gonzaga in lane three, trying to bring the rate up, but now you're starting to see Purdue in lane one. Purdue in lane one, pulling into third. Out in front, you've got Maris. Maris trying to hold on to their lead, but UC San Diego has the opportunity here. UC San Diego has the momentum. Maris trying to push it here to the end. You see UC San Diego take it by about a bow. Maris, second place, now a fight for third. Purdue in lane one, Purdue. Photo finish with Gonzaga in lane four. Out on the outside, we have San Diego and Mar Marietta. San Diego and Marietta. Uh, we have Marietta finishing about uh, a quarter of a length over San Diego. So really tight racing for first, second, third, and fourth here. So good to see that. That was the A final. That was the final of the... Uh, event 23, the Men's Collegiate 2V, the Sharp Memorial Cup. At the starting line, six crews for race number 98. Women's Collegiate Novice, Laurel Koholtz, Perpetual Trophy, Grand Final. Lane one, Washington. Lane two, UCLA. Lane three, British Columbia. Four, University of San Diego. Five, Oklahoma. Lane six, Loyola Marymount. Still nice here at the start, little cove. Not much sculling going on. Coxswain's don't have to work too hard, although it's smart to have your bow pointed towards the finish line uh, side of the course, meaning the side where the spectators are, as the wind is going to blow you slightly from port to starboard. As soon as I say that, out here in lane five and six, Loyola and Oklahoma are sculling. Smart Cox will have their bow pointed slightly towards the shore to their left. And we have a start. Once again, the object here is to get the boat up to speed, moving the boat, not water, usually taking some fraction strokes for the first three or four and then lengthening it out at a high cadence and after a couple dozen high strokes shifting into your race pace. At 250, on the lead in lane one, 
the Huskies from the University of Washington. Second place in lane three, University of British Columbia. Third place, UCLA. Then University of San Diego. Then Oklahoma. And Loyola Marymount rounds out the fleet. Coming up to the 500 meter mark, still on the lead, lane one, Washington. California in that second position, although they're being pushed by the Bruins in lane two. So at the 500, Washington, UCLA, University of British Columbia, it's a toss up for that position. The clear fourth is University of San Diego, fifth is Oklahoma, and then it's Loyola. Washington continue to push their lead. Now to six seats over UCLA. British Columbia is three seats down on the Bruins in that third spot. University of San Diego has a clear hold on fourth. Then it's Oklahoma with Loyola rounding it out. 7.50 gone. The Husky Coxon now sits even with the bow seat of UCLA. UCLA with eight seats over British Columbia. British Columbia, six to eight seats over University of San Diego. And so it goes. Let's see what the Huskies are striking the water. 35 and a half strokes per minute. You still, you still having an overlap, having contact, which is a good thing. The Huskies making a push here. Not taking the rate up, not lifting at all, but just wanting to not encourage the Bruins getting back. Back here. as we cross the 1,000 meter mark. You then we have you, that's the call, 1,000 meter mark. All right, thank you, Jim. Again, uh, seeing stroke rates here kind of averaging around the mid 30s. So. Um, everybody that can see the water here, people that aren't here in San Diego that are watching online, water a little bit rough. So we're, these average rates, um, again, keeping the rate high, but also staying focused on good rowing. You know, uh, we've seen a couple of boats here, unfortunately, catch a little bit of water on the recovery. So it is always possible to catch a, a crab. So trying to avoid that, but also trying to go as fast as you can. So. Coming into view, um, we have San Diego, Oklahoma, and Loyola Marymount on the outside. It looks like Oklahoma up on uh, Loyola Marymount, uh, kind of neck and neck with San Diego right now. San Diego uh, maybe with a little bit of a lead up on them. Uh, we still cannot see these inside crews in lane one through three yet, but can only imagine how close this racing is going to be. It looks like as British Columbia comes in here in lane three, it looks like British Columbia with a slight lead on San Diego, although San Diego might be pushing back here. San Diego getting pushed by Oklahoma. Oklahoma might be pushing back in. So British Columbia um, is going to be in the thick of it here. On their left, uh, having Oklahoma, having San Diego and Oklahoma right there. But on the inside, as these crews come into view, looks like UCLA is also in the mix. And then we've got Washington in lane one leading the pack. So Washington in lane one looks like they're about a lead up, uh, length up on the field. It looks like UCLA and British Columbia, uh, lane two and three respectively, trying to stay in front of San Diego. San Diego making a move here. Again, a nice ripping tailwind. So these crews bringing the rate up, they're going to be able to pick up a lot of speed real quick.
quickly. You're going to see these eights accelerate a little bit quicker than they would in either flat water or headwind. So across the field, we have Washington about a length up on the field, but the fight for second here looks like UCLA with the slight lead up over British Columbia. British Columbia, slight lead, maybe, maybe even with San Diego here. And then behind them, Oklahoma, and then a little bit open, we have Loyola Marymount. But coming into the last 250, Washington riding textbook row going here in solid looks like they're in a nice comfortable stroke looks like Washington now rowing a 32 33 Washington now it now UCLA you see UCLA about half a length up on British Columbia UCLA trying to hold their little belief they're 36 37 so UCLA now bringing the rate up now British Columbia wants their shot at third place and or wants to hold off San Diego San Diego's thirsty here San Diego now a lead a length up on Oklahoma trying to push it in but Coming to the finish line, we have a little bit of open water. Washington, nice strong stroke rate crossing the line. They've now extended their lead to about half a length. Second place, we have UCLA. UCLA, about half a boat up on British Columbia. British Columbia trying to sneak across the line here right before San Diego, but might have just done it in time. So we've got UCLA, British Columbia, San Diego. Now coming up about a little bit of open, Oklahoma out in lane five. And then we're open water back to Loyola Marymount. Again, being event seven, the Women's Collegiate Novice Laurel Kohlholz Perpetual Trophy final. In position now, at the start is race number 99, the men's collegiate novice petite final, lane one, Long Beach State, lane two, UC Davis, lane three, San Diego State University, lane four, Colorado. The starter started pulling the lanes, and in lane four, Colorado's bow was not in a position to start a race. So the coxswain raises the hand to, to let the uh, starter know of that situation. What happens down here, if you've not been to the starting line, there's a liner on the shore, looks through a range marker, the starter or the liner communicates to the people on the stake boats to push the bow in, pull it out, so the bows are exactly spot on. They'll raise a flag, which is the acknowledgement to the starter that they are aligned. The starter then pulls the crews from lane one, she would say Long Beach State, UC Davis, San Diego State, Colorado. And then the starter will raise a flag, attention. attention, and she drops the flags, indicating the start of the race. We're underway. Once again, men's collegiate novice, petite final, race number 99. With novices, it can be fast and furious at the start, and that's exactly what's occurring. Quartering tailwind is challenging for oarsmen because it pushes the boat down to starboard a little bit. And Long Beach State has experienced some trouble with that already in lane one. They sit in the, in the fourth position. So approaching the 250 meter mark, it's UC Davis, the Aggies on the lead by about a half a boat length over San Diego State. San Diego State, about a half a length up on Colorado. And the 49ers from Long Beach State are just a bit off the pace. They had some issues there at the start. Okay, rhythm over water, gentlemen. Remember to move it on each stroke.
still your race leader, UC Davis. Six seats up on San Diego State. San Diego State, eight seats up on Colorado. Long Beach State is making a bold move to come back as we pass the 500 meter mark. Davis is rowing at 34 and a half strokes per minute. Comfortable stroke cadence. San Diego State appears to be, and I'll check to see, a couple beats higher. They are, they're rowing at 36. So obviously, if you can row at a lower cadence, you should have more fuel in the tank for that sprint when it comes down to the last three to 400 meters. At 750 meters now, Davis, UC Davis, has separated themselves by clear water over San Diego State. San Diego State in that second position is still eight seats up and Long Beach State trails. It's very nice when you have a clear water advantage. You can watch the crews come up to you as they push into the, your lead. You can counter punch and push them back. UC Davis is doing right now. They're taking a power 10 as we approach the 1,000 meter mark. So at the 1,000, on the lead, lane two, UC Davis. Second position, the Aztecs from San Diego State with an eight seat advantage over Colorado and Long Beach State trails. That's the call, 1,000 meters. All right, thank you, Jim. Again, uh, this is the Men's Collegiate Novice Dare Golker Memorial Cup. Uh, this is the Petite Final, so we have four boats in this race. Um, as we saw in some of the past events, pretty tight racing. It's a lot of fun for spectators uh, when these boats are neck and neck, but every once in a while, uh, you're gonna have these crews that try to get out and not make it as fun to watch, but uh, when you're rowing, it is uh, a great feeling to be out in front. As Jim was saying earlier, to be able to see your opponent behind you and counteract. Unfortunately, um, in our sport, since we're all facing backwards, uh, it is difficult to see that person out in front. So when you get a lead like this, it's, uh, it looks like as, as boats come into view, we have UC Davis with open water here. So UC Davis uh, trying to hold their rate up, trying to make this look good. They have their lead. They don't want to lose their lead here. But being able to see all of their opponents behind them is an advantage. Uh, we heard Long Beach had a little bit of a rough start, so they're trying to get catch back up so that they can see their opponents. But coming into uh, the last 750 here, uh, we have on the outside, Colorado. Colorado looks to be rowing at a... Colorado seems to be at a 32, 33. Again, these crews being a little bit timid through this opening, through this water that gets a little bit roughed up. We're seeing these crews take it a little gingerly over this bad water, but now more boats into view. We have UC Davis out in front. Looks like they have a length. Looks like SDSU men and Colorado might have a dogfight here. It looks like we're going to get a little bit closer, but uh, UC Davis pushing it out there. Again, trying to catch Long Beach, waiting for Long Beach to come back into the picture, but a little bit of a rough start, and now rough water is going to make that a little bit more difficult for him. But the race to watch here is SDSU on the outside in lane three, and then Colorado all the way on the outside in lane four. Looks like SDSU is pulling up on Colorado now, trying to make their push into UC Davis. UC Davis has that nice boat leg lead, but coming into the last 250 here with the tailwind, we can see these eights pick up speed. We have seen that in some of these races. Uh, we have seen these crews walk back. Now, whether UC Davis will allow that to happen or not, uh-oh, looks like we've got SDSU men catching a little bit of a crab. So SDSU men now needs to pick that speed up. Colorado, their coxswain seeing that little bit of a digger is now gonna tell his crew to bring it up 
and try to get across the line here. Yeah, but now we see Colorado. Colorado now has a breath of fresh air. You're gonna see them pick the rate up here to try and penalize SDSU for that little digger of a crab. So you see Davis watching the, watching the field here out in front, has about a length up on Colorado. Colorado now getting a breath of fresh air up on SDSU men. It's trying to hold their lead. Now, SDSU men are trying to recover as fast as possible and get their oars in. Now, this is a novice event, so these guys not as much as experienced as, as more varsity crews, but still getting it back. You see Davis in lane two with about a length of uh, open water back on Colorado. Colorado trying to get across the line here. Colorado about bound to stir on SDSU men crossing the line, losing a little bit of that lead, but just in time. Colorado in front of SCSU men. SCSU men finishing about a, a length of open back on Long Beach crew. Again, men's collegiate novice Derek Colker, Memorial Cup petite final. Stay up a little bit. Move up, move up, move up. Race 100. Is that start? Men's collegiate novice. Eights grand final. Lane one, Orange Coast College. Lane two, UCLA. Lane three, Loyal Marymount. Four. Southern California, five, UC Santa, Santa Barbara, lane six, University of Calgary. My goodness, blue hull, a navy hull, a maroon hull, white hull, and a yellow hull, an empocker closest to the shore. And we have a start. No incidents as UCLA pushes their bow out to an early lead over Orange Coast. Orange Coast counters now and has a three seat advantage over UCLA. Coming up on 250 meters now, the Pirates from Orange Coast College, your race leader, by four seats, make that five seats over UCLA. UCLA is in second, third position, being held down by SC. Then it's Loyola Marymount, UC Santa Barbara, and Calgary rounding out the field. Crews now approach the 500 meter mark, and Orange Coast continues to be on the lead now by eight seats over UCLA. So here we are, 500 meters gone, a quarter of the distance of the race with Orange Coast College, a community college from Costa Mesa, California, leading UCLA. UCLA now putting a big push on, starting to creep back on the leader. USC pushing back to challenge the Bruins for that second position. Still on the lead, Orange Coast College. The race for fourth, fifth, and sixth is a toss-up. Approaching the 750, still just to the shore is Orange Coast College. 
Second position being held down by UCLA, third by USC. Orange Coast rowing at 36 strokes per minute. UCLA a beat higher at 37. SC doing a fine job closest to the announcer's boat at staying in the hunt. But at 1,000 meters on the lead, just one length is Orange Coast College. So Orange Coast on the lead by oh, eight seats over UCLA. UCLA by two seats over USC and the remainder of the field is racing for that fourth position. That's the call of a thousand meters. And ladies and gentlemen, coaches, athletes, and spectators, just two quick announcements. Purdue University, if you are still around, please go over to collect your trophy for the Women's Collegiate Varsity D2, 3, and Club event as well as the Men's Varsity Active and Fit Owl Cup. Please collect your trophies. Also, Andrew Kyle Johnson. Andrew Kyle Johnson, you have a lost personal item. Please go to the information table at the finish line tent to collect it. Thank you. All right, look like we're coming into the last 500, 750, 500 here. So coming into view, it looks like USC out there in lane four uh, coming into view. Again, trying to push the rating here. It sounded like Jim was saying these crews are in the high 30s. So being the A final, uh, these men's collegiate novice crews are going to push the ratings a little higher. You know, this, this boat. Uh, we saw the last event, it was the final two, this final one, these boats are going to go a little bit higher here. It looks like a little bit tighter around first, second, and third. First, second, uh, again, in lane one, Orange Coast. Uh, in lane two, looks like UCLA is now pushing a little bit to get out in front of Southern California. Southern California, uh, from this angle, might have gotten ahead, might be a little bit out in front, but hard to tell at this moment. But Looks like all crews across are rowing a little bit higher than the, uh, the, the, the second file that we just saw coming down. These crews obviously, uh, first, second, and third almost look across. So we're looking to see Orange Coast in lane one, UCLA in lane two, uh, USC out in lane four. These three boats pushing the pace now. Again, still a little too close to call. Uh, the boats in the back, Leola Marymount, you, you see Santa Barbara, and, uh, University of Calgary. They're all fighting for fourth place. Looks like Calgary now making a push on the outside. But on the inside, we have lane one and two here, Orange Coast. Orange Coast with a tiny bit of a lead on UCLA in lane two. UCLA in lane two wants that first place finish. They want that trophy. So you're going to see UCLA make a push here to get their bow in front. But Orange Coast answering the call here. Their coxswain looks over. He doesn't look like he's going to allow them. Both boats now pushing up on USC. USC out in lane four is trying to respond, but it looks like it might be too late. Orange Coast now trying to get their lead up to a quarter length. Orange Coast now getting their length up to a quarter length has hit max speed. They're trying to get to the line. UCLA trying to respond. UCLA looks like they're about to half a length down now. UCLA finishing up about a length on USC. So crossing the line, we have Orange Coast three quarters of a length up on UCLA. UCLA finishing a little bit of open water on USC. USC. Finishing open water back on fourth through fifth, uh, fourth through sixth place. So now out in the outside lanes, we have University of Calgary out in lane six. University of Calgary, three quarters of a length up on Loyola Marymount. Loyola Marymount making a push here in eights. It's tough to make a move, but they are gaining gaining speed here. We'll see by the finish if they've done it. But it looks like it might be a photo finish. Loyola Marymount pushing in front of Calgary here. Calgary finishing in front of UC Santa Barbara. UC Santa Barbara out in lane five. So again, that was the Men's Collegiate Novice Derrick Memorial Cup, the A5.
At the start, race 101, women's eight alumni, Susan Francia Trophy Grand Final. Lane one, Brown. Two, University of San Diego. Three, UC Santa Barbara. Four, San Diego State. Lane five, UC San Diego. I think I may have said UC San Diego in lane two. That's University of San Diego. So alumni out here giving it a go. I'm sure remembering as they get to the 1500 meter mark that their minds make appointments that their body just can't keep. But right now, we have a very tight race with Brown, your race leader, in lane one, followed by University of San Diego in two. Then it's San Diego State in that fourth position. UC Santa Barbara in fifth. Reaching their stride now. Still, the alumni from Brown University on the lead by eight seats. Their coxswain looks over. Wanting more, as coxswains do. Second place crew, University of San Diego. Third position is San Diego State. Then it's UC Santa Barbara, and UC San Diego, closest to the announcing launch, is in that fifth position. Your leader now with clear water between their boat and that of University of San Diego. Let's check their stroke rate. That Brown crew is rowing at 36. Most crews about the same cadence. Still, the University of San Diego alum in that second spot, sitting a half a boat length up on San Diego State. And UC San Diego's made a move to get into that fourth position out here in lane five. And the Gaucho women are in that final fifth spot. So we're approaching the thousand meter mark. Your race leader by open water, about a boat length of open water actually is Second position, very nice rhythm here from the San Diego State Aztec alums. They're gonna have quite a battle with University of San Diego. And the other San Diego school is coming up as well. So a thousand meters, Brown is on the lead. The three San Diego schools in second, third and fourth with UC Santa Barbara trailing. That's the call, 1,000 meters down. All right. All right. So being an alum event, we just watched a couple novice events. So uh, again, with the stroke rating, mid-30s for the novice events. Now these boats being a little bit more experienced, uh, mostly post-college, or no, all post-college, sorry, alumni, <laughs> uh, they will be rowing a little bit higher. The, as they're coming in, this little bit of a tailwind will help them. But 
Uh, knowing how to row a little bit better, you'll see these crews striking a little bit higher stroke rates crossing the thousand. So as Jim said earlier, uh, 36, 37. Uh, we'll see these crews coming into view here in a little bit, but it looks like right now, out on the outside, we have SDSU and UCSD uh, battling it out here. It looks like both of them Looks like both crews, again, mid-30s. Looks like they're moving it up a little bit. Last 750 here, last 500, 750. Hopefully to see that a little bit higher out of those outside crews. On the inside, we have the Brown women's alumni and the uh, San Diego, the USD uh, women also making a push. So on the outside, we have SDSU in lane four. Looks like SDSU has a little bit of water here on UCSD. So. That will be developing back a little bit from them is UC Santa Barbara. So you see Santa Barbara struggling a little bit in the middle section. But coming into view now, we have USD. USD in lane two, about a length down on brown women. Brown women out there on front, nice solid stroke. They have their lead. Again, they can look over and see who they're racing. It looks like they're out in front of SDSU a little bit. SDSU nipping on their tails, but SDSU is being followed by U USD. So USD here has a chance to break into third. It looks like on the outside, UC San Diego is pushing out in front. They might actually be out in front of USD. So again, the San Diego crews are going for each other here. A little bit of uh, a little bit of town rivalry. Hopefully, see who gets this. So coming into the last 250 here, it looks like the Brown women. Brown women out in front. Nice solid stroke rate. Looks like they're coming in at a 35, 36. Looks like they may have come down through that wind a little bit, but now bringing it back up, it looks like they've been activated. So now coming up, they've got that last 250, last race of the day for some of these women. So they're gonna go for it here. It looks like the brown women are looking to get across that line so that they can have a fun rest of the day uh, here on shore, but they're getting it done. Out there in lane, Four, SDSU, out there in lane four, SDSU, now about a length up on the field. It looks like it's going to be a fight between UC San Diego and uh, UC Santa Barbara. So UC Santa Barbara and UC San Diego dueling it out a little bit here. But it, coming into the home stretch, we have the bow women, uh, brown women. Brown women about a little bit of open water back on SDSU. SDSU, in proper fashion, is now lengthened out a little bit, so they're going to finish over the UC Santa Barbara alumni. UC Santa Barbara alumni, I'm sorry, US, <laughs> USD is trying to finish this in front of SDSU. So building it up for the finish line here, we have the brown women, SDSU. You see US San Diego. You see SD. And coming in, SDSU. Again, that was the uh, Women's Eight Alumni Susan Francia Trophy final. Coming up to the 750 meter mark is race number 102. It's the Men's Alumni Cup final. The race leader by Clearwater is Butte. They've got about an eight seat open water advantage over, and they're in lane two, over the club's Donatico de San Juan in that second spot in lane one. Then we have two Isla Vista crews. The A crew is in that third spot, rowing in lane three and their B crew is in lane four in that final position. This Butte crew is very powerful. They took control of the race right from the shift and they continue to open water on the crew's astern. So as we approach the thousand meter mark, your lead crew is Butte, rowing a very strong, powerful, level 34 strokes per minute. And then quite a boat race for second between Isla Vista, A, and Club Nautico de San Juan in lane one. 
with the B crew from Isla Vista trailing. That's the call at 1,000 meters. All right. Sorry about that. I was still suffering from uh, pronouncing all the, the S's and the D's and the U's and the C's from that last event. So here we got the Men's Alumni Cup final. Uh, this is event 27. In lane one, we have got Club Nautico. Uh, looks like they're pretty far behind here. We have Butte in lane two. Butte in lane two seems to be out in front uh, about a length here. Again, a nice, solid finish out there in lane three is Isla Vista uh, A and Isla Vista B out there in lane four but right now it looks like out in front Butte is laying down a solid rhythm they have about a length of open on Isla Vista now these guys being alumni events they're smarter they know that if they're out in the lead just to enjoy it and have fun you won't see these crews building it up too much with a lead like that they are opening up a little bit but Butte Coming into the finish here with about half a length of open over Isla Vista A. Isla Vista A has brought the rate up. It still looks like they're in a comfortable, solid stroke rate. So finishing strong here. We have Butte in lane two. Butte lane two finishing about half a length of open back on Isla Vista A. Isla Vista A head up, sitting up, swinging. It's finishing about a bit of open, uh, boat length of open water on Club Nautico de San Juan. Club Nautico de San Juan here in lane one finishing open water back on Isla Vista B. Isla Vista V out in lane four. Again, that was the men's alumni cup final.
Orange Coast is being pulled. UCLA, UC Santa Barbara, UC Davis, San Diego State. Attention. Go. That's the start. Once again, these are the second novice rowers, the second boat novice rowers from these colleges and universities. Early in the race, it's UCLA on the lead. Orange Coast in that second position. Then UC Santa Barbara, Davis, and San Diego State. At 250 meters, your race leader, lane two, UCLA, by a half a boat over Orange Coast College. A little bit lumpy as you get to that opening where the bridge is, so it requires some more rowers sometimes don't always have. Approaching the 500 meter mark, it's still a battle as it was in the men's first novice eight between Orange Coast and UCLA. UCLA is still on the lead by a, about three seats in Orange Coat. Those two are clear water ahead of the other three crews. But at 500 meters, UCLA Bruins still on the lead by about four seats over Orange Coast College. Bruins in the white hull, blue blades, white shirts, orange coast in the yellow hull. That'd be an impocker uh, with the horizontal bands, blue in color in this race. And orange coast has made a big surge here, taking over the lead as we approach 750. So the Bruins went out fast and furious, but now it's a question of matching and getting as much as you can for stroke. And Orange Coast at 750 now has a two seat, make a three seat advantage over UCLA. UCLA counter punching now, comes back to within a seat. This is fun to watch. Going toe to toe, UCLA now back on the lead. So it seems that one of the crews will call for a power move, traditionally a power 10, and the other crew will then try to counter punch that and match. But UCLA is back on the lead as we approach the 1,000 meter mark. Okay, Orange Coast now coming back. Those two crews are probably two and a half boat lengths of open water ahead of the crews. So tough for me to call. Here we are, 1,000 meters. UCLA, Orange Coast in lane one. UCLA in lane two. And the other crews follow. So this should be quite an issue here for these novices. Rowers. San Diego Crew Classic would like to thank our legacy sponsor, the San Diego Tourism Marketing District. San Diego Tourism Marketing District is a tourism improvement district serving all areas within the city of San Diego. Lodging businesses with 70 rooms or more within the city are assessed a 2% fee on each room night. SDTMD uses these dollars to support marketing and promotional efforts, a variety of programs, services, and special events that increase night sales for assessed hotels. 
This consistent source of funding for tourism marketing allows San Diego to maintain its status as a competitive first-tier visitor destination and is vital to the strength and success of the city's tourism economy. And one short announcement, Julie McCormick, we have a lost personal item at the finish line tent, Julie McCormick. And we're back. All right. Coming into the last 250 here uh, to do a quick read. Again, it still looks like there's a dog fight between UCLA and Orange Coast. Again, fun for us, not for them. Hopefully this, uh, hopefully this materializes a little bit, but it, the wind has calmed down a little bit. The water's got a little flatter. So who's going to take advantage of this? Collegiate Novice Eights. We'll see if they react the way they should, if they're going to make their coaches happy after the race or if it's going to be a disappointing talk. So UCLA looks like they're trying to push here, but Orange Coast with the upper hand in lane one. Orange Coast bringing the raid up a little bit. Looks like they made their move and UCLA has now reacted. Out on the outside, looking at it, looks like UC Davis is all the way on the outside in third place. Uh, both, all these boats have separated a little bit. So it looks like this race coming into the last 100, 150 meters here, it's gonna get loud. Listen to these crews watching their novices come. Hopefully we get to see a little bit of a separation here. Looks like Orange Coast is trying to push their bow out. Again, bringing the rate up. Let's see if UCLA can respond. They have about 100, 150 meters left here. So running out of water. Hopefully we see it, but right now, Orange Coast looks like they're pushing their bow up. Looks like they're getting the lead and the momentum. Coming into the last couple meters here, looks like Orange Coast has finally pushed their bow out to about a quarter of a length. Trying to get across the line here. UCLA hurting a little bit, trying to push, but there's nothing there. So it looks like Orange Coast about three quarters of a length up on UCLA. Tough race. Pushing in front of the whole field, wide open water, all the way back to UC Davis. So both these boats have pushed as hard as they could go. UC Davis all the way out in lane five, coming across the line in third. UC Davis, nice solid rhythm, trying to bring the boats in. Again, open water all the way back to uh, UC Santa Barbara. You see Santa Barbara trying, trying to get their, their, their oars together, trying to get the rhythm together, trying to swing together. But again, this is a long race. These guys look tired. So trying to get it together. The coxswain calling them up. Hey, guys, the finish line's right there. We've almost got it. So you see Santa Barbara making a push. Open water up on SDSU men. SDSU men all the way out there in lane six. Again, trying to get across the line. Novice Cruz, good job, guys. You guys have made it. But crossing the line here, trying to get across. We'll you see Santa Barbara. All right. You see Santa Barbara crossing lane three. Nice job, guys. On the course now, race number 104, Women's Masters 8 Petite Final. We're approaching the 500 meter mark. Your race leader in lane two is BIAC. They have a six seat advantage over Vancouver, who was ahead of Station L in lane four. Then it's Lake Union in lane five, followed by Sammamish, closest to the shore, and Martha's Mom Trail. So we're at the 500 meter mark. BIA crew is doing a nice, making a big effort to stay ahead and getting some, some good ratio. Overlap between the first through the fifth crew, which is terrific. Lead crew rowing 35 and a half beats or stroke. Their coxswain is sitting even with the bow of the second place crew. Coxswain, of course, wants more as they all do. Wants clear water. 
So once again, it's BIA on the lead. Second position goes to Vancouver. Third to Station L. Fourth position is close to the shore. Sammamish, then Lake Union. 750 meter complete, coming up on the 1,000. Very competitive. Others are clear water getting back into the hunt for the for that first position. Big move by Station L right now, challenging for that second spot. White Blades, White Hull. But BIAC has been very consistent, holding that six, eight seat advantage over Vancouver. So coming up to the thousand, BIAC, it crosses the 1,000 meter mark. First position, eight seats up on Vancouver, who is six seats up on Station L. Then through Lake Union for that four and six. Power. Good afternoon, athletes and coaches. A general announcement. If you have won an event that has a trophy, please remember to come over to the finish line area to collect that trophy. Specifically now, we are looking for Long Beach Rowing Association to collect your Camp Land on the Bay trophy for the Women's Masters FGHI 60 Plus Final. Long Beach Rowing Association, you have a trophy waiting for you. All right, again, this is race 104, event 30, the Women's Masters A Club Champ, Thalia Kelly Constantine Cup, the Petite Final. All right, as Jim was saying, it lo looks like we have a race here. It looks like still a little bit close within contact. Looks like BIAC in lane two is still out in front a little bit. Looks like they're being challenged uh, to their starboard side by Vancouver and Station L. A little bit of separation here. So coming into the finish, as we see these crews bring it up, see if somebody comes up a little bit closer, draws a little bit closer. But again, it looks like lane two to lane five. We have by BIAC, Vancouver, Station L, and Lake Union. All the way on the outside in lane six, there's moms. Uh, all the way outside, lane one, Sammamish. So, uh, again, these crews right here in the middle, it looks like we've got BIAC, BIAC, maybe with a tiny lead over Station L. Station L looks like they're pushing Vancouver, but maybe a little too close to tell. Uh, these crews coming into the last 250 here, they are going to switch back and forth a little bit. I can almost guarantee with this tailwind, these crews are going to get excited in this last 250. When the buoys turn red, that's go time. So looking at Bayak, Bayak having a little bit of steering issues here, but still out in front, not looking like they want to get caught here, but they might not have a choice. Station L pushing the, the issue. Vancouver now coming up on the inside. So Vancouver now pushing the envelope. Vancouver maybe have the momentum all the way into the finish here. So looks like Bayak just took the move, just brought the rate up. Looks like they're rowing in this tailwind. Looks like they're rowing at a 36-37. So for, again, for our Masters event, rowing that high into the finish, trying to keep their bow in front. It's BIAC in lane two. Lane three, Vancouver. Vancouver looks like they might be neck and neck with Station L, but Station L making a move now, now bringing the rate up. They want to be in second place, but they really want to be in first place. Both these crews giving BIAC a hard time here. BIAC 
now making for their move across the line. Not with a whole lot of space here. They have about a quarter length up on Station L. Station L about a bow up on Vancouver. Vancouver might run out of real estate here, but let's see. These ball, these crews bringing the rate up now, finally making that push for the line. It looks like BIAC looks across. They, they might have pulled it off, but Vancouver, Station L, Vancouver, Station L. Bow ball to bow ball. Looks like it's going to be a tight little finish. Looks like Vancouver able to push their bow up a little bit. Station L over there in lane four, just eking through. Now we have lane five, Lake Union. Lake Lake Union coming into fourth place. Lake five, Lane Union. A nice little bow length of open over here over Sammamish. Sammamish still looking good coming across the line, trying to bring the rate up a little bit. Just to have a good finish for the race here. Nice flat water, good little finish. All the way out in lane six, we have Martha's mom to conclude event 30, Women's Masters 8, Club Champ Thalia Kelly Constantine Cup Final, Petit Final. Race number 105 is just now crossing the 500 meter mark. Excellent race. We've got five crews, five crews in contention to win this race. There's not more than four seats separating one through five. Lane assignments in one is Long Beach, two is Texas Rowing Club, three is Sarasota. Sammamish holds down that four lane. College Club Seattle in five, Rogue Rowing in six, and Marth Wands in seven. Right now, Sammamish with slight lead. Sarasota. Once again, as we approach the 50 mark, one of the of the morning. Excuse me, afternoon. But it's Sammamish, your race leader in lane four. And as I say that, Long Beach one surges up to some level. They're even. Third position being held down by Sarasota. Then Texas Rowing Club. And then College Club Seattle. So we're coming to the 1,000 meter mark. And once again, this is going to be very, very close at the finish. Sammamish, your race leader. Long Beach is in second. Sarasota's in third. College Club Seattle is in fourth. Texas Rowing Club is in fifth. Sixth and seventh are Martha's Moms, followed by Rogue Rowing. That's the call of the 1,000 meters. All right. Thank you, Jim Jorgensen. First 1,000 meters. Again, sounds like we might have some close racing here. Um, that last one, we had two boats. Uh, three, sorry, the top three boats, neck and neck all the way to the finish. Sounds like this A final isn't going to disappoint. Coming into the finish here, we're starting to see these crews come into some, looks like College Club Seattle out there in lane five. Um, leading those outside crews, Rogue Rowing and Martha's Moms. But the race looks like it's unfolding as more of these boats come into view. Looks like we're going to have a close race here again. Fun for us, not for them. Looks like a tight race, but uh, these being Masters crews with this little bit of tough water, a little bit of a tailwind, hopefully uh, clean rowing, but not always guaranteed. So coming into the last 500 meters here, it looks like we have some Mamish, some Mamish out in front. It doesn't look like far off the College Club, College Club Seattle, but on this close side, looks like a a couple crews, Sarasota, Long Beach, Texas RC, all these crews are right in line here, but not a lot of separation. So if we're reading this wrong, I apologize, but it is almost too close to call from the angles that we're looking at. It does look like Sammamish has extended their lead a little bit over College Club Seattle and Sarasota. 
Again, as we see these crews coming in closer, we're gonna see a little bit more separation. But again, it looks like Sammamish out in lane four is out in the lead. It looks like on their starboard side, College Club Seattle. College Club Seattle looks like they might be in line with Long Beach here. Long Beach on the inside just revealed themselves. Long Beach on the inside is now in contention for the second, third place push here. But Sammamish out in front trying to stay out of the bloodbath that is now developing behind them. On their port side, it looks like Sarasota now making a go for it. Sarasota, Long Beach, Sarasota, Long Beach, College Club Seattle all making a push for that second place here. Might find themselves in third place if they keep this up, but it doesn't look like Sammamish is going to back down. It doesn't look like Sammamish is going to let this one go, even though Long Beach in lane one, Long Beach just bringing the rate up, has now pushed into second place. Long Beach now trying to push open, but almost reactionary sarasota is now taking the rate up sarasota definitely pushing in front of college club seattle college club seattle out there is trying to look across trying to follow both crews but it might be too late sammamish now trying to bring the rate up they've got about a boat length up sarasota coming up in lane three now acting as a threat sarasota trying to but long beach second place is now pushing that first place, now Long Beach, has now found themselves in the right place to push Sammamish. Sammamish now panicking a little bit, trying to get across that line with their lead, now is being pushed by Long Beach. Long Beach has momentum here. Long Beach has momentum. Long Beach might get their bow here in the semi. Sammamish needs to bring it up and get it across the line, because here comes Long Beach. Long Beach pushing it across the line. Looks like it's going to be too close to call. Third place, Sarasota crossing at third place. Out on the outside, College Club Seattle finishing in fourth. Open water on Open Water on Texas RC. Texas RC now coming across the line on the outside. Now we have Martha's Mobs uh, in lane seven and Rogue Rogue finishing up the back of this event. Again, event 30, Women's Masters 8 Club Champ Thalia Kelly Constantine Cup Final A. Just leaving the starting boats. This is race number 106, Masters Champ Petite Final. Eight boats across. Crimson Death Barge is in lane one. Texas Rowing Club is in lane two. Potomac A in three. Lake Union lane four. Potomac B in lane five. Riverside in six. BIAC in seven. And Station L lane eight. Coming up to the 250 meter mark. The race leader right now is Riverside in lane six. Doing a nice job of staying level. Having some nice finishes here, getting good run per stroke. Second position is Lake Union in lane four, and then it's too close to call. But Riverside, your race leader as we approach the 500 meter mark. Riverside rowing 35 strokes per minute with an eight seat lead. over Lake Union. The rest of the crew is too close to call. That being said, Texas Rowing Club in lane two is holding down that third position. Lake Union's got a solid hold on that second spot. You can hear the coxswains barking for perhaps a move here as we approach the 750 meter mark. 
This is where a lot of crews try to very much establish their identity and discourage the crews that are close to them. So once again, lane six, Riverside, your race leader by almost a full boat length over Lake Union. The rest of the fleet is really, really congested. Riverside doing a very impressive job as they now almost have clear water over Lake Union. Riverside rowing a very controlled, powerful 34 and a half strokes per minute as they cross the thousand meter mark. Then it's Lake Union That third spot appears to be held down by the Texas Rowing Club in lane two. And that's the call, 1,000 meters. Race number one of Masters eight, petite final. Your attention please, Long Beach Rowing Association women's G to the trophy tent. Long Beach Rowing Association, women's G to the trophy tent. Thank you. All right, coming in the last thousand meters, we have the men's masters club champ final, the petite final, sorry, the petite final. Now again, knowing that most of these crews, these guys are gonna be fighting here in the last 500 meters. So uh, as Jim called it, looks like Riverside all the way out there in lane six. Riverside wants this. It looks like from where we're standing, they have now broken out open water and now does not want to have to deal with anybody in the last 500 meters. They want to sit by themselves. They want to be able to watch everybody coming in behind them. Now, it looks like in second place, we could could have more crews coming to view here. We could have a race for second place here. Looks like Lake Union, Lake Union out there in lane four. Lake Union is making a push. Texas, Texas all the way on the inside here. Texas is interested in going too. We have Bayak and Station L out on the outside, lane seven, lanes eight. Everybody wants this, but right now out in front riverside textbook rowan nice solid rhythm doesn't look like they're kicking up a lot of white water with this little tailwind now on their starboard side they have a duel going on biac out in lane seven and station l are making a push on the inside they looks like they have lake union lake union might be in second place here but doesn't look too comfortable lake union has all those boats to starboard has biac and station l all the way on their left Left. Then we have a race for fifth and sixth place. Two boats behind. Uh, it's these two Potomac boats are looking to push themselves into the right place. But right now, Riverside, nice solid rhythm. Doesn't look like they're bringing it up a little bit, maybe, but not too much. Looks like they're comfortable. Again, they've got their lead. They're extending it a little bit on their port side. They have in lane three. I'm sorry, they have Lake Union. They have Lake Union and Lake Four. Basically, Lake Union has now pushed themselves a length out in front of those two crews on the outside, Bayak and Station L. Looks like Bayak now pushing up a length. Riverside bumping to get to the line here. They do not want to be caught. It does not look like they're going to get caught. So Riverside all the way out in lane six. Riverside finishing open water up on Lake Union here. Lake Union here has a nice comfortable lead up on this lane two. Texas Rowing Center. Texas Rowing Center now a length up on Potomac. Potomac tried to make a push here, but now running out of runners. So Potomac finishing in fourth place. So we have in lane six, Riverside. In lane four, Lake Union. In lane two, Texas RC. Now a tight race between Potomac, Potomac and these two crews on the outside, Bayak and Station L. Potomac now finishing over BIAC. Station L just about half a length up. Potomac about half a length down on Station L. A little bit open water back on Crimson Death Barge. Again, to round out the men's Masters 8 club champ final, petite final.
at the start, race number 107, Men's Masters 8, Club Champ Grand Final. Eight boats across. Lane one is Cambridge. Lane two, Marin. Lane three, San Diego. Lane four, Rocky Mountain. Sammamish sits in the lane number five. East Bay in six. Riverside in seven. And closest to the announcer's launch, North Dakota. And after the fraction strokes, closest to us, your race leader in lane eight, North Dakota. They sit two seats up on Riverside in that second position. North Dakota doing a very nice job out here in lane eight. A little bounce from Riverside in that second spot, which cost them. As we look back to the inside crews for the second, third, and fourth spot. Cambridge and Marin have quite a battle over in lane one and two for that third spot, but it's North Dakota, your race leader by eight seats. Kudos to their oarsmanship. Second spot, still Riverside. Third goes to Sammamish. And then we go all the way inside to Marin and Cambridge. The coxswain here closest to me says, who wants open water? Give it to me now as they cross the 500 meter mark. But open water, it's not to be. Riverside puts on a press here, sitting only four seats down to the leader, North Dakota in lane eight. Very impressed by the crews out here close to me. It's easy for me to call who's on the lead when they're right next to me. So Coxon's battling back and forth. Riverside's going to the whip because they're only four seats down as we approach the 750 meter mark. So it's North Dakota, Riverside, first and second. Then into Sammamish, and then into San Diego. Too close to call for my position. Big and being called by North Dakota here, as Riverside looks very level, very right next to them. All right, the coxswain's calling one for the bow as we approach the thousand meter mark. We're going to show them what we've got right now. Riverside says, hey, watch out, boys. Here we can almost level. 1,000 meter mark, still on the lead. Lane 8, North Dakota. But Riverside really, really freight training through, and they now have the lead. So it's North Dakota, Riverside, impressive. Then it's Sammamish, and the rest too close to call. But that's the call at 1,000 meters. And these two outside crews are going to have quite a toe-to-toe -to -toe bath as they go to the finish line. Attention athletes and coaches. Orange Coast College Men's Novice 8. Please report to the trophy tent. Orange Coast College Men's Collegiate Novice 8, please report to the trophy tent. And if you are a winning crew that was racing in a race that had a cup, please go to the trophy tent to collect your trophy. Thank you. All right, coming into the last 750, 500. As Jim said, we have a barn burning in those, outdoor, uh, those outside lanes, but 
Um, unfortunately, I was just notified of a lane switch. It looks like North Dakota is in lane six and East Bay is out in lane eight. So hopefully we've got this correct in saying that East Bay and Riverside on that outside cruise, it looks like East Bay and Riverside on those outside crews are again showing that they have some prominence in this last 500 meters. Riverside just performed in this last race with a nice comfortable lead. So seeing them push it here out there in lane seven uh, against East Bay on their starboard side. East Bay on their starboard side responding to these moves, but it looks like Riverside has just pushed open a little bit. Let's see if East Bay responds. Uh, East Bay is up uh, open water on these inside crews. Looks like Sammamish coming in in third. Sammamish uh, on their port side, on these two boats port side, now is racing their boat uh, in North Dakota. North Dakota in that lane six. Again, like I said, uh, North Dakota in lane six and East Bay in lane eight. So looks like coming back here, uh, the inside crews on the inside lanes. It looks like we have in lane two, Marin is up on the field. Looks like Marin's trying to push back in this fourth place, but Riverside out in front has now just pushed about a length of open. They're coming to the last 250. The rates are coming up. You're going to see these guys start throwing, heaving, and hoeing. Those guys are looking for the beer garden. They want to finish this race. They want to have some fun in San Diego, so they're making their extra little push here, opening it up on water, opening water on East Bay. East Bay needs to respond here if they want to hold on to Riverside. Riverside's missing making that push. They want to have fun. They want to hang out. So here comes Riverside into the last 100 meters here. Riverside, uh, open water now on East Bay. East Bay now trying to hold on. East Bay now holding on in front of these inside crews. Sammamish. Sammamish now trying to close that gap a little bit, might, but might have run out of a little bit of room here. So crossing the line, we have Riverside. Lane seven on their starboard side. We have East Bay in lane eight, finishing second. Open water back to Sammamish. Sammamish, lane five. Sammamish, open water on these inside crew. Uh, looks like we're picking up a little bit of speed. Lane two, Marin. Marin coming in fourth place about on Cambridge. Cambridge not happy to be there, but finishing in front of Rocky Mountain. Or, I'm sorry, Rocky Mountain here. Rocky Mountain also finishing. San Diego. So San Diego, finishing it out for the events men, uh, the Vince Masters Club Champ Final A. Now sitting at the start, race number 108, women's open eight, Carly Copley Cup, grand final. Lane assignments are lane one, Texas. Lane two, California. Lane three, Washington. Four, Baja California State. USC is in five. University of Calgary Rowing Club is in six. And Bates in lane seven. We have a start. A lot of cocks and chatters. They encourage their crew. Right now, your early race leader, Texas in lane one with California right there with them. Separation of a maybe eight feet, a deck. Third position goes to the Huskies from the University of Washington. Then Baja, California. State, USC, Calgary, and Bates. Quite a battle for that first position with Texas and the Golden Bears from University of California. Both exchanging punches now as we approach the 500 meter mark.
Longhorns with a slight advantage. I would say maybe a half a seat at that. But Texas realizes that they can't let, excuse me, California realizes they can't let Texas get encouraged here and they're now leveled, they're even. Washington isn't that far off, sitting eight seats down. But suddenly Texas has had some problems. They've stopped rowing. Now they've started rowing again. And so California takes over the lead. California sits eight seats up on Washington. Texas now needs to get their rhythm back before they make that push or else they could perhaps catch a crab for the frustration of, of having to stop. But that's boat racing. So the pairs with an seat advantage over Washington. Texas is really putting down some big puddles wanting to get back on that lead 750 gone california on the lead texas has already come back to establish the second position over washington washington in third followed by baja california state then usc calgary and bates California needs that hiccup that Texas had days back because Texas does not like to be in second place. Up to the 1,000 meter mark, California with an eight seat advantage over Texas. Texas in that second spot has a four seat advantage over Washington. Then it's clear water to the remainder of the field. But at the 1,000, California, your race leader, by a half a boat over Texas. Texas with a half a boat over Washington at third spot. That's the call at the 1,000 meters. All right. Thank you, Jim. Now, crossing the 1,000 meters again, uh, this wind seems to be dying down a little bit. It looks like the water's getting a little bit flatter. So uh, these ladies are going to have to put a lot of work in coming into the, last, the second half of this race. So, again, this is event 17, the Women's Open 8 Carly Copley Cup, uh, final A. So look for these women to try and finish this race. Uh, obviously fighting, it's going to be a dogfight into the last 500 here. Uh, as Jim said earlier, it sounds like Texas unfortunately had to stop briefly, uh, giving California the lead. So um, pretty close race until they open it up. So see if Texas is able to bring it back and bring Washington with them. California out in front. As these boats come into view, uh, we're going to try and see what has developed in this last, in that third 500 here. So again, wind not, not too strong, but the water being flatter here, uh, we're, we're going to be able to see some higher rates. It looks like uh, as they come into view, we see three boats across. Again, it looks like California with that slight lead out in lane three. And then uh, off to their right side, you're going to see some of these boats close together. So it looks like Washington. Coming into this last 500 here, Washington on the lower end, looks like Washington's 32, 33. Looks like to their left, California. California looks like they're pushing it a little bit higher, 34, 35. Looks like they're gonna start bringing the rate up. But um, again, home stretch here. So anything can happen. Uh, these, these three boats right here on the inside, pretty tight. And then once we fall back to fourth, fifth, and sixth, uh, it's pretty tight between Baja California State, USC, and University of Calgary. But coming into the home stretch, looks like Washington. Washington pushing back into Cal. Cal, Texas is not taking it easy either. It looks like these boats are getting closer. Again, last 250, these ladies are going to be bringing the rate up, trying to shorten their stroke up a little bit and getting their body swing. But looks like Texas, Texas now pushing into the lead. Looks like Texas is now coming into the lead here. Looks like California not too happy about that. University of Washington now bringing it up. Has California spent too much? California now making the push, but Texas Austin now has their bow on front. Texas Austin is now gaining momentum in the finish. They want it. They want to push all the way out in front. They're angry that they had that little hiccup there and now want to make up for it. So Texas pushing out in front here. California 
fighting off University of Washington. University of Washington wanting that second place. Texas now taking first place. Texas now a length up on California. California doing what they can to hold off Washington. Washington trying to head down, trying to push in that third position, but here comes Texas. Texas rolling with a little bit of open water here. Now it's almost on the finish line. California pushing Washington back a little bit. Washington finishing about half a length down on Cal. Finishing out this race in third. All right, coming back to fourth place. Coming back to fourth place, we have Baja California. Baja California is now about a length up. Baja California, a length up on USC. USC also trying to finish this race. Each of these boats about separated. So Baja California crossing in fourth. USC crossing in fifth. University of Calgary crossing in sixth. About evenly spaced back to... Uh, Bates College, all the way out in lane seven, and that will follow, uh, that will finish our Carly Copley final for the women's varsity boats. Now at the start, race number one zero nine, men's open eight. Four boats in this race, lane one, Baja State, I should say Baja California State, two, Butte, three, Long Beach State, and in lane four, University of Calgary. We have a start. Long Beach State pushes their bow into the lead. A lot of splashy water here is it's a little bit lumpy with the opening where the bridge is and then the landmass of course makes it a little bit flatter. But I take that back. It's not Long Beach State but rather Butte on the lead by a half a boat length over Baja California State. University of Calgary holds down that third position in Long Beach State Trails. Crews now approach the 500 meter mark. Coxon's looking over at each other's crew, encouraging, letting their crew know where they stand in terms of seats up, seats down. Baja California State now making a bold move sits only two seats down to Butte. So Butte's your leader, California State. So that second spot, then Calgary, and the final position is Long Beach State. Very consistent strokes being taken by the Butte crew sitting three seats up on Baja California State. Pretty much matching each other stroke for stroke. So, two adversaries standing toe to toe, throwing punches back and forth. 750 meters gone. Butte still with a three seat advantage over Baja California State. Even from the distance I am away from the crew, I can hear the coxswain barking commands as we approach the 1,000 meter mark. And as we do, your race leader, lane two, is Butte, with a half a boat advantage over Baja California State. Crossing now, California State coxswain calling for a power move and then Calgary hold down third clear water stern of those lead crews with Long Beach State picking up that fleet that's the call of a thousand meters
All right. Thank you, Jim. Again, this is the Men's Open 8 Anderson Borthwick Memorial Trophy presented by my home club, San Diego Rowing Club. All right. A final coming into the last home stretch here. Uh, we have Butte in lane two. Looks like they have a, a bit of a lead out here on Baja California State lane one. Um, looks like University of Calgary out in lane four. Not letting go though, but Again, last couple thousand meters here, last thousand meters here, uh, seeing these crews bring the rate up, but wind subsiding a little bit, sun's definitely out, it's turning into a nice day. All right, looks like coming into view, University of Calgary, A little bit of choppy water here. You can see water getting kicked up. They look to be at a 35-36. So University of Calgary in third place looking to better themselves into the finish here. But it looks like Butte in lane two has a little bit of open water here. Looks like Butte has pushed it open here and now wants to win this race uh, early. They, they don't want to have to deal with anybody in the last 500 meters here. So it looks like they're pushing their lead open a little bit on Baja California State. Baja California State also trying to get through this chop a little bit has now brought their rate up. It looks like they are rowing above a 40. Looks like they just brought it up. If you guys want to see what a 41-42 looks like in the last 250, come and watch Baja California State. Baja California State trying to push back into second place here. Butte sitting out in front trying to be comfortable, trying to be clean, comfortable coming in the last 250. They've also brought their stroke rate up, responding with a higher rate. Uh, both these boats, higher 30s, lower 40s in the stroke right here, trying to hold on to their lead here is Butte in lane two, trying to catch them is Baja California. Baja California now trying to put a little bit of overlap in these boats. Both these boats, believe it or not, taking the rate higher. <laughs> Nothing think it was possible. Both these boats finishing strong. Nice little tailwind here. Looks like Butte in lane two is going to be able to hold on to their lead. Looks like Baja California putting on speed, but it will not be enough. Hopefully they just brought up the rate, so hopefully we'll see it build up again. But looks like Butte out in front, holding a steady rhythm, is giving up a little bit of their lead just to cross the line first. Looks like Butte crossing the line first, nice and comfortable. Looks like Baja, California State, lane one, able to make up a little bit of ground, but unfortunately too late here. Unfortunately too late. A little bit of open back here. Now we can see University of Calgary is now crossing the line out in lane four. University of Calgary now brings the rate up, looking to get a better time before the end of the day. Open water back on them is Long Beach State. Long Beach State now coming across. That will... Uh, that will finish event 24, the Men's Open 8 Anderson Borthwick Memorial Trophy, Final A.
Hey, I heard some brew guru is coming. The brewer? He's a legend. They say he can look into a beer's soul. It and is deep in the Appalachians with nothing but a home range. Yeah, and he only drinks beer during a barley harvest moon. Legend has it his blood type is hot. I heard he wasn't actually born, he was barrel aged. Chile, lime, tart, but not sour. It's a goza. It's good. Margos, a new beer collaboration with Roberto's Media, now pouring in a tasting room near you. Good. That's how you say Three, two, one.
Your exercise routine is missing one thing. Flexibility to work out in a way that works for you. Meet Active and Fit Now, a flexible, affordable fitness program designed for everybody. For one low cost, you can choose from thousands of fitness centers nationwide, plus thousands of on-demand workout videos and more, all starting at just $29 a month. So what's the catch? No catch. Visit our website to get active and fit now with Active and Fit Now. Attention teams, attention teams. If you have won an event that has an associated trophy, please remember to come to the trophy tent to pick it up and take it home with you. If you have won an event that has a trophy associated with it, please come to the trophy tent and pick it up. Thank you.
At the start of a season, I think of all the things that can go right. I rule out all the luck. Claim what I can have up front, because there's always room for improvement. Years of experience and athlete data turn into performance design. A simple thing like a fitting shoe can add to the strength of your stroke. Hand you that one millisecond that sets you apart from your fastest self to power yourself to victory. No race is the same, but some things can be a given. Why share essential gear when you can have your own? To some, 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 some things, things are just, just a detail. detail. I, believe I believe that, that winning, winning is in the detail. detail.
Good afternoon. We are coming back from our afternoon break and we are getting ready. We've seen crews head down for the Women's Collegiate D2, D3 Club 4 Final, shortly followed by the Collegiate Novice 8 Final. Crews are facing a stiff sideways breeze out there. Not their favorite. It means that the boat is going to be corkscrewing through the waves. Fortunately, it's an outdoor sport and all of these crews would have trained in all conditions. The first race will start, and it looks like it is actually coming down the course now. It looks like the crews were there, and they were able to start them a little bit earlier. In lane number one, we have Long Beach State. They are coming through the last 500, and they are controlling the race. Oops, another crew has come out from behind the trees. So My apologies, this is the Women's Collegiate Four B Final. This is the second Varsity Four. So in lane one, we have San Diego and they are trailing lane two, which is Gonzaga. Both of these crews will face each other in their conference championships, the West Coast Conference. And we have Gonzaga with a commanding lead but we have a battle between University of San Diego and Oklahoma. And in the bringing up the field is another local crew, UC San Diego. So even though Gonzaga has a commanding lead, they are putting the pedal to the metal as they move into the final strokes. They're at a 34 in these conditions, that is a challenge. And we have a ding-dong race here between University of San Diego, who has cranked their rating up. And we have inside on the lane, trying to hold on to them, we have Oklahoma. Oklahoma has traveled here to come to this regatta, and they are powering through this water, but finishing at third with University of San Diego taking it out. And we have UC San Diego, recently moved up to Division I, coming in in lane four. All of these crews, even though this is the second varsity four, all of these crews are racing for credit with the NCAA for cross-regional competition to earn their bid to the NCAA championships. And momentarily, we will have the Women's Collegiate D2, D3 Club event for. For a team event, crews must have a Varsity 8, a second Varsity 8, and a Varsity 4. In Division 2, Division 3, they would be required to show that their 4s earn enough points for a team bid. The crews we have racing today are club crews and it is the beginning of the season for everyone but the club crews are going to be earning bids to the American Collegiate Rowing Championships that are held at the end of the season. In lane one we have Long Beach, lane two UC Santa Barbara and lane three Colorado.
And thank you, Patty, for that lineup. And indeed, we are well underway with the Women's Collegiate D2, D3, and Club 4. And already this early on in the race, it is Colorado way out front. They are approaching 500 meters gone, and they already have about two and a half lengths of open water. And you can bet coming all the way out here to San Diego from the mountainous town of Boulder, where they row on Cherry Creek Reservoir, they are going to make a statement and make sure that they really take their time here at San Diego to their advantage and they are doing that they look strong they look sharp and rowing at a slightly lower stroke rating than the rest of the field that really seems to be working with for them as they capitalize on their strength so behind them in second place it will be UC Santa Barbara UC Santa Barbara sitting bow to stern over Long Beach State but pulling away a little bit farther looking for that open water advantage as they come up to the halfway point. But right now, it's all about the buffs from Colorado continuing to row cleanly. We got into a little bit better water here, and they're taking advantage of that as they continue to extend their lead. And Colorado here coming up to 12, excuse me, 750. I have them clocked at a very comfortable 30 strokes a minute. Again, sometimes with the wind, it really helps to keep the stroke rating a little bit lower so that you can row cleanly and capitalize on your power instead of the high stroke rate to keep the boat moving along. So now University of Colorado moving their lead out. Who I'm gonna say about four full boat lengths here. It's really a great place to sit there in the stroke seat, look down the race course and see how much of an advantage you have headed towards that finish line. So Colorado with that substantial lead. They're followed by UC Santa Barbara, very strong here for them in that second place position, but really all by themselves. So Santa Barbara also rowing at about 32 strokes a minute, behind them by about two and a half lengths of open water. It continues to be Long Beach State. All boats now approaching 1,000 meters. Patty, go ahead. Thank you, Adrian. Yes, Colorado, where the Buffalo Row is taking full advantage of the good weather here. The, uh, there's no snow, so they can really dig into the sunrise, the sunset, and have their go down the course. So as Adrian said, they seem to be very comfortable in these choppy conditions, controlling it with a low, powerful stroke, while Long Beach, who rose at the the future Olympic site in Long Beach Stadium is working their way through this choppy water rolling through. UC Santa Barbara is also a club crew. All three of these crews are club crews, which means that while they will get some support from their university, they are a club and they do a lot of fundraising to support their coaching staff and their road trips. Santa Barbara has had a traditionally very powerful team, even though they have a long trip up to their lake to row, but they are very strong and always field a full team when they come to the Crew Classic. So we're awaiting for the crews. We can just see Colorado coming from behind the trees as they approach the final part of that third 500. As Adrian mentioned, they are understroking the other crews. Colorado is still at 30, 31. And you can see as you look down, they are rowing together. They have very clean, very authoritative catches as they move into the boat. In these smaller boats, they are much more dynamic than the larger boats. If one person makes a mistake, it's a quarter of the boat making a mistake. So even though it is a strong, powerful boat because you are carrying the weight of a coxswain, it is still a very dynamic moving boat. And we are seeing Colorado displaying outstanding blade work, 
If you watch closely, you can see the boat roll underneath them a little bit with this crosswind, especially in this windy pit where they're rowing past the bridge. They are doing an outstanding job and coming out from behind the trees, we have UC Santa Barbara. They are rowing well, but they just don't have that authoritative catch that Colorado is putting in. They are locking on and hanging hard as they drive their boat through this choppy water. Still very comfortable rowing at a nice 29.30, whereas Santa Barbara, still fighting down the course, is rowing two beats higher and punching through that rough water in that third 500. You may notice as Colorado comes by that they have what's called a bucket rig. Instead of the riggers alternating down each side of the boat, we have two sets of blades right next to each other. The port blades are together. We have a starboard stroke boat with two and three backing each other up and bow backing up strokes. So instead of alternating down the boat, we have what's called a bucket rig. And they are schooling the field as they come down the course. And now we have Santa Barbara working it in front of the crowd. Lots of Santa Barbara cheerleaders down there on the shore, their teammates supporting them. And Santa Barbara working on their race plan for future racing, bumping it up to a 34 and a half to push it home, to sprint it home. Coming in at a 34, rowing with a traditional port starboard, port starboard rig, and the coxswain buried in the bow. And on the inside, we have Long Beach State. driving it home, and they too are taking it up. This is a great opportunity at the beginning of the season to work on your race plan, your motivation, and coming up with crew programs. So coaches will be reviewing the races, addressing dead spots, and coming up with a race plan that works for this race that is primarily an endurance sprint. The coxswain is running her race plan. She's got her crew sprinting home. They're at a 36, having a little bit of trouble with the steering, but bringing her boat into the line. Well done, Long Beach. All right, and we'll turn our attention back up to the start. This, the final of the women's collegiate D2, D3, and club novice eights. We have five boats on the course. In lane one, Orange Coast College. Lane two, University of Calgary Rowing Club. Lane three, UC Santa Barbara A. Lane four, UC Santa Barbara B and lane five, the University of Colorado. And that's pretty much how you will find them as they come out of the starting gates. So lane one, Orange Coast, your early leader, sitting with a already pretty comfortable lead, about six to seven seats over lane two, University of Calgary, but very tight, still a lot of overlap between all of these boats. So Calgary in second, but looking at a good challenge from lane three, Santa Barbara A. Santa Barbara A sitting bow to stern over Colorado in lane five. And then in fifth place, Santa Barbara B. So again, it is Orange Coast well out in front in that beautiful orange boat. Very easy to see from my vantage point. And they really are doing a nice job settling into their base cadence now and dealing with this wind very nicely. Again, we're seeing a little bit lower stroke ratings here as the water is a bit choppy, not white capped or anything, but it is a little bit rough here at the start. 
And as we get past this first 500, it does start to mellow out a little bit. And Orange Coast, Coxon looking across at the bow ball of the Santa Barbara A boat and asking for open water before that 500. And I think she's gonna get it. So here comes Orange Coast, first across the line at 500 meters gone. They are followed by UC Santa Barbara A, but with University of Calgary, even with Santa Barbara A. Now back to them, it will be Colorado in the fourth place position. They are down about a stern to both Calgary and Santa Barbara A. And then back to Santa Barbara, or excuse me, back to Colorado by about a half a boat length of open water, it will be UC Santa Barbara B. But right now it is all about Orange Coast right up there against the shoreline. I have them clocked at 33 strokes a minute. Again, handling this condition very nicely in terms of a little bit choppier water, but 33 is a pretty aggressive stroke rate in this wind, but they look to be a pretty strong consolidated crew and they are holding their own there with about a half a length of open water over both UC Santa Barbara A and Calgary. Again, that is the real race right here is for that second place position. Cal Calgary and Santa Barbara A really battling back and forth, almost dead even with each other. And it looks like at this point, Calgary may be with a very slight advantage as we head towards 1,000 meters gone. I'm going to give them about a seat over Santa Barbara A. Colorado still in the mix. They are down to Santa Barbara A and Calgary by maybe about seven seats. And then back to them trail in the trailing position will be Santa Barbara B. But we'll turn it over to Patty. We'll see what happens here between Santa Barbara A and Calgary, because that's the real fight right now. Orange Coast doing a good job. They do have to keep their eyes on those two lanes two and three because they're pushing each other so hard that they've taken away a little bit of that lead from Orange Coast. Thank you, Adrian. Yes, sometimes when you have a race in the middle of the field, they bring the race back to the leaders. This is a novice category, collegiate novice. Novices are first year collegiate rowers. So it is possible that they may have rowed as juniors, but they are eligible for collegiate novice and they are the lifeblood of any collegiate program. You need to feed through your program because your seniors graduate and you are constantly building your program. Orange Coast faces a particularly challenging program because they are a two-year junior college, one of the only junior colleges in the country to offer a rowing program, and they have a long tradition. They have been racing crews for as long as I can remember, and I am have been racing since the 70s. So they have a tradition of developing strong crews, racing in novice and varsity programs, even though they may only be eligible for two years, and then they feed the collegiate system. So we have the crews coming from outside past the tent so that we can see them. And as Adrian mentioned, I do believe that Santa Barbara and Calgary are bringing the race back to Orange Coast, but Orange Coast does have the benefit of being closest to the island as they were racing along, so slightly better water. But again, as we look down the field, certainly Santa Barbara and Calgary have brought themselves a little bit closer to the field. But I think that Orange Coast is just about to appear to the finish line. And they are very confident with their stroke rating. Again, you're seeing those sharp ratings. They have lifted to 34, but their blades are going in with a very sharp and aggressive catch. They look very confident as they come into this final sheltered 500 meters. And behind them, we have a ding dong race between Calgary, Colorado, and Santa Barbara A.
All crews are pretty much at rating 33, 34. As they come just in front of the tents, they are likely to step it up. And out there in lane five, Colorado is battling the worst water, but still taking that race back to Calgary and Santa Barbara. And indeed, as we look in lane one, we can see that lane one, Orange Coast has taken their rating up. They've lifted it one beat to 35 and taking it up again for that final sprint home. They are at a 38 and we have almost a blanket here over Calgary, Santa Barbara and Colorado. Colorado getting the worst of the conditions but still punching it through. Yes, and with 36, Calgary stepping it up to 37, pulling out a little bit on Santa Barbara A. A little bit of a shipwreck with Santa Barbara, but got across the line and in comes Colorado. And we have Santa Barbara B again, the future of Santa Barbara rowing is in its novices. So it's pretty amazing and outstanding that they were able to boat two crews here at the Crew Classic. They are stepping their rating up to a 36. This is a brutal regatta for novices. The conditions change throughout the course. They rely a lot on their coxswain to keep them steering straight. If you look down the course, you can see the water changes color, and that is the current and the wind. And Santa Barbara pushing it home in those final few strokes, stepping it up to a 36. Coxswain's running their race plan, prepping as they move into the season. All right, and thank you, Patty. We are already underway in our next event. This is just a two-boat race, really kind of a Henley-style duel between MIT and UC Santa Barbara. This is the Men's Collegiate Lightweight Secretary of the Navy Cup. This is a final only. And already, as we approach 500 meters, it will be MIT with a commanding lead. They have about one length of open water over UC Santa Barbara. And just to review, UC Santa Barbara, a club program with a very storied history of success over these last few years, I would say the last decade, really, really amazing results. They have quite a team and they are doing a great job holding their own against a fully funded varsity program, which is the MIT, MIT engineers. So MIT, a great program. Uh, East Coast, obviously, the last time they raced was at the head of the Charles. So amazing to be able to come out here. Possibly this is their spring break and test themselves on the waters of San Diego. And they're taking full advantage of that here as they continue to pull away from you. Let me get a stroke grading for you. I've got MIT clock 35 and a half strokes a minute. And UC Santa Barbara just a little bit higher at 37, 38. So as the conditions have settled out a little bit here, we definitely have a good cross tailwind going. And the lower stroke rating seems to be working for MIT, they look very clean, excellent blade work. And again, as lightweights, I believe that the weight category is now 165 as the maximum boat weight. So strength to weight ratio is crucial here. MIT now approaching 1,000 meters to go. Back to them by about, I would say, three lengths of open water. UC Santa Barbara continues. To, again, they're rowing very cleanly, just not quite able to keep pace with the engineers. Halfway through, this is the men's collegiate lightweight secretary of the Navy Cup. This is a fine.
And we have the crews just coming in to the final third of the, of the race. And indeed, MIT is controlling the race from that inside lane. Often crews will race for the lane. Inside lane number one is slightly more sheltered than the others, but MIT is taking full advantage of that. You can see the coxswain leaning into it and calling his crew up. They are now rating a 36 and a half, and every opportunity, rowers train hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours for basically a seven minute race, four or five times down the, through the year, and you have to take every opportunity to rehearse your race plan and make it strongest ever. And the MIT coxswain is driving the crew home. They are now at a 40 in these conditions and kicking the boat home. We have Santa Barbara coming through in lane two, not handling the conditions quite as comfortably as MIT did. This is the first time and probably the last time these crews will face each other. MIT will finish or move through their season to the Eastern Sprints, whereas Santa Barbara will be heading up to the Western Intercollegiate Rowing Association Championships. They will then move on to the American Collegiate Rowing Championships, where MIT will hope to qualify for the IRAs. And we have Santa Barbara stepping their rating up to a 35. Again, in rowing, every stroke counts. And this coxswain is taking full advantage of driving her crew in. Okay, and we are back already underway in a really exciting race here for the Women's Youth Eight. This is a trophy event for the Gilman Mulliken Cup. Um, I'm sorry, this is, excuse me, this is a second level final. We'll come up with a, uh, the final number one in the next event, but nonetheless, a great amount of excitement off of the start in this race. We've got six boats on the course with Lane One Long Beach Junior Crew Lane two, NorCal. Lane three, Marina Aquatic Center. Lane four, Dallas United. Lane five, Pacific Rowing Club. And lane six, Sammamish. And with a really hot start jumping out of the gate, it is Marina Aquatic Center as your leader. They're sitting with a four seat advantage over NorCal crew. NorCal looking strong, but being paced by Sammamish on one of the outer lanes here, lane six. So NorCal in the second place position, but looking to hold off Sammamish as we approach 500 meters. Now back to them, it will be Pacific in the fourth place spot. So Pacific sitting down to Sammamish by about three seats. In fifth, it will be Dallas United out of lane four. And then in the final position, Long Beach Junior Crew in six. So they are up against the shoreline. Great racing here from the Marina Aquatic Center. These ladies practicing on Marina Del Rey, a wonderful place to row, getting in lots and lots of long rows. And you can see that as a testament to their fitness, showing that that high aggressive stroke rating is working for them as they try desperately to hold hold off NorCal crew. NorCal taking a really big leap here just past the 500. I think that coxswain must have called for a power 10 because they are attempting to pull even with Marina to take over for that lead. Also looking aggressive on the outside, Sammamish. So a lot of overlap here between the top three boats, Marina Aquatic Center, NorCal, and Sammamish, and also Pacific. Pacific still in the mix. Pacific still in contact with Sammamish. Pacific in fourth, they're holding off Dallas United, and then Long Beach just a little bit off the pace along the shoreline. But the real race here is for that first or second place position between Marina and NorCal, 
And my vantage point right now, it's going to be NorCal taking over as the lead. NorCal really just kind of every stroke taking a seat away from Marina as they approach the halfway point. Coxon looking across at NorCal boat. She doesn't want them to get any further away, so she's driving their crew as they come across the halfway point. Let's keep our stroke rating aggressive. Let's keep the chins up. We are going to keep a challenge here to NorCal. At the halfway point, NorCal, your leader by now seven seats over Marina. Sammamish in third. Dallas United in fourth. Excuse me, Pacific in fourth. Dallas United in fifth. And then Long Beach Juniors continuing in sixth. We can just start to see some of the crews here from the finish line coming into that third 500. And you can see from the way the water changes color that the wind is pretty squirrely through there. And it's a charge through. This is the part of the race where the lactates start to interfere with your function, your muscle function. And it's really mind over matter. The coxswains will be working on driving their crews through that. They train to row hard with a lactate overload and they will move it through and then of course when you get into that last 500 just emotion takes over and you drive it home so you will be asking your crew to trust the training trust their teammates and trust your ability to push through and just maintain what you do in training every day this is the second final but we are seeing some outstanding rowing and racing here and based on the fact that the crews were seated on their finishes yesterday, you can see that crews have taken that experience and stepped up to bring and increase their game when they come into this race. So as Adrian mentioned, NorCal moved through and they are looking very authoritative. They have taken charge of this race. They are rating a 36 and their blade work just looks aggressive and awesome. Right next to them, Marina, who had the early lead, is still working hard, still working. Their coxswain is working back, trying to work back and hold off challenges next to them from Dallas and Sammamish. And they are coming home into that final 400 meters. The coxswain will be calling it up. They will be calling on that ATP PC that regenerates. Somehow at the end, you can always sprint, no matter how hard you work. And the coxswain's calling for it. They have lifted a rating to 39, and they are inching out on the field. Next to them, Marina is still working back on them. They are bringing the race back to NorCal. And on the very outside, Sammamish is handling that rough water. The waves get bigger the further you get from shore. And there goes NorCal locking it in, rowing beautifully together and punching it right through the finish line out of 41. And Marina holding off the challenges from Dallas United and Sammamish and Long Beach has brought the race back. They are putting a challenge into Pacific as they bring it through. These crews are racing every stroke of the way. It is so exciting to see. Adrian, we had a very exciting finish here. I'm gonna pass it back to you for the A final of the Women's Youth Gilman Milliken Cup. And thank you, Maddie. And we have had a start here in the grand final for the Women's Youth Gilliman Mulliken Cup. We've got six boats on the course. Lane one, Connecticut. Lane two, Marin. Lane three, Newport. Lane four, San Diego Rowing Club. Lane five, Capital. 
in lane six, Sagat Puck. And your early leader, just past 250 meters, will be Marin out of lane two. So Marin already five seats over the rest of the field. Lots of overlap between all the crews. So no one's really jumped out way, way ahead except for Marin. So Marin making a statement well before the first 500, making sure that they it is known that they are a dominant crew in this event. So this is the women's youth eight. Again, the likely top eight athletes plus Coxon in their program and Marin man before the 500 already now with open water over the rest of the field now back to them by about one seat of open water late three new position and then really really close between the four other crews but in third I'm going to give that to capital now capital sitting about five seats behind Newbert Capital in third, have two seats over both San Diego and Saugatuck. Saugatuck rowing on the outside lane six, but holding tight. And all the way against shoreline, it is Connecticut. So Connecticut in that sixth place position. But again, lots of overlap, lots of time left in this race. So really anything can happen. That first 500, there's a lot of adrenaline, there's a lot of excitement, stroke readings are high, but as we settle into the body of the race, this is where we're really where we see the technique and the fitness all come together. And as we know, Marin really a program where they know how to put all the pieces together at the right time. And they're showing that here as they are about a length of open water over the rest of the field. What a privilege to be able to look down the race course and see that advantage. And they're definitely not gonna stop. They are not complacent, they're gonna continue to open up water and test themselves maybe almost like a little bit of a time trial here as they continue to walk away from the rest of the field so in that second place position it continues to be newport newport also pushing themselves away from the boat seats over sogtuck sogatuck two seats over san diego rowing club and then on the outside, Connecticut continuing in sixth, two seats down from San Diego. All right, all crews approaching 1,000 meters. And again, placement right now, mostly out in front, Newport in second, but the tight race, right, is between Saugatuck, San Diego, and Connecticut. Patty? Thank you, Adrian. These crews qualified through three heats to make it into this final. So lanes one, two, and three won their heats yesterday. Five, four, five, and six came in second, but they are racing with incredible poise as they come down the course. These conditions, these side conditions, even though it's a slight tail, are the most awkward because the boat will twist underneath you. It'll corkscrew. So you cannot anticipate where exactly the boat will be when you get to the catch. So you have to be relaxed, but stay together with your team and make sure you're locked on and ready to use the legs and the body. If you get in together, the boat will balance out as you suspend it between the blades but it's that tricky thing of getting the blades in together, even if your boat suddenly lurches off the side. And as they come into that final 700 meters, we're able to see them and we get a good look at from the finish line of Newport and Newport, stretching out the field, but the race, there is a race through the middle body of the field where crews are just not giving up. They are executing their race plan. And I'm just going to get a stroke rating for you here from Marin because again, we can see their blade work from here. They're confident, they're at a 36, they're in the roughest part of the course right now. And you would not know it looking at them. If anything, they may have just taken it up a beat just to show the water who's who. And right behind them on their tail, not giving them any respite at all, is Newport. They have stepped their rating up to a 38. And on the outside, we have Capital and Saugatuck in quite a battle. 
They are bringing the race back to second place. They're fighting it out for third and fourth. But right now, Marin is dominating the race and they are doing it with poise and confidence as they move into that final 400 meters with fantastic water, relatively speaking. But they look fantastic at a 38. And we have Newport stepping up their rating. They are working to move out on three and four, which is Capital and Sagatuck. They don't want to give them an opportunity as they move into that final 250. But Marin stretching out, but still accelerating the boat to 39 strokes a minute. And we have Newport holding up the challenge from Capital out there in lane five, Sagatuck. And on the inside, we have Connecticut battling back. They are rowing through San Diego. We have quite a race here for fifth and sixth, but Connecticut is pushing through. And we see over there on the outside that Capital has moved through and held off the challenge from Sagatuck, and Connecticut was able to move through the field and just inch past San Diego as they came through. What a group of outstanding and poised racers. Adrian, I'm going to pass it back to you at the start. So I'm not sure if we've had a sound issue down there, but we do have a start in the Men's Youth San Diego Rowing Cup Final Two. These are crews that finished third and fourth in their qualifying heat. And in lane one, we have OARS, so Olympia Area Rowing. Lane two, Long Beach Junior Crew. Lane three, Capital. Lane four, Dallas United. Lane five, Marina Aquatic Center. And lane six, Pacific.
If you were anywhere near the screens, you should see the crews coming through the 1,000 meter right now. Our view here from the finish line is blocked a little bit, but we should see the crews coming through in just a few minutes. They are approaching that 500 meter water thing where the wind and the tide come through the bridges. The tide is still going out, so they're rowing against the tide and with this choppy crosswind. What I could see from the distance was that the crews seem to be handling it quite well with high ratings, and we are just looking to see them come through to see where the placements are. So we've had crews come in from quite a distance. Olympia Rowing is coming from the Seattle area. Long Beach, just up the road. Capital Crew from Sacramento. Dallas United here from a big Texas contingent. Uh, Marina Aquatic Center up in the LA area and Civic Rowing from the Bay area. And we were just starting to see some crews. As we look down, we can see that the outside lane it appears that Pacific may have dropped back a bit, the, but the crews in the middle lanes are coming through where we can take a look at them. I can certainly get a stroke rating here. Okay, nearly all of the crews are at 33, 34 strokes a minute. I can see the boats rolling a little bit as they come through. And on the inside, I can see five of the crews. On the inside, we have Long Beach crew appears to be up on lanes three, four, five, and six. However, on the inside lane, we have Olympia rowing has pulled out to open water over Long Beach. They are just rowing into that better water right now and they seem to be rowing at a slightly higher rating than the other crews. And I just saw their crew pick up a beat. So they have stepped up from 35 to about 38 just to power through those wind gusts that they're getting. And we have a race here between Long Beach and lane two and Marina Aquatic Center out there in lane five. And if you watch the Aquatic Center boat, you will see it roll a little bit. That is not the rowers, that is the conditions. The rowers are handling those conditions really well, quite relaxed, but again, on the inside, as they hit that better water, Oars is stepping it up, Olympia taking it home. And we have quite a battle here between lane two and lane five. Long Beach having slightly better water, but moved. It appears that Long Beach may have moved out of their lane. They appear to be rowing in the washes of the Olympia crew, but they are pushing it through. It is quite a ding dong race here between Marina and Long Beach. Marina might just have the edge on them as they move through and pushing hard from the inside is Dallas and Capital. So Capital pipping Dallas as they come through and moving into their final strokes, picking it up. We have Pacifica lifting their rating to 38 to take the boat home through the finish line. The next race up will be the A final. So places one through six for the men's youth, and we will hope that Adrian is able to get mic'd up again.
All right, hopefully you guys can hear me out here. We are awaiting the start for the men's Youth 8. Yep, this yep, is yep, the yep. grand final for the San Diego Rowing Cup. In lane one, Sagatuck. Lane two, Marin. Lane three, New Aquatic Center. Lane four, San Diego Rowing Club. Lane five, NorCal Crew. And lane six, Maritime. So Coxon's making the final adjustment here. And conditions actually seem to have calmed just a bit up here at the start. It's actually quite pleasant. There's still that little bit of a tailwind, uh, but it does seem to have calmed a bit, which is nice, especially for the starting officials. They want to have a fair and safe race. So crews are being pulled, and we will have a start imminently. All right, and we're just past the breakage point here in the men's youth eight, the San Diego Rowing Cup trophy and putting their nose out in front very early on will be lane three Newport. So Newport with a really hot start. They are sitting with about one seat over lane four San Diego Rowing Club in the third place position. We Move inside to Marin, Marin rowing out of lane two and then along the shoreline Sagatuck. So those are your top four boats. Back to these crews, but still, again, a lot of overlap. So we have, you know, no one that's out in front yet. There's a lot of overlap between crews, but currently in that fifth place position, it is NorCal, NorCal in lane five. And then in the sixth place spot, it will be Maritime. Newport doing a great job here as we approach 500 meters gone. They have four seats over Marin. So Marin pushing themselves into that second place position. Marin sitting three seats over NorCal. So NorCal very close to Sagatuck. Too close for me to call for who's occupying that third place position. Marin definitely in second, but really tight here between Sagatuck and NorCal. San Diego Rowing Club slipping back us by about one seat there in fourth, but they are sitting bow to stern over Mar Maritime. For it, very aggressive, strong. I have them clocked at 36 strokes a minute. Now with seven seats over Marin. Really great race here developing between Marin and Sagatuck. So Sagatuck solidly in third. They have pulled themselves a little bit farther away from NorCal. So NorCal slipping back to fourth, but also looking at a really great race here between San Diego. So NorCal and San Diego almost even with each other for fourth. Continuing in six, just a little bit off the pace here, back by open water. Port extending their lead out about a stern over is boat race here between Marin and Sagatuck for that second or third place position. Marin prevailing at this point at the halfway point, sitting two seats. That's where it really comes into display. So let's see who can put all the pieces together as we head into the last half of this race. It is dead even. Position the lead NorCal in fourth, San Diego in fifth, Maritime in So crews are just coming into view here, and we have kind of an East Coast versus West Coast. We have Sagatuck and Maritime from the East Coast. They've traveled across the country, whereas I believe they race out of the same state. They're all from Connecticut. And then we have California racing against Connecticut. So out there in lane six, we have Maritime Rowing Club, followed by NorCal. NorCal has a lead on Maritime. 
and looks like they are just inching out over San Diego Rowing Club. On the inside, we have, of course, the battle between Newport in lane three, Marin in lane two, and Sagatuck in lane one. And they're all just coming into view from the finish line. Checking the rating on Newport, it is a rating, have rating to 39, and they are going after lane one in Sagatuck, who has moved out. They are at a 41, they are responding. And in lane two, we have Marin, who are the early leaders, and they are rating closer to a 38, but we have two crews attacking it, and Marin is coming back. They are working their way back, but there is a ding-dong race here between lane one and lane three at Newport. You can see the coxswains even from here. I can see the coxswains looking through both crews at 39. I believe that Newport has just lifted it to a 41. And it's hard to see with the parallax here, but they look dead on. They are right next to each other, stroke for stroke. Both crews. Both crews taking it up. Newport has pressed the rating up again. They're at a 40. Sagatuck on the inside is at a 43. But Newport has pressed past Sagatuck. And then we have a race for third and fourth here. Marin has pushed through to hold on to third in front of NorCal. San Diego Rowing Club pushing in ahead of Maritime. And what a race. All crews putting everything into that final bet. Um, Adrian, I'm going to pass it back to you for the start of the next race. Well, thank you, and uh, we are awaiting the start of the B-level final for the women's under 17-8. This is the Referee Cup LA84 Foundation. In lane one, White Rock Rowing. Lane two, Marina Aquatic Center. Lane three, Austin. Lane four, St. Ignatius. Lane five, Dallas United. And lane six, Casitas Rowing. Boats are still tapping their, their uh, boats into position, making sure they have a good point. A um, little bit of wind out here, but again, it's calmed very much from uh, when we first came out about an hour ago. So not as challenging of conditions. And the crews are just about to be pulled and take off. We'll come back after we have a start. Crews have been sitting for a little bit longer than it would look like uh, is necessary. And what that, what has happened is that some of their bows have come just slightly out of alignment. So Coxon's making last minute adjustments, making sure that their bows are pointed so that they are in favor of the wind and still awaiting to be pulled.
All right, and the crews are finally being pulled. Again, their officials were helping with some of the alignment here as the bow seat will, bow and two seats will help to slow the boat around and place that bow in exactly the position that they want so that they've got a fair and straight start. And here they go, they are off and we'll be back at just past the breakage point. All right, and generally I want to uh, wait to start with the commentating on a race until we get past that breakage point, which is usually about the first 15 or so strokes, just in case there was any sort of problem and we needed to call the race back. But it looks like we've had a fair start and quick out of the blocks, it's going to be lane two Marina Aquatic Center. So they have really had quite a good start here. They were had a lot of adrenaline and they have jumped out to a four seat lead over the rest of the field. Lots of overlap between both, but they're sitting four seats over Austin Rowing Center. Austin is look to, looking to have borrowed a boat from Newport Aquatic Center. I can see that big NAC logo on the bow, but they're doing a great job and sitting in second place by about two seats over White Rock Rowing. So White Rock in third, in the fourth place position, we'll move over to lane four. That's St. Ignatius. St. Ignatius rose on Lake Merced in San Francisco. Uh, yesterday, I pointed out that they are a scholastic program. They really only row one season out of the year and take advantage of the many athletes they have at their school. So St. Ignatius here, probably with one of the first races of the season for them. They are sitting in fourth with four seats over Dallas United and then Casitas. So Dallas United and Casitas dead even for that fifth or sixth place position. And now all boats past 500 meters. And we do have a new leader. That will be Austin. Austin in lane three. They are sitting with three seats now over Marina Aquatic Center. So Marina in second. They are holding off White Rock. White Rock against the shoreline. Coxon looking across in the White Rock boat, asking for the bow ball of the St. Ignatius boat. So White Rock solidly in third. They have a bow to stern advantage over St. Ignatius. St. Ignatius with four seats over now Casitas. So Casitas pushing themselves into fifth by about one seat over Dallas United. Dallas United in sixth. But great racing here up front. It's Austin that pulled themselves now to a full length advantage over Marina Aquatic Center and Marina now with one seat over White Rock. Really have almost two separate races here as the ladies up front, Austin Marina Aquatic Center and White Rock separate themselves a little bit further from the rest of the field. Behind them now by a bit of open water continues to be St. Ignatius, Casitas, and Dallas United. So kind of two races developing and almost really dead even right now between St. Ignatius, Casitas, and Dallas United. I'm gonna give that slight advantage for fourth place to Casitas Rowing on the outside lane six. And all crews now approaching 1,000 meters. It will be Austin with their bow first across that marker. They are looking at about a seat of open water now over Marina Aquatic Center. Marina is still holding tight to one seat lead over White Rock. So White Rock sitting in third, but looking at a really excellent charge here. Casitas in the outside lane. Casitas still in fourth, but looking to come back up and maybe take a little bit of that lead away from White Rock. In fourth, it will be St. Ignatius. Excuse me, in fifth it will be St. Ignatius, and then back to them by about five seats, Dallas United occupying the sixth place position. Patty, we'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Adrian. I'm glad to hear that conditions are better down at the start. Up here in the finish line, we are seeing very gusty winds. You can see the flags snapping along the course and above the tents. And you can see the water gusting, the wind gusting across the water with those little darker bits that are available. <clears throat> These crews qualified for the second final, so they have already experienced the conditions here. And looking at the blade work and the crews, 
They appear to be handling them with great poise. I'm checking ratings as crews start to appear from outside. I can see Casitas putting a push on against the crews on the inside. They are at a 36. And as the crews from Austin, Marina, and White Rock come into view, we can see that they too are attacking their race, lifting their ratings to push through this third 500. 34 for Austin, Marina Aquatic Center at 33 and a half, and we're about to see White Rock coming in. This is quite a battle between California and Texas, with Dallas, Austin, and White Rock making the trip here, and St. Ignatius, Marina, and Casitas, which was the site of the 1984 Olympics, making the trip down to San Diego. So we have Austin stepping up the rating as they close in with 600 meters to go. And their boat is moving around a little bit underneath them. There are two power phases in rowing. There's one where you are propelling the boat by locking it in and prying against the water. The second one is when your crew moves forward, you outweigh the boat and you can send it out. So free speed, if you can work together well on the recovery. And we have Austin demonstrating that beautifully. They are at a 36 as they move into that final 500. And we have quite a race here again between lane one, lane two, quite fiercely. I would say that White Rock looks a little calmer at a 37. They seem quite poised and very determined as they lift their rating to a 38. Trudard pushed their bow past Marina Aquatic Center on their inside. Their coxswains periodically checking over their shoulder. White Rock pushing out to a slight lead on them. But on the outside, we have Casitas stepping it up and digging in. They are really putting some power against their blades. They are at a 37 and they are moving back on Marina. White Rock has opened up a couple of seats as Austin finishes the race out. We have White Rock pushing in and Casitas has brought themselves back to overlapping with Marina but ran out of space to catch them. And on the inside we have St. Ignatius and Dallas finishing out what was a very competitive race all the way down between all of the crews. There was someone for everyone to push and Casitas brought that entire field back to the leaders. Well done. Adrian, I'm going to pass it off to you for the final of the Women's Under-17 Referee Cup. And while we're waiting for Adrian, I'd just like to point out that under 17 means that these rowers are 16 or younger. And that was some very mature racing in these conditions. It's very exciting to see this, the beginning of the season and interstate competition between California, Dallas, Connecticut, Seattle. Awesome racing. And thank you, Patty, for that commentary on that exciting race. That was just the B-level final. Because right now we're moving into the grand final for the women's under-17 referee cup. We've got six boats on the course in lane one, Capital Crew. Lane two, Long Junior Crew. Lane three, Newport Aquatic Center. Lane four, Marin Rowing Association. Lane five, Pacific Rowing Club and lane six, NorCal crew. So here we go, it's an all California battle, NorCal versus South, <laughs> Southern California. And right now it is the ladies from Lake Natoma Capital Crew with their bow out in front, just shy of the 500 meter line. We've got a seven seat advantage already from Capital. So Capital pulling themselves up well ahead of the rest of the field, which is very much overlapped at this point. 
But in that second place position, I'm going to give a advantage to lane five, Pacific. So Pacific right now in the second place spot, but just by maybe half of a seat over lane two, Long Beach Juniors. Long Beach Juniors being paced closely by Newport. Newport sitting dead even with lane six, NorCal. So again, a lot will change at that 500 meter mark. A lot will change by the thousand meter line. But right now, that's how I see it. And it is capital already open water. And Capital is first at that 500 meter marker. They're rowing at 36 strokes a minute. Now a little bit of a change up here. We see Long Beach Juniors in the second place position. They have about two seats over both NorCal and Pacific as well as Newport. I mean, just too close to call between Newport, Pacific and NorCal. Marin has fallen a little bit off the pace. They are now down the front pack quite able to keep pace with the rest of the field. And now I'm looking at four boats straight across, Long Beach Juniors, Newport, Pacific, NorCal. It's just whose blades are in the water. I can't tell who has the lead at this point. Turning our attention back to the leader, Capital, just walking away. So they have now about a half a length of open water over the rest of the field. And now here we go. It's a little bit of a jump from lane two, Long Beach Juniors. Long Beach Juniors sitting now with two seats over the remaining crews. And in the third place spot, still really tight here between NorCal, Pacific, Newport. I'm gonna give the advantage of the third place position to Pacific maybe by a bow ball. And we've got to watch the steering here. Again, challenging conditions, but the referees are giving some corrections to lanes five and six. That's Pacific and NorCal. A little bit of interference there between those two crews, but they're back in their lanes and progressing. advantage and come up to solidify a second place position. Looking at Long Beach as well along the shoreline for that third place. The San Diego Crew Classic would like to thank Camplin on the Bay for making this weekend's broadcast possible. We are beginning to see the crews emerge into that last 750 we can see them come behind the trees and i can see what adrian was talking about there is a very tight race between lane six five and four so norcal pacifica and marin we are waiting to be able to see the two inside crews uh capital and long beach so we have i misspoke there we have newport Pacific and NorCal overlapping each other, pushing back. It looks like Long Beach may have pulled out and put their nose out in front of the other crews and they're going after Capital, but Capital still appears to have a solid lead over Long Beach and the rest of the field. And they are very comfortable. They've dropped their rating down to a 34 from that earlier 36, but Long Beach is attacking them. They are rating a 36, trying to come back against them and pushing them on the inside with what appears to be a blanket for third place is Newport, Pacific, 
and NorCal. Marin, very strong program. They are attacking, trying to pull back on the field, but we have a very fierce race. Oh, a little bit of a shipwreck there in lane five. They are recovering now. Pacific had a little bit of a bobble and they are attacking again, but that has given NorCal new spirit and they are attacking. They have lifted their rating to a 36. And on the inside, Long Beach is coming back hard against Capital. Capital holding them off at a 35. I can see the coxswain checking over her shoulder and calling for more, but Long Beach fiercely going after them, almost steering into their lane as they come through, and they have lifted their rating to a 40. Cal Capital is holding on, digging in. They've held their rating at a 38. And on the outside, we have NorCal racing against Newport, and it's very close, almost too close to call. Newport coming through very tight, and Pacifica recovering from their little bobble in that final 250. Conditions very tough here. You can see they're gusting from the wind. And we have Marin coming through representing Marin County and Northern California. Again, it's so impressive. These rowers are 16 and under and they are, it's astonishing this early in the season. They would have just recently started their speed work and they are just nailing it here in the final 500. Adrian, back to you. Well, thank you, uh, Patty. We have already had a start here in the men's under 17 cup. This is the final B or final number two. We've got four boats on the course. In lane one, it's Dallas United. Lane two, Cathedral Catholic High School. Lane three, Casitas Rowing. And lane four, Marina Aquatic Center. So Marina Aquatic Center, I will say just out of the gates, having a little bit of a problem with their steering in lane four. They are actually coming off of the course right now. So we wanna encourage the, the coxswain to try and <laughs> get back into her lane because they actually are doing quite well in terms of their proximity to the other crews. But turning our attention back to lanes one, two, and three, leader right now will be Dallas United along the shoreline. They're followed by Cathedral Catholic High School. Cathedral Catholic in second. They are bow to stern over Casitas Rowing in lane three. All right, a little bit of help from the referees for Marina Aquatic Center. We'll see if they can, they might be having some sort of a problem with their steering mechanism, uh, which is unfortunate for these young gentlemen. Um, they are rowing quite well and actually sticking with the pack, but very far off course. So we'll see how this progresses as they head towards the halfway point. But up in front, Dallas United, they're continuing in that first place position. They are sitting with maybe seven seats now over Cathedral Catholic High School. Cathedral Catholic, a high school program, a scholastic program, uh, quite a large school. They have a decent pool to draw from there, but still a little different than a club program where you know, you've know you got what you've got. You've got a lot of other athletes doing different sports, but Cathedral Catholic really just capitalizing on the good athletes they have at that school and drawing in some really amazing performances with a young program. Now back to them by about a half a length of open water continues to be Casitas rowing. And again, as Patty had pointed out, the under 17 uh, age grouping, really quite uh, amazing to see the depth of some of these programs being able to draw their young athletes in and give them high level competitive experience. So here we are at the half point, Dallas United continuing as your leader, followed by Cathedral Catholic, and then Casitas with Marina trying to get back onto the race course and back into the petition. Again, rowing well, but seem to have some sort of a steering issue going on.
crews are just starting to come into view and we can see Adrian is saying Marina Aquatic Center, which started in lane four, is struggling to stay on course. They obviously have some sort of equipment malfunction. They are still rowing quite well. You can see blade catches and they are in touch with the field, but they have rowed across four lanes and back. They are rowing a much longer course than the rest of the crews. Obviously, the fastest, shortest course is a straight line between two points, but we can see their coxswain aiming back onto the course. The, um, and they are handling this with great poise, but having to row perhaps twice as far as some of the other crews in this early race. And the field is coming back in and they are astonishingly still in touch with the field. So we have an official working with them. Obviously they're overcoming some issues. On the inside though, we have Dallas United working hard to hold off a local crew from Cathedral Catholic, again, a scholastic crew. They have a great group of athletes to pull from, but a smaller pool than perhaps a citywide program like Dallas. But Dallas rowing with great poise for the under 17s, handling these gusty conditions quite well. They row on a small lake in Dallas, and they are handling this big open water remarkably well. Great young gentlemen, <clears throat> and they are out in field. They have a commanding lead, very comfortable in the last 250, rowing with 250 meters to go, unless something, there's a shipwreck, even though Cathedral Catholic is pushing back against them they've got the race they can see the other crew and control it cox and occasionally checking back but basically driving his crew home at a nice steady strong 36. and all stepping it up you can see their determination as they put those blades in and push the boats home but dallas just walking into the finish line with tremendous poise and cathedral attacking that race moving out on Casitas. Casitas holding off a very determined Marina who has managed to get back on course, get their course straight. The coxswain has managed to adapt to whatever issues they had, but very competitive. All crews coming in, 36. And Casitas stepping it up just a little bit, that last 20, pushing through to the finish line and Marina overcoming their issues with steering, coming through in lane seven as they finish it out. Well done, well done, Coxon. Adrian, we are ready for the final. I believe the crews are lining up or on their way. And true, Patty, they are on their way. They are past the breakage point. We've got six crews on the water here. The men's under 17 Shimano Rowing Dynamics Cup. This is the grand final. These crews having progressed from heats earlier in this regatta. In lane one, Newport Aquatic Center. Lane two, Marin Rowing Association A. Lane three, Marin B. Lane four, Long Beach Junior Crew. Lane five, NorCal and lane six, San Diego Rowing Club. So we've got three crews from Northern California, three crews from Southern California, but it is lane one Newport with their bow ball out in front as we approach 500 meters on, but not by much. So right now Newport with the lead sitting maybe one seat over Marin A, but even as I say that, I'm gonna now give that advantage just barely over to Marin A for that lead position. So bow balls coming across 500 meters right here. Now back to Marin and new place position. It's gonna be lane four, Long Beach Juniors. They are sitting with a six seat advantage over Marin B, Marin B in fourth. And they have about six seats over lane six, San Diego Owen Club. So San Diego in fifth. They have about a stern advantage over our sixth place crew, NorCal.
So I wanted to get some stroke readings for you. Marin, with a lot of power and really excellent blade work here, they are rowing at a, what I would say is a conservative 33 strokes a minute, but it is really working for them because they continue to tap their bow a little bit farther away from the rest of the field. Now along the shoreline, Newport rowing at 37. They're still holding on to that second place position, but seeing a really strong challenge now from Long Beach in lane four. Long Beach maybe a half a seat over Marin B. So excellent racing developing between lanes one, Newport, Marin B, Long Beach Juniors for that second, third, fourth place position. And this is the kind of racing that we like to see here at the Crew Classic, this early season racing where these gentlemen can really pit their fitness, their technique, and their race execution at the highest level. In fifth place, it continues to be San Diego Rowing Club out of lane six. They're kind of by themselves there. They have a little bit of open water on either side of the boat. And then back to them by maybe about two seats of open water, it will be NorCal continuing in sixth. All crews now coming across 1,000 meters but Marin A now opening up open water over the rest of the field. Newport continuing in second. And crews are starting to come into view. And as Adrian said, you know, they are working on their fitness, using their fitness and their race execution. Rowing like no other sport I know has to deal with a moving dynamic environment. In basketball, the floor is not moving underneath you. People are not trying to blow you over as you come down the, the court to shoot a basket, although people might. But in rowing, you're dealing with a boat that's moving around on a moving environment, and you're in tandem with eight other people in the boat. Foxen is giving them focal points. Everyone there is in their own head, but also trying to channel the rest of their teammates as they come down the course. And these are particularly challenging conditions for this early in the season. And we are seeing some great racing and some great ratings this early in the season. So very exciting. And we do see that as they're all, as the entire field comes through, that Marin has a solid lead over lanes three, four, five, and six. And I'm waiting for lane one, Newport, to come into view. And you can see the boat moving around a little bit underneath Marin, but they are holding at a solid rating of 34, 35. And Newport is trying to bring the race back to them. We can see very sharp, very catches on their behalf, and they have lifted the rating. They're rowing a higher rating than, than Marin, but Marin A looks very confident, and they can see Newport behind them. I think the coxswain has called it up for Newport. And then over in lanes three and four, Long Beach and Marin B are having an extraordinary race. They are stroke for stroke. Their ratings are together. I'm getting very high ratings. I'm having to check them to make sure because I see Long Beach at 41. The next to them, Marin B rowing a little bit lower at 37. One of them trying to get their nose out. We have Marin A moving out with great confidence. Marin B and Long Beach have brought the race back to Newport. Newport is having to put an effort in to keep their bow in front in second place. And Long Beach trying to push through Marin B. Marin A coming to the line and Newport moving away, digging in and moving away from that challenge thrown out by Long Beach. Long Beach and Marin B still battling it out, but Long Beach has put their nose out in front. Marin pushing them all the way. And on the outside, San Diego Rowing Club has moved out on NorCal Crew. Again, the Coxons executing the plan as they come in. They have just a few more races before their end of season. And we've seen some outstanding racing in this final. And I'm going to pass it through to you, Adrian, for the women's race. All right, thank you so much, Patty. 
Right now we're looking at the final B or uh, B level final for the women's youth B Zlack Rowing Club Cup. So youth B would be an open age category for juniors. They could be anywhere between 19 and 13 years old. Um, so open to anyone in the club, but more traditionally, I would say this is more like a junior varsity eight. Um, so we've gone away from varsity and junior varsity, and we're now going with the age categories. So here we are at the start for the women's youth B. In lane one, Newport B. Lane two, Sammamish. Lane three, Marina Aquatic Center. Lane four, River City. Lane five, Pacific. Lane six, St. Ignatius. And lane seven, Long Beach Junior Crew. And boats now out of the starting blocks. With seven boats across the course. There is certainly a lot of excitement here. This is the blind fury of a junior start. There is a lot of whitewash happening, a lot of very, very high stroke rates that we see out of here as they try to tap their boat up to speed, gain that race momentum, and then come down into their base race cadence that they'll keep for the entire body of the piece until the final 300 to 250 meters where they take it back up again for that sprint. So sprint at the beginning, sprint at the end, but don't put it all out on the line at the very beginning because you've got a long way to go. And right now, St. Ignatius really taking a risk here and putting their bow in front early on. So St. Ignatius rowing out of lane six. They are your early leaders, but very close to them in terms of proximity is gonna be Marina Aquatic Center in lane three. So with seven boats on the course, these coxswains really have to be savvy because there's a lot of action going on. There's a lot of noise, there's a lot of splashing. Steering can sometimes be difficult, so they've really got to keep eyes all over with these crews, especially the ones in the middle, right? So Marina Aquatic Center looking across at St. Ignatius. They had that hot start, but now Marina has taken over for the lead. Marina sitting with maybe one seat over both St. Ignatius and then Newport B. So Newport B looking really strong here with a second to third place position, kind of too hard to call right now from my viewpoint. And then Sammamish, Sammamish in lane two, they're also in the mix. So right now as we come up, as we come up to the not quite the halfway point, we're looking at four boats that are kind of interchanging the lead. So I'm gonna go back and recalibrate here. It looks now as if a lane one, Newport B, is gonna be your leader. So everything is shaken out. These ladies are down into their base rate, into their base cadence. And lane one B is your leader. They're followed by Marina Aquatic Center in lane three. And now Sammamish and St. Ignatius, too close to call for that third place position. Now, back to them. For the Again, lots of overlap still, and we're not quite at the halfway point. So as we progress down the race course, there is certain to be a little bit more separation between crews, but really exciting racing here from this youth B category. We've got a lot of overlap in the four boats up in front, Newport B and Marina Aquatic Center trading back and forth for that lead. And I'm gonna go back with Marina for the lead position. As we come up to the halfway point, Marina Aquatic Center, your leader here by about two seats over Newport. Newport and Sammamish quite close to each other. I'm gonna give the advantage right now to Newport B for that second place position, followed by Sammamish and then St. Ignatius. Again, in fifth place, we move back to the inside. That's River City. They're followed by Pacific and then Long Beach Junior Crew for the seventh place position. I'll turn it over to Patty. Patty, you might want to give it a big breath to see if we can shake it out and get a little bit more separation between these crews. Seven boats on the course. There's a lot of action happening. Thanks,
And coming into this second half, we're actually going to get a little bit more wind. Uh, the coxswains are going to start to feel that crosswind push. So we'll see what they decide to do as they come into that last little stretch, managing their crews on the choppy water here. And it we do this racing here. Now, a lot of these crews have a history of being pretty quick. So races like this end up being pretty exciting as we start to come into the last 500. Looks like we have St. Ignatius kind of making a big push here. We have a couple out in front, maybe Marina Aquatic Center and St. Ignatius leading the group. Newport B, a little bit close to the shore here coming in. They're going to feel a little bit of push of that wind and maybe a little pressure to start moving in on Marina and St. Ignatius, who looks pretty good in that outside lane coming into this last 250. And on the outside, we have Long Beach Junior Crew, which can be a difficult lane out here with the wind. So it looks like they're managing it pretty well and staying in the race here. Lane two, Sammamish definitely making a push on Newport B. We have a very close race here along the shore. Newport B starting to bring the raid up a little bit and really starting to push Marina there. This is getting exciting now. Also coming in on the outside is St. Ignatius still hanging on. And this is gonna be a tight race. Lane one, Newport Beach pushing. <laughs> Looks like I have another close race here for sixth and seventh, very close. All right, and we'll turn our attention back to the start for the grand final of the Women's Youth B Zlack Rowing Club Cup. We've got seven boats again on the course. In lane one, Newport. Lane two, Marin A. Lane three, Capital Crew. Lane four, Sagatuck. Lane five, Marin B. Lane six, NorCal Crew. And lane seven, San Diego Rowing Club. All crews have gotten off to a clean start. Not much separation here between boats, so we'll give it just a few minutes, get our bearings, 
and see who's going to take this grand final for the women's youth B8. Well, that didn't take that long. Your leader will be Newport out of lane one. They and Marin have pushed themselves up to a full length advantage over the rest of the field. So Newport and Marin, very close to each other, but with the advantage right now going to Newport. So Newport in first, right behind them, Marin A. And then in that third place position, we're going to move over to lane four. That's Sagatuck. Sagatuck traveling all the way here from Connecticut. Quite a tremendous program. Doing a great job here at the Crew Classic this weekend. My bet is that they've been doing a lot of indoor training and being able to come out to the shores of San Diego and test themselves against some of the best in the West. So Sagatuck sitting in that third place spot. They have about three seats over lane three, Capital Crew. So Capital Crew in fourth. They have about two seats again over Marin B. Marin B in fifth. In sixth, really close, too close to call for me right now between NorCal and San Diego Rowing Club. Those are your sixth and seventh place crews. But all the way up front, just past 500 meters, it's going to be Newport, Marin, battling each other out, really almost stroke for stroke. The coxswain from Marin looking across her left shoulder at the coxswain from Newport, and they are just going for each other. They've got each blade, as it goes in the water, the bow balls go back and forth. So too close for me to call for who's the leader right now. They really are dead even. But they are pushing each other so hard that they now have open water over the rest of the field. Now back to them by just a bit of open water in your third place spot will be Lane 4 Sagatuck. They're right down the center of the course. They have about a stern advantage over Capital Crew in Lane 3. Capital occupying the fourth place position. They are also bout astern over Marin B. Marin B sitting six seats over your sixth place crew from NorCal. NorCal with three seats over San Diego Rowing Club. So San Diego currently in seventh. Grace racing here up front from Marin. They have tapped their bow a little bit farther out away from Newport. So Marin now with the lead, maybe by about three seats, but it's close. So Newport taking the stroke rating up as we approach 1,000 meters gone. They are trying to reclaim that lead back from Marin, but I don't know. I think Marin is going to keep going. They've also matched that stroke rate. I have them both clocked at 37, 38 strokes a minute, which is very aggressive at this halfway point. So we'll see what happens as we progress down the race course. Solidly in third, it's Sagatuck. They've got open water on either side of themselves. They have about a half the length of open water over Capital. Capital sitting with a few you And as we come through the last thousand here, again, they're going to start to feel a little bit of push from the wind, which makes this exciting. But it looks like these coxswains are doing a pretty good job staying centered in these lanes. So they clearly have some good coxswains in here, making some good decisions against the wind as we kind of come through the afternoon here. And a lot of these crews actually get to see each other fairly often since we have a lot of crews from California. So it's kind of an exciting race here as we have uh, in-state rivals. Again, lane one, we have Newport A. Lane two, Marin. Lane three, Cattle. Lane four, Saugatuck. Lane five, Marin B. Lane six, NorCal. Lane 7, San Diego Rowing Club. So San Diego 
will actually be quite familiar with a lot of these conditions since this is probably about the time that they get to practice every day. So even out there in the far lane, they may know how to manage this water a little bit better than some of these other crews, but we will see. Looks like for Newport trailing Marin by open water here, who has a pretty solid lead here in lane two. So they're managing pretty well to start walking away, bringing the rate up just a little bit. Looks like Sagatuck too, not much farther behind Marin, also making a push into the last two fifth here. Followed by Norcal too. Looks like Norcal making a great push out there in lane six here along the shore newport a making a big push starting to bring the rate up just a little but we have marin a with a solid lead here they have commanded the finish here beautiful blades in the water here we have newport making a push capital really pushing newport here bringing the rate up seeing if they can gather any seats on them Trying to reel them in seat by seat. Very close race here out with NorCal. And Marin, Marin edging out NorCal just a little, but here looks like Capital. Good and strong finish here, lane seven. San Diego Rowing Club, close race. All right, Whitney. Thank you so much for that race call with that grand final. We've got two races left, and right now on the course, it's the Men's Youth B Jean Jessup Hervey Cup. This is the B-level final. In lane one, Newport B. Lane two, Pacific. Lane three, Newport C Base. Lane four, Dallas United. Lane five, St. Ignatius. And lane six, Marina Aquatic Center. So we're already well underway and just coming across 500 meters in. And your leader will be in lane one. That's Newport B. So both Newport, uh, Newport Sea Base and Marina Aquatic Centers really had the best starts coming out of the gate. But it's Newport B that has taken advantage of their strength and power and really settling into their long strokes at their base cadence and are just walking away from the rest of the field. So Newport B along the shoreline, looking strong, looking for a little bit of open water. But behind them, it's pretty close here between Pacific and Newport Sea Base for that second place position. So a little bit of an advantage is going to go to Pacific by about one seat. Just behind them, Newport Sea Base is in third. On the outside, lane six, Marina Aquatic Center continues in fourth. They have a six seat advantage over lane four, Dallas United. And back to them by open water in sixth place will be St. Ignatius. And it must be the stroke rate of the day because I've just got four crews clocked at 37 strokes a minute. Newport B all the way up front by themselves, but they are looking at a pretty good challenge coming from both Pacific and Marina Aquatic Center. So Pacific has pulled themselves a little farther away from Newport Sea Base, Dallas United, but right next to them, it's gonna be Marina Aquatic Center. So right now the race is between second and third place Pacific and Marina Aquatic Center. So we're at the halfway point. Newport's still holding on to the lead, but they've watched that actually shrink just a little bit as Pacific has come up to take a little bit of their lead away. So Pacific in second, they've now pulled a little further ahead of Marina Aquatic Center. In fourth, it will be Newport Sea Base, followed by Dallas United, very, very close on their heels, but in the sixth place spot, uh, St. Ignatius continues.
And again, coming into that second half, as our view starts to come into a little bit, we get a little bit more clarity here for where these crews are. Looks like lane one, Newport, lane two, Pacific, lane three, Newport Sea Base, lane four, Dallas United, lane five, St. Ignatius, Lane six, Marina Aquatic Center. And it looks like we're staggered pretty well here. We have a pretty good race going on. Looks like Newport B along the shore here with a, a little bit of a lead, but only a little bit. Pacific looks like they're pretty close here. Dallas United, Marina also making a push that outside lane. Marina really making a push on that outside lane. Very impressive. In this last little bit, the Coxons are probably going to try to bring the stroke rate up a little bit and make a push since we have a pretty good four boat race here. Looks like St. Ignatius trailing a little bit here. Newport Sea Base, who is the rival team from Newport Aquatic Center on the same body of water in Newport Beach. And we have Newport making a big push through the line here. Bow to Stern. Finishing strong here, really being chased by Pacific. Not far off, little bit of open water here. Wow, what a boat race here. Newport Sea Base. Bow to Stern with Dallas United coming in. Looks like about third. St. Ignatius a little bit behind and a good finish by Marina on the outside. Okay, thank you so much, Whitney. And we're looking at the last race of the day at what has been a spectacular weekend at the San Diego Crew Classic. And I know I speak for many people when I say thank you to everyone, the organization, the vendors, the volunteers, athletes and coaches for allowing this weekend to happen and to really be a celebration of rowing and the beginning of the racing season. We're looking at the men's Youth B Jean Jessup Hervey Cup, the grand final. Last one, fast one. In lane one, Sagatuck. Lane two, Marin. Lane three, San Diego Rowing Club. Lane four, Newport A. Lane five, NorCal. And lane six, Sammamish. Crews are being pulled, making the final adjustments to arrange their bows into the wind for a good start. And here they go. All right, and all crews now pass the breakage point. We have a clean race here, and the crew with the fastest start and with their nose out in front is going to be Marin rowing out of lane two. They are sitting with maybe about a deck over Newport, so Newport in the second place position. Back to Newport by a few seats. It's going to be San Diego Rowing Club rowing out of lane three. In fourth, I'm going to give that to NorCal crew rowing out of lane five. They're sitting with about one seat over lane one, Sagatuck. And in sixth place, it will be Sammamish rowing out of lane six. So a little bit more separation is going to happen as we approach 500 meters gone. We're shy of that, but what is clear is that Marin is not leaving anything on the table as they continue to extend out their lead now to five seats over Newport. challenging conditions right now as we went past bridge there's a bit of a wind patch there and we're seeing some course corrections coming out of the referees so if we've got some good drone shots you can 
see how challenging it is for these coxswains to keep their bows pointed correctly down the lanes. These are very experienced coxswains, so they really do have a lot of experience dealing with challenging conditions, and they're doing a good job keeping their bows pointed properly and taking the direction from the refs so that we make sure that we have safe and fair racing. No problem, though, for Marin as they continue to extend their lead out. They are now bowed astern over Newport. Marin rowing at 37 and a half strokes a minute. Newport also at 37. So Newport in second. They sit with a seven-seat vantage over San Diego Rowing Club. In fourth, it's pretty close here between NorCal and Saugatuck. I'm going to give the advantage right now to work. I'm I'm going to put Sagatuck in fifth. Sagatuck now with about six seats over Samam Samamish rowing on a full body of water just east of Seattle. But, wow, Marin now, I just looked away for a few minutes or a few seconds and I came back and now Marin has open water. A half a boat length of open water for them as we approach 1,000 meters down. Newport continuing in second, but they are still being in, they're still in contact now with San Diego Rowing Club and NorCal. Too close to call between San Diego and NorCal for that third place position. So bow to stern for Newport in second over both San Diego and NorCal. Sagatuck falling back just a little bit. They are in the fifth place position, sitting bow to stern over Sammamish. But as we progress down the race course and getting a little bit closer to another wind patch that's going to come up right here, Marin taking advantage of their strength and poise to continue to walk away from the rest of the field. Now, Newport being challenged now by both San Diego and NorCal on either side of them. That coxswain looking across to see if she can pull away from both San Diego and NorCal and really come up to maybe see if they can challenge a little bit Marin. But Marin, they are just continuing to extend out their lead. Continuing at fifth is Sagatuck. Sammamish holding up the sixth place position. We'll turn it over to Whitney for the final 500 meters of this final race of the Diego Crew Classic, the men's Youth B Grand Final. Well, Adrian, thank you so much for taking it through the first 1500 or so, and they're starting to come into view for us. So as we get a little bit closer, we will be able to tell who is in first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and boy, is this an exciting race because a lot of these crews have a big history of winning this race. So year to year, it could be anybody's day. And that way they can go back and load it back on the trailer and don't need us over at Cape Wind. And it looks like as we are coming into that last 250, we're starting to spread out just a little bit. Looks like Marin still has pretty solid lead, followed not far back by Newport here, always making the push. Newport tends to have a strong finish, so we'll see what they throw down against Marin. And it looks like we have a flag up here. Somebody getting a little bit close. Let me see if I can tell who that is. Coxon's having to make a little bit of steering corrections. Marin still in a solid lead with Saugatuck here along the shore, making a push, starting to bring the raid up a little bit. But Marin really looking poised and long through the water here. They are ready to take this. Blades in, they're sitting up, bringing the raid up a little bit, opening up some water now. Marin has taken the lead with open water, followed by Newport with Sammamish making a solid push. Excuse me, that would be NorCal making a solid push against Newport, followed by San Diego. But we have Sagatuck making a strong push towards Nish. Wow. Three boats across. We will have to see officially what that ends up being. But looks like in six, we have some Mamish bringing up the end here, finishing this race up in a very exciting fashion. And I think that, folks, will wrap up racing for today. Thank you so much, Adrian, on the water for taking us through the first 1500. And congratulations to all crews who race.
One more quick announcement. We want to announce the winner of the Concept 2 ERG machine. This will be mailed anywhere in the country. I know a lot of you entered uh, your tickets to see who would win the C2 ERG. The winner is Jer Deersing. Jer Deersing, congratulations. You have won a Concept 2 ERG. Thank you to all our spectators and racers this weekend. As we are leaving the regatta area, please make sure you're looking around, grabbing all belongings and trash. If you are missing some belongings, please come by the information tent. We do have belongings that are looking for people to claim them. Have a good weekend, everybody, and hope to see you at the next race. Attention on the view. Would the Gonzaga women please pick up their medals and trophies from the race today at 3.30 p.m.?